All right, hello and welcome to the second annual Q&A and now tier list of the Natural History Channel. Um, right, let's get into it. But I thought a tier list may be good just because there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of monsters I haven't covered yet and people are often asking if I will. So this gives an opportunity to sort of um, say, you know, what, what the status is on them. Um, and yeah, and as well, there are the various questions. So I'm just going to bring up now, and there's so many more that I thought, and it's just, I, I was expecting like 10, because, because I did one a while ago, and I thought everyone had asked all their questions then, and that was like a million, it was over 200 I should say, but surely there's going to be some repeats, um, but let's also go through the tiers, so obviously Get Out is, you know, the, the horrible, terrible monsters, Scum Class is monsters that I don't really like, but they're not they're not bad enough for me to say get out the franchise. Flawed is very obviously um, monsters that if a significant aspect of them was reworked, they could be good, but as they are right now, they suck. Or at least they suck for me. This is all this is all my opinion. There's a lot of things that go into making it, but um, yeah, this is this is the UHC uh, official one. Someone did actually ask for an ecological one, like, who makes the most sense? But that would be a very, very bottom-heavy one. Because even even a monster that seems reasonable, like Rathalos, like, he wouldn't be able to fly with those wings. So, even if that's more physiology than ecology, but... But yeah, like, um, there's, there's a certain level of suspension of disbelief that you need. But there's a lot of monsters that can still even break that. Um, yeah, and then mixed and mid is... So these are monsters that are fine... They're not bad, but they're not good either. You know, they're, they're just sort of middling in the middle. Um, and then monsters that I think do significant things right, but significant things wrong as well. So they're the ones that uh, give the internal conflict. Decent is sort of... And then this is just sort of the opposite in reverse. Um, decent is monsters that I think... Yeah, that good, fine, you know, but above average but they're not winning any awards anytime soon. Excellent is monsters that I think are generally pretty good, um, but they don't quite get into the top favourites, which I think will probably be like the top 10, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, just, we'll just see who's a favourite and who isn't, and then sort of take stock about how many there are at the end. Alrighty. Get the questions up again. So someone did also ask, uh, what do I think of Gogmazios? I think that's how you say it. So let's let's get ranking him. I think he goes in the decent. So as endgame bosses go, he's quite good. Uh, the Dragonator stuck in his back is a really nice bit of visual storytelling. He's the, the oil thing I actually quite like as well. There's one thing I do like sort of the the higher up elders get, the more weird and derived I like them to be. And so just him being soaked in this weird oil that I think he obviously produces is quite cool. And he's overall a pretty good fight. Um, I don't like that he flies. That's one thing that annoyed me a bit in later games with these gigantic animals that are now that can now fly, especially when in earlier games that was a big thing as to why the bigger ones couldn't fly. And now Diablos, something like him, just looks quite weird that you've got all these massive animals taking to the wing and he's got this large wings and he, and he can't. Like, back in the day, it made sense, but now everyone huge is flying. Not quite so much. Um, but yeah, he's quite solid. Is he solid enough for excellence? Uh, if there was a tear in between, he'd probably be in there. Um, let's keep him at decent right now, just because I, my feelings for him don't go much stronger than that, really. I think that's still a respectable place to be, though. Uh, decent, above average. Um, Let's have a question as well. I think I'll do them like a, a, a monster and then a question. Seems like the most logical way to go through it. Uh, do you have any previous takes on monsters in the channel that have greatly changed since their videos? Not really. Um, so for the most part, most of the monsters I've covered, uh, it's all. most of them has discussed their most recent um, implementation in a game. So... There aren't many monsters who have had another game come out since I've covered them in a video that probably would have been the big thing to change my mind on them. Like, maybe Seragios and Rathalos, but if anything, I think they were done very well in, in Sunrise, so... So I think, you know, something like them. It's only reaffirmed 
what I already thought of them. Yeah, so off the top of my head, not really. Um, it's a bit of a disappointing answer, but but oh well, I, I remain firm on most of them. But if any if any sort of jog my memory, I'll, I'll bring that up later. Uh, and well, what do you think of Kulv Taros? So let's get her uh, ranked up as well. I probably could put Kulv Taros the same as I would put for Gog. The uh, pretty good, but like good enough to be above average. Uh, the gold thing again, that's another thing I like, just the weirdness of it. That's that's a very Elder Dragon thing. The big ram horns as well. It's quite a nice visual touch. Uh, but yeah, but my feelings don't go much stronger than that. But yeah, that's that's a fairly reasonable place to to put cold. Right, Blangonga. Uh, decent is gonna get quite full. Um, I put Blangonga in decent. Is Blangonga good enough for excellent? No, he's not. But he, it can't be denied that Blangonga shares a big uh, move set uh, with Rajang. He shares a lot of overlap there, and that's uh, that's probably a point against him. But at the same time, Blangonga came first, so you know, maybe maybe we should all say that Rajang is copying Blangonga, because in a way he is. But yeah, I think a really nice design. Um, I'm not going to punish him too much for not having great ecology, because he hasn't appeared in a 5th gen game, so he hasn't really had the opportunity to lean into that. Um, as he stands, like the law, and yeah, you know, his role is a sort of big alpha male of the troop and everything else yeah he's just uh i think he's a very very solid monster good ice monster i think he's the first ice monster you fight no that's guy Doom, who sucks um but yeah overall i like plangonga and i don't get why a lot of people don't i think i'm not sure if it's just a lot of the people who joined in later periods in the games are just wimps but um you often see people saying, oh, it's such a hard fight, and I've never found that to be the case. Um, but I was really nervous to fight him after watching, like, when I was, like, 9 or 10 or 11 or whatever, watching all the DOS videos on YouTube before before anything from 2nd Gen came to the West in the portable games. Um, Blangonga always looked so tough, much more so than the Elder Dragons. Yeah, so I was so nervous to fight him, and then he turned out to be not that bad. But it was a good fight. Um, right, next question. It is pretty much public knowledge that you dislike Magnamalo. <laughs> I sure do. Uh, with good reasons. So how would you tweak Magnamalo in terms of design, ecology, and behaviour if given the opportunity to? Uh, tear it down and start again. Um, well, actually, just... So it's been said quite a few times with the concept art. Magnamalo's concept art, you know, he's actually a tiger in it. He's not the big, fat freak that he is in the game. Um, so yeah, just effectively, well, one, just make him a tiger. Yeah, put some armor or whatever on him, but fundamentally just, you know, make him a tiger with those awful crinkle-cut retractable sabers taken away and those antlers as well. Uh, ecology, just have him be less of an edgy Mary Sue. Like, he shouldn't be able to be basil juice or... Uh, maybe, like, actually no. Um, so I think, I don't mind him drawing with Basil Juice, I don't mind him being on that level. But if he is a tiger, I think sort of a rivalry, rivalry with him and Teostra would be quite, would be quite cool, because you know, the whole lion-tiger thing that a lot of, a lot of people always seem to be interested in. The, the Hellfire I don't think is too bad in terms of a weapon, but he shouldn't be constantly producing it, that's, yeah, that's terrible. Um, yeah, it's just idiotic. Behaviour, yeah, just lower the aggression, make him less, you know, have him be failable. And, yeah, I think... So it should be a relatively easy fix just to turn him back into a more... a more normal monster hunter fight tiger. Because tigers are already cool enough, they don't need, they don't need that much to be, uh... They don't need that much to, to change them into something epic. Um... So, yeah, it would be a relatively easy fix. So it's generally astonishing they... They made him that awful. So we may as well get Magnamalo out of the way. Let's go find him. And that I think there's probably going to be a, a few repeats of that. A lot of people ask about Magnamalo. Where is he? Fart Lord. Let's put him in Get Out because he sucks. I mean, <laughs> what were you expecting? He, he, he was always going to go there, wasn't he? Um, right. 
What kind of weapons do you enjoy using in Monster Hunter? Do your favourite weapons change from game to game? Not hugely. I'm a devout hammer main. Um, always have been. But I'd say one thing that did change was in first gen, I used sword and shield a lot too. Um, probably as much as I did hammer. But then that really changed with the longsword, just because I never really blocked that much with the shield, so I wanted to do more damage, but for some reason I didn't like dual blades. So the longsword really sort of usurped the role of sword and shield for me. But I still use sword and shield occasionally. But yeah, so not hugely, uh, yeah, it's mainly hammer, and then for anything that's especially fast, I'll just use longsword. Alright, who's actually next? Uh, in the lineup, before everyone else pushed ahead. Shogun Sintor? Yeah, he's decent as well. Um... Could he be excellent, in fact? No, he's a bit annoying. Um, that horrible sort of garden strimmer move he has, where he just opens his claws and then just fills the whole map with his scythes and then starts marching towards you is absolute agony. Um, and that that's annoying enough to take him out of excellent. But he's still he's still actually a pretty good monster. He could well be excellent. Now, let's, give him a, let's give him a decent for now, and then if decent gets too full, I might move some people up or down. And he could be excellent. Because I think he was put it back into Sunrise slash Sunbreak uh, quite well as well. Um, I thought I thought they did a good job of, of updating him there. Yeah, and he's overall, he's actually really quite a solid monster. I think he's a really good fight. Like, he's very learnable. And I actually think he's a monster where you benefit most by sticking right to him. Almost right in front of him. This fight, the risk is his scythe claws pose. And I think that's a bit of a mix-up to other monsters where you're often encouraged to keep your distance. Or at least that's how I fight him. Uh, but yeah, I think no, I think the crabs in general are excellent monsters. Uh, Kongalala, let's put him in excellent. I think... So, uh, to explain that, I think Kongalala, just his gimmicks really lift him up a bit. He's just a fantastic um, early game monster. Like, the ability to swap between elements as well by eating mushrooms is really nice. And, of course, he can throw his poo at you. Which is an actual thing primates do, so I don't know why some people get so up in arms about that and say, like, it it ruins the franchise. And I think Kongalala is a good example of how to do, like, a sort of a more comedic monster very well. In that a lot of his comedic traits come from the animals he's based on, rather than just sort of being artificially implemented. And again, the primates, well... At least the DOS primates, maybe not Rajang, but yeah, I think they're, again, they're both just very solid monsters. Um, they plug gaps in the roster um, that needed to be filled, and yeah, I think he's just a very solid monster. And again, he's someone I also really want to see get bumped up into a, into a world-style game to see what uh, interesting things he'll do in his spare time. Then we have Kutku, and I've pretty much wrote an essay on Kutku already in his video. So monsters that have been recently covered, I won't say too much on, but he's very obviously a top fave of mine. I think he's fantastic, I think he's the best bird wyvern. Uh, I definitely think he'll be back in the franchise, and I can't wait to see him. Um, so yeah, we have our first top fave. And it's looking very top loaded right now as well. Gyrodrome, get out, you're rubbish. Um... Gyrodrome is just completely eclipsed by Great Baggy. They're the same class of monster. They're almost the same monster anyway. Uh, Great Baggy is just better Gyrodrome. Gyrodrome is just a reskinned Velocidrome with one extra attack, and therefore it sucks. And it can be it can be replaced with Great Baggy, just completely, and no one will miss Gyrodrome. If you do, you're weird. Demu Hamator. Let's put him in excellent. Why he is above uh, Shogun, I would probably say... I'd probably say he's just a bit less obnoxious. And I think his subspecies is a little bit better. But yeah, no, I think... Yeah, like I said, I think the crabs are just generally excellent monsters. And Shog and Damio is no different. Um, one thing that probably stops him being a top fave is he's just a bit easy. Like, I remember the first play t time... Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of audio flubbing in this. You'll you'll soon see just how long it takes me to sort of record my stuff. Um, just because there's so many errors. And I've missed two questions. Um, but yeah, he's you can really take him down quite easily. In fact, Kongalala as well, I think. Um, but I think I can sort of see why they did that. Because Freedom Unite, like second gen in general, is just regarded as very hard. So I can see why Kongalala and Daimyo 
would be so easy to sort of give you a bit of a soft landing and give you Dame in Damio especially a monster that gives you really good gear to sort of sort of buttress you for the fights to come. Um but yeah, they, it it got hard and it got hard quickly. Uh do you plan to analyze elders such as those in Sunbreak? Yes. I do plan well, I I want to do a video on Malzano and Geismagorm and their sort of Curio custody battle. But that'll take a lot of thought. But it's definitely on the cards at some point. If you could pitch ideas for a new Monster Hunter games, what would those be? Uh, an actually good story. Um, that would be a nice touch. What else? Um, so I'm not sure if I have any major big ideas, but I'd probably just make small tweaks to what's already there. I'd sort of whatever world is doing, I'd just say continue with that, double down on that, and just, yeah, keep going. But I wouldn't say I have any big revolutionary ideas that I would implement right now. I definitely bring a lot of stuff back, but I'm not sure if, yeah, if I have anything significant, anything like you know on the scale of you know uh, clutch claw or wire bug or water combat or whatever. Other than maybe making it open world, but I'm one of the people who does want that that to happen. But I don't want it to happen right away. I'd much rather have them, you know, build more assets in the current engine, um, so it'd be less of a load when they actually when they actually do that, as I think they will. And uh, keep up the good work. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I always appreciate things like that. Uh, are you going to do a video about Miles? I know to sort of answer that. Are you able to tolerate some of the monsters' designs making no sense if the fights themselves are good? To an extent. Um, so it definitely, it can definitely change my opinion of a monster to be less harsh of it if I really enjoy fighting it. Um, probably not enough to save a monster. But it definitely helps sort of ease a crappy design. Um, and now we have Hypnocatrice. I quite like Hypnocatrice, so let's put them in decent. Again, I'm tempted to say excellent, but I'm not sure they're that good. Because the new moves they do have, it's just sort of that sort of bouncing Velociraptor jump. Uh, and the sleep mechanic is really nice. And they, would, they changed their attacks well enough that they would just the right amount of challenge for the first time you'd fight them in Freedom Unite. Yeah, in fact, let's put Hypnocrates in excellent, because I do quite like it. What do you think to the viability of Atal Car? Uh, let's, let's bring, let's bring the Bug Mech Mantis up now. Uh, Atal Car is going to go in mixed and mid, because of the mixed part of it. But yeah, I I think I think it's a really good idea, but I don't like how it was implemented. And a lot of people really love the bug. I am not really one of them, just because, you know, that's not a Monster Hunter boss, is it? That's just Shadow of Colossus. And I think they could have still utilised her aspect of, you know, sort of tying things together and having the fight revolve around that without making it turn into a giant mech fight. That's just one aspect of it I really dislike. I can still admire that it technically and in, in in terms of its creativity, it's uh it's definitely it's definitely impressive in that regard. But I just don't think Monster Hunter ever really needed a big mech fight. But the rest of the fight, like where she sort of spins around on the wheel, I do think is a much better uh, realization of her abilities in a way that's less ridiculous and in a way more fitting for her. And the design as well, and just having a mantis is quite cool as well. Um, so yeah, many, many mixed feelings on on the golden mantis. I absolutely hate its gear, though. I think it, I think it's so garish and so ugly. I just think her gear is so tacky, those golden weapons. I absolutely hate it. So thoughts on the Dark Sun D&D setting. So I had a look at that... Um, no strong thoughts. It looked um, looked very um, it looked very yeah sort of nineties. Um, who's that? Uh, Franz Fazetta sort of yeah it looked very Franz Fazetta. Just a lot of sort of big barren open desert landscapes and armored people and non big monsters. So I don't have any strong thoughts on it, but I haven't looked into it too deeply. Um, Dungeon, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is something I've never had too much, too um, too much, too much involvement with. But yeah, the the psionic magic is pretty cool. But yeah, I'd, I'd really have to delve more into it to um, 
to give better opinions. But as I as I look at it right now, it seems seems all right. There doesn't seem anything especially wrong with it or or exceptional. But I will admit I do like Franz Fazetta style artwork just because of the sort of pulpy aspect of it. Uh, but yeah. So then someone asked, yeah, what what made Evolution create things like Fatalis and Delamado? So let's let's bosh out Delamado. Where is he? There he is. Uh, where's he gonna go? Let's put him mixed in mid as well. Delamado's fine. Um, why would Evolution make that? Yeah, um, that that's a good point. Just because Delamado is so massive that it's hard to see what advantages come from that. Why Evolution would do that? Whatever reasons animals have for getting massive. Um, Presumably, at some point, there was some there was an advantage to being that big. Presumably, to access a resource that others couldn't, perhaps. But yeah, it's it's it. When you get to that sort of level of ludicrous size, it's very hard to explain. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, Delamador is fine. I mean, it's it's again, it's technically impressive as a boss, but I don't have any strong feelings towards it. Um, yeah, and then Kushala, where are we gonna bosh him? Let's put him in decent. Uh, as of Sunbreak, Kushala is quite good. He's definitely been definitely been redeemed in the eyes of the franchise. And I do quite like him, just in general. Like in the earlier games, I never thought he was as bad as a lot of people said. I thought he was fine. So yeah, home of the decent. But I don't think he does much more to sort of put him in excellent. But he's good enough that he's above the mixed and the mid. What are you hoping for in the next big Monster Hunter? Is there an ecology idea you had that you hope to show in some form and would like to share? So, in terms of what I want for the next big Monster Hunter, um, effectively, everything World did, just double down on that. Um, yeah, just sort of continue the ecological aspects of it and the, and the quality of the maps and everything like that. And... In terms of ecological ideas that I'd want implemented, so again, just because like the environmental behaviours that can cover such a broad thing, I wouldn't say I have any really big idea. I would more just say you know double down on that, implement more of them, implement more specific ones for the individual monsters, like more bespoke animations, like for things like feeding. And yeah, and 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 better turf wars, like less copy and pastes, and things like that. Um, I wouldn't say there's any one big thing I would implement. Maybe give the monsters the ability to kill each other. I think that would actually be. I think that would be quite cool. But obviously, you'd need to factor in a lot of gameplay aspects into that. Like I've spoken with about it with people before, and I think it should be like, um, say, if you want to see Diablos kill Baroth, you should be on Diablos's level. You should be sort of that sort of hunter rank. So, so it's not a case of uh, high-ranking monsters can just clear out the quests for you. As I remember with Savage, Savage Devil Joe and Iceborne, um, he was definitely quite cheesable in that regard. So I think once you've sort of proven to the game you don't need that monster's materials much anymore, then it's sort of then it can be put up for slaughter um, from other monsters. And I don't think any monster should be able to kill any other. I think it should only be monsters that have you know like a significant size disparity and a reason to be in conflict with that monster. And then um, so outside of Turf Wars as well, I think more. I think more monster behaviors, like um, like with Kukku and his example, I don't think he should have a lot of turf wars, but I do think that he should be used like an, an as an indicator of when other monsters are approaching. Like with his mobile ears, like in Garuga's cutscene, you could have those pop up, see him get very agitated, then he leaves, and then a minute or so later, another monster comes. A bit like how in Try, the um, the Aptonauts would get upset if they were in the area next to a large monster. And they'd have that anim animation to show that. Um, Lavasioth, uh, scum class. Not a fan of Lavasioth, like most of the fan base. Yeah. I don't dislike him enough to say get out, but yeah, just. Ugh. I think he is best realized in Jorotodus, and that he's less obnoxious and. So most lava swimmers, you know, they're, they're, it's an uphill struggle to get me to like them. And Lavasioth doesn't do much good to um to to ingratiate himself in with me. Um, so it's scum class for him. 
Uh, what is your short opinion about each weapon? Hammer, love. Um, the, the, the guns, I'm not a big fan of, because I've never thought that was in the spirit of Monster Hunter. You know, like, that sort of game, you, you know, you, you play it for the melee combat, and then to have the option of just shooting the monster, yeah, it's just never really felt in the spirit of things for me. And it's often quite cheesable as well. Um, so yeah, I've never never touched a bow gun, and I never plan to. The bow I tried to use when I got Freedom 2, and I was terrible with it. I really like it as a weapon, and I think... It is pretty much the same as the bow gun, but at the same time, maybe it's just so much more stylish that I'm much more willing to give the bow uh, a chance. Sword and shield, I also quite like. Um, long sword, uh, I think... Long sword was good, and yeah, it's definitely sort of fell off the rails to become a bit overpowered and, and weeby as well. Um, great sword, I could never really use. Um... I never thought it was bad, but I always, like, in first gen I could use it, but after that, maybe it's just the slowness that put me off compared to the hammer, and then turned me into a devout hammer main. Um, dual blades, yeah, fine. Uh, the rest of them I don't have hugely strong thoughts on. Um, who else is there? Uh, yeah, hunting horn. Hunting horn's fine. Never really had much use for it myself. Uh, switch axe, again, never really use that much. Lance, I really try to use, and I try to use it several times, but I could never just gel with the lack of, not not so much the lack of mobility, but just sort of the controls and the slowness. But I don't mind it as a weapon. Um, just because I can use it doesn't mean I think it's bad. Same with gun lance, I think that's fine. I think that's very Monster Hunter as well. Just a lance, but now it's also like a cannon. I think that's quite funny. Insect glaive, uh, not the biggest fan of. Um... I don't think it's terrible, but at the same time, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's also just a bit much. Um, right, who's next? Uh, Di Morales. Uh, not a huge fan of. Let's put him in flawed. Um, just a bit edgy, like Fatalis, Fatalis, however you say it. Obviously, all the Black Dragons have a certain amount of edge to them. And then you have Di Morales, who, like, kills the whole ocean and turns it red. And yeah, I'm just uh, not a fan of that. Um, and the fight, I never thought was that good. The design I always thought was a bit weird. And not in a, not in a good way. Um, so yeah, I've never been the biggest fan of Dyer. Agnactor. I'm going to put him. Let's put him in mixed and mid. Because I don't dislike Agnactor. The fight isn't amazing. But I do like the design... I think his design is good enough that as a lava swimmer... He's not even that much of a lava swimmer, is he? He, he sort of gets covered in magma, but he more just burrows through the rest of the, the solid volcano. And I just really like the sort of the pike-like jaw, like he is the fire pike wyvern. Well, he's a leviathan, but still. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely some some stuff to like about him, but his fight just isn't that good. But then he's not been updated for 5th gen. So he does, yeah, he's, he's the definition of mixed as well. He does some things right that make me like him, but not enough to put him into a higher level. So I think mixed for Agnacta. If you could design a monster, so yeah, quite a few people, people ask this, if I could design a monster, sort of what would it be? And uh, I... I'm not that big on designing my own monsters, really. Um, I mean, one of the things I love about the franchise is being surprised about what they're going to do next, what the new monsters are going to be, and stuff like that. So I much prefer to see, you know, what other people are making, rather than make my own stuff. Um, and again, just like, and making a single monster as well, that's quite difficult just because, um, you know, I'd, I'd rather make a, a roster, as it were. And as well, I would need to know, you know, what's the map, what's the environment it's living in, and stuff like that. So if anything, I'd need to start making the game before I start made, before I start making the monster. So yeah, I... So yeah, it's a disappointing answer again. But honestly, I, I couldn't really tell you. Um, if I was given a map and everything, I could potentially... 
and yeah, and sort of told what the focus of the game was going to be, then I could probably start to make something. But as it were, um, yeah, I just don't have any sort of strong thoughts on a monster I would make uh, right away. What's next? Barrios. Where am I going to put Barrios? Scum class or flawed? Um, let's go with flawed. Let's throw Barrios fans a bone and say flawed. Because I'm not a big fan of Barrios. And I do think it could be saved with a major facelift, but I don't think it'll ever get one. Yeah, he's been covered recently, so that 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 video has all my thoughts on him, really. Uh, so I don't need to go into it here. But let's put him in flawed. Other than Monster Hunter, what games will you would you like to cover in the future? I don't really know. So there's definitely more monsters, well, creatures, and so on and so forth that I am going to cover. But um, I'm not sure how many of them are from games. I do want to do the Death Claws from Fallout at some point, because I do quite like them. But outside of that, uh, game-wise, I'm not sure if I have anyone to mind straight away. Uh, but yeah. Right. Baroth goes in excellent, because I love him. I think he's a, a great early game brute, just the mud mechanic. It's quite nice without being infuriating, and so is the mechanic of whether you use a fire or water weapon against him. So yeah, I think he just does a lot right. He could probably stand to take a break from the franchise. He's been in it a lot recently, but at the same time, he never feels overbearing. He's not a monster that you can get tired of easily, but he's, yeah, but he's just, he's always just sort of there in the early game. So yeah, he's excellent and I love him. Uh, what is the best and worst Elder Dragon in your opinion? Um, so, best best is hard, because there's best and then there's my favourite. My favourite is Camellios. Uh, worst, it is tempting to say Valstrax, just because I dislike him. Uh, but then if I was to name an objective best Elder Dragon, might well be Namael, who I do think is excellent. But yeah, so that's that answered vaguely. Uh, Seodeus will go in decent. The fight's not amazing, but it's also not bad. The, di the, the design is quite unique, um, and I do like that. And I love, yeah, I just love his implementation in Tri's story and that final cutscene and the fact that you're, you're not really there to kill him. If anything, you're there to fix his pain and then just um, send him on his way. I think that's the only time Monster Hunter has really succeeded with its whole balance with nature aspect, where you didn't actually kill the monster. That was never the goal of the final quest. And it's never really it's never really uh, managed to do that again. Except maybe with Zora, but then never really felt as well implemented with Zora. And that was sort of combined with the knowledge that he was dying anyway. So I never felt like you were doing him that big a favour. If I could revamp an older gen monster for a new world like game, which one would I choose and why? So ooh, I would I would want to know like what the maps were going to be because I wouldn't want to have a like you know uh, a game without a snow map and then pick Plangonga. Um, but if I could pick just one, no man should have that much power. Um, who would it be out of the just the just one? So I might even say Plangonga just because. Like, a lot of other ones who haven't been implemented um, for a while didn't need a huge update. Uh, whereas Blangonga, as said, he, like, Rajang has stolen so much of his moveset that I would want to see him um, get his own completely revamped one. And as well, I think he's just got a lot of potential in a World Series game in terms of his turf wars and his interactions with his troop and the environment. So yeah, I might actually say Blangonga. Uh, right, who is next? Devil Joe. Yeah, he's obviously going in mixed. There's, there's a lot to like about Devil Joe, like the aspect of this giant, gluttonous, roaming brute is is very Monster Hunter. I think that fits the world like a glove. And as well, I think his design outside of his head is quite nice. Like and just his animations as well, and like it, like with his concept art as well, you get the impression he's about as big as you can get before you need to become a quadruped. Like he's he almost struggles to control his own inertia. He's always sort of overcorrecting for his movements, and in, in his concept art, it almost looks like his bones are sort of sagging off the muscle, 
just because he's so heavy and you know he's almost struggling to support his own mass. And then there's his mouth, which I'm like I've spoken about before. I've never been the biggest fan of. Um, it just doesn't look like a heavy duty tool. Well, his maxilla. I mean, his bottom jaw is fine, but it's just you know the the maxilla and the premaxilla that I don't, that I don't really like. And he's definitely a bit overblown in his turf wars. Like I said, flying wyvern's fine, and with sort of the smaller fanged wyverns, but then Odogron and Diablos is just yeah. I mean, I've I've said my part on them before. That's just very much um, yeah. That's just very much stroking off Devil Joe at the cost of other monsters and making them look worse and uncharacteristically poor in their interactions. But there is still undeniably a lot to like about him. Uh, Savage Devil Joe as well. Like, just the amount of attacks he have that just show how he's just got no dis- regard for his own sort of body or, or wellness anymore. He is just sort of, yeah, he's just gone completely mad. And that's something in future games I'd really love to see double down on. I would just love him to become, like, the mad sauropod from Primal. Just, yeah, just completely, completely gone upstairs. He's just... Uh, just piloted by his own his own rage, effectively. Um, so yeah, there's... And a lot of people think I don't like Devil Joe, and I wouldn't say I hate him, because I think, like I said, he's a good concept. He does a lot right. There's just a lot that stop him... that make him quite a conflicting monster. Um, what do you think to the lore of Monster Hunter? All this stuff about the guild and the war with dragons and so on. So... Yeah, I don't think the War with Dragons is canon. I don't think it ever was. The Great Dragon War. And if it was, I think that would really suck. Because I think that's that's just a bit crap. Um, the stuff about the guild, I think, is okay. Um, with most of what we've been told. And I think most of the lore of Monster Hunter is alright. Some of the monster lore can be a bit... Um, painful. But... For the most part, it's fine. It's, it's it's still a bit shallow, though. I would like to see it built up more in, in future games, um, which I think they will do, because now I think they sort of, they've gone much more sort of cinematic with everything, and they're actually trying to have stories. I think we will learn a lot more. It's just, um, yeah, we just need to get there first. Uh, who's next? Giganox. Let's put him in decent, and not much higher. But Skigginox is fine, but he's definitely one of the most overrated monsters in that a lot of people view him with rose-tinted spectacles, which it's it's questionable if he uh, if he really warranted, um, because he was never that good. And a lot of people say, oh, he's like he's so much better than Kezu, and a lot of people haven't fought him any time recently. There's a lot of poison spam. There's a lot of area effect area of effect poison spam. It's not as fun as you remember. But he does have a very nice design. The flatworm aspect about him. The sort of gecko wall crawling is still very nice. So yeah, there's still a lot to like. And the use of the giggies as well. Um, there's still a lot to like there. But he is very overrated. And he's not getting higher than decent. What do you think of Fatalis lore? And I'd like to see it as nothing more than a legend as it gets more and more exaggerated. Yeah, so... Uh, it would have been harder to say before Iceborne, but as of Iceborne, he has canonically been killed. Like, before that, it was always a bit shifty about whether whether killing Fatalis was actually canon, or if that was just, you know, the sort of the Monster Hunter equivalent of Nazi zombies or something. Um, so now that we have killed him, and that's, you know, a full canon story thing, and that he is, you know, a killable monster, even if he is still very powerful then I think, yeah, I think they may sort of try and retcon that into saying, like, oh, a lot of the older stuff about him is uh, was exaggeration. Because, you know, he's still very powerful and he can still, you know, really, really... He can he has literally burned down the Kingdom of Shrade. So at least some of his power is not exaggerated. But a lot of the myths around him, like he sort of... If you wear his armor, you turn mad and then another fatalist grows around you. Then, yeah, I'd like to see that, you know sort of made its exaggeration um, uh, just from from scared townsfolk or from the fact that he uses his pin attack to sort of melt you into him like someone could have seen a fatalist with you know someone's armor stuck into his chest and made the conclusion that they they wore fatalist armor and that happened to them um, but yeah who's next Gobel let's put him in decent as well 
Whispers. I do quite like Google. He's another monster that I've sort of changed my mind on over the years. When I first, first fought him, I really didn't like him for some reason. But then more when I realised like he wasn't trying to be cool. He was trying to be a monster who was really sort of properly adapted to his environment, a lot like Kezu. Um, that made me like him so much more, just because, you know, he is so well adapted as this little ugly river bottom dwelling anglerfish. And I think in that role, he is pretty much perfect. Um, so that was a bit of a 180 on him. And I don't know why I disliked him initially. Maybe I just thought it was really ugly. Um, given that Kushala and Tiostra both got a second version of themselves in Rusted and Lunastra, what would be a practical second version of Camellios? Good question. Um, but yeah, it's hard to sort of add to Camellios without taking away. But as is... Because he, he's, he's sort of got all the tricks he can really have without becoming, you know, without any of them becoming superfluous. That's quite a, that's quite a tough question. Um, you could almost say, like, you could almost say, like, have him use his colours more somehow. But then I don't know how that would actually make a meaningful difference to the fight. That's a very tough question. Um... Yeah, but it would be nice if he got a subspecies or something similar. But yeah, it's just, what is he going to do? What is he going to do different? Without, you know, making him a completely different lizard to base him off or something like that. But chameleon, chameleons as a family, they, you know, they're just sort of variations on a theme. Um, so that's a tough question and one I don't really have much of an answer for. Because I think Camellios is, is good enough already and a lot of his gimmicks can't be expanded on much further. Uh, than they are already. Um, time for Baggy. Where is Baggy going to go? I think Baggy's fine. In fact, I'd put Jaggy there as well. I think most of the sort of early game bird wyverns are fine. You know, the I think, again, I think a lot of the tri-original um, monsters are really overrated. Because people love to talk about them as if they're some, you know, an, an amazing revolutionary take on the monsters that came before. And then you realise that, you know, Great Jaggy has the same amount of attacks as Velocidrome. They're just arguably a bit less obnoxious. So I think fight-wise, they're not all they're cracked up to be. And there's a lot of rose-tinted spectacles going on. And as well, when they came back in Sunbreak, they were alright. They weren't amazing. Uh, but yeah. So I think, I think yeah, f fine is good. I mean, I like them, but they're not, not sure if they're good enough to go into decent. Roggy, maybe. But he's my favourite of the grades. What would your ideal fake monster be? What design philosophy would you like to see in it? Uh, so yeah, I sort of touched on this a bit earlier. Um, but I'm not sure if I have one ideal fake monster. Um, but yeah, it would depend on the environment and where it lives and what it does. So it's just so broad a topic that I'm not sure I can answer with any any certainty um but in terms of design philosophy yeah i think make the environment first decide what its niche is and and what it does in that regard and then make the monster after that so sort of effectively build the ecosystem from the ground up rather than making the monster first and then slotting it in later um so yeah, it's again probably a bit of a disappointing answer as quite a few people have asked sort of yeah or well, what sort of thing would you make um yeah, I'm not big on making my own things, um, very much at least. Uh, who's next? One of the Morans. They're, they can go in, in fine. Um, not So a lot of the big either endgame monsters or siege monsters, I'm just not a huge fan of. I think the Morans are fine, but I wouldn't put them much higher. They're probably the best of the siege monsters, maybe? But that's still a bit of a tarnished crown to wear. Um, so yeah, I'm not not. I don't really care much about them. Uh, I think I think siege monsters in general are just a bit of a waste of time. They like you can only imagine how much of the time and resources they take to make for one fight that's never really that memorable. And I think again, I think the Morans are the best in that regard. But siege monsters in general are just more trouble than they're worth. Uh, how is, what is the processes you do to make uh, the video? So a few people asked on the processes. So yeah, do you, do you already have an idea 
or is there someone that helps in the searches? So one thing I will do with some people who aren't sort of um, a biologist like me is I will sort of ask them, do you have any questions on this monster and what it does? Because definitely sometimes I can overlook things that I would think, you know, might be simple or self-explanatory that maybe not be, but that maybe wouldn't be for other people. Um, so yeah, that's something that I often find can uncover a topic that I may have overlooked. And yeah, often when I start uh, start sort of production, I have an idea of what I'm going to compare it to already. Often the design just points you in that direction. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's roughly sort of how things start out. Um, a few other people asked on that as well, but we'll get to those when we come to it. Lagiacris, yeah, he's a top fave. I think it's a fantastic monster. Yeah, I mean, he he just does everything right, really. Um, one thing is, obviously, yeah, without water combat, he's always just felt a bit neutered, and that means he sort of spams his thunder attacks quite a bit. But yeah, but they, they they sort of try to make him more interesting on land, but that's not enough to take him down from my favourites. And yeah, I can't wait for him to come back in sixth gen, as I'm reasonably confident he will be, he will be back in six. Uh, but yeah, he's yeah again he's just a monster that does everything right, just does a lot of things that I like, and yeah, good good monster. What are your thoughts on Wild Hearts? This is something quite a few people asked. Um, so Wild Hearts, I don't have much don't have much to say about it really. Um, I'm probably not going to play it, and I think the monsters in it. So I'm not one hundred percent sure, but I think most of the monsters in it look much more like, you know, they're meant to be gods or legends or something like that. They're not meant to be animals, they're not meant to be species of monster, like Monster Hunter. Um, so when I look more into it, there may be more to say on it, but as of right now, I wouldn't say I have any hugely strong thoughts on it. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I see myself making videos on it anytime soon. Um, now that Sunbreak has been out for a while, will you be making ecology, ecology vids on each of the three lords? Malzeno, probably. The other two I'm not sure on. Um, Luna Garon is fine, but I'm, my thoughts for it don't go much further than that. And Gaungolm, I don't hugely, I'm not hugely impressed by. Um, so yeah. So maybe, but, um, probably not anytime soon outside of Malzeno. Uh, Karupako can go into excellent um yeah just the the mimicry gimmick really good as a bird rifle as well it has a decently different fight from kutku and i think most of the bird rivens like the way he sort of uses his uh his pounders on his wings and he flies quite a bit too he almost feels like training for rathalos whereas kutku felt like training for rathian um so yeah and i think his fight was quite good like, especially for third gen as well. So I think if he came back, he would. I would obviously want him to be tweaked, but I don't think he would need to be tweaked hugely. So yeah, again, just a, a, a great little monster, and one I really hope will come back, because we haven't seen him for a while. Um, but it'd be nice to have him back. What's your favourite monster variation type? I would say variants, um, just because... Subspecies aren't bad, but a lot of the older ones are lacking, a lot, and a lot of the newer ones can often be devoid of sense. Um, and I think variants, I think variants often make a little bit more sense. And I think that's just a bit more of an interesting thing to say about the monster, like how does the how does the variation happen? And you know, uh, so it leads to some quite interesting ones like Savage Devil Joe. Uh, sort of building off the last question, favorite and least favorite deviant. Least favourite deviant, Snow Baron. He's just big Logombi with bigger snowballs, really. So I think that sucks. Because I think Logombi sucks. And then favourite might be Bloodbath. And Bloodbath is just so anime, but at the same time, it also does a lot right. It sort of restores Diablos's strength. Um, and... Yeah, I think the lore behind it, like it was severely wounded by Hunter and now it's just incredibly aggressive. That That's very on brand for both Diablos and just, you know, there's there's plentiful stories from Hunters in the real world of animals that have sort of turned out like that. Obviously not quite so quite so powerful and bloodthirsty, but yeah, that's, um, that's definitely a nice touch. And so yeah, I might say, I might well say Bloodbath. 
Um, which isn't very on brand for me, but then, oh well. Which fictional or futuristic creature from Primeval do you think was overdesigned, or could use some much deserved tweaking to be better? So I think I would just make the future predator a bit more batty. I think I would give it ears and yeah, ears and maybe some form of like vestigial patagium uh, between its sort of over its armpits or something. I still quite like it, um, despite that. But yeah, I would definitely just make it a bit battier. But then I think, if I remember correctly, I was told um, they didn't want it to be overtly batty, so it didn't look like the, the, the Night Stalker. Also, that when audiences saw it, they would just instantly go, oh, it's a bat, isn't it? So I, I can't really blame them for that. But yeah, I would just make them a bit battier. Uh, Royal Ludroth can go in Home of the Decent. But yeah, he's fine. And I think... Yeah, like, there's actually quite a bit you can say about Ludroth with his big mane, and then sort of the fact that males only have that, and then he's an aquatic animal, so that's obviously... Well, it might make him a bit more buoyant, and then is it sort of like a lion's mane, and then it's the handicap hypothesis? But obviously more on that when he eventually gets a video on him, as he is one I like to cover. But yeah, he's overall quite good. Wasn't that great in Sunbreak slash Rise, but yeah, um... Maybe he should be in mid then. Actually, let's leave him in decent for now. But if decent starts getting too crowded, he can be bumped. What category of monsters do you think is best in the series? I'm going to say Flying Wyverns, just because they're so versatile. Um, there's so much you can do with a Flying Wyvern. And they're so common, and a lot of my favourites are Flying Wyverns, so yeah. Euragon can go into Scum class, because I don't like him. Uh, yeah, I just think, oh, he's so ugly, and... I just, I, I've never got on with Uragon. Um, always preferred Gravios. Yeah, sorry to all the devout Uragon fans out there, but I'm not a fan, and I never have been. And I think his concept art was really quite good. I think if we'd have got that, he he would be a lot higher. I'd like him a lot more. But yeah, he's just so ugly, and I don't like him. What do you think about the monsters from online? I don't know enough about them to know who's in online and who's in Frontier. Um, I've been shown some of them and they seem fine, but I've not really looked into them much. So yeah, I am probably wouldn't hold your breath on if they're going to get videos. But yeah, a lot of them seem alright. Uh, Brachidios. Where am I going to put him? How much of a civil war do I want to make? Um, Obviously, he's not going to be much higher than this. Let's put him in flawed. He's definitely not interesting enough um, to be mixed uh, like Devil Joe is. And his fight really can get a bit annoying. Like, just the co like especially in the older games, I thought in Iceborne it was improved. But especially in the older games, the constant area of, area of effect, denial and explosion spamming got old quite quickly. And yeah, he's just not a very well thought out monster with the whole slime punching and explosions aspect. And the fact like that kills his own young. So yeah, let's keep him in flawed for now. Um, yeah, I mean, I've said a lot I've, in the design video and, and the response to it, I've said a lot about him. He may still get a video on him while I try and recontextualize how we could use that. And I think the prevailing thing a lot of people like is in keeping with the canon of him being a carnivore, that it's effectively almost like burrowing tools. He's almost effectively like a, a macro predatory anteater. And that there is sort of claws to sort of dig into substrates to eat typically smaller things like your rock tool. Which, yeah, I think that's probably the best way to to refit him to his own design. Um, rather than just he loves to punch things that are massive and they explode. But yeah, again, you knew he was never going to be too high in my personal tier list. And then another Moran. He'll, yeah, I think whatever I've said about one, you can say about the other. Well, have you thought about creatures from other series you would like to talk about? Yeah, so um, so maybe not so much from games, but films and stuff. There's still plenty of creatures I want to cover. Like, I do want to do the, the alien from Nope. I emailed uh, one of its creators uh, the other day. Uh, Kelsey Rutledge, um, and she said that, yeah, there is a paper on it, like a sort of a mock scientific paper, so I'm going to wait for that to come out before I before I cover him. But yeah, I do want to do the no alien. And then there are several other creatures and things I want to do as well. Um, so yeah, there's plenty more to come. 
who is next? Gore Magala. I'm going to put him. One of these two. I think, yeah, I think he's fine. Um, so again, I've sort of covered him recent, re fairly recently. Um, and I gave my thoughts on him there, and I think he's fine. I think f the frenzy aspect is more interesting than Gore himself. Um, Gore himself is, is, yeah, he's, yeah, I think fine is a good place for him. What are your thoughts on Monster Hunter clones, such as God Eater or Takudan? I have not really looked into them very much at all. So yeah, um, I don't have any huge thoughts on them. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I don't really know enough about them. Um, the Souls Monster Hunter fandom divide. So I think, I actually think Dark Souls was maybe instrumental, maybe not instrumental, but quite possibly had a role in Monster Hunter World's success in that that sort of was a bit of a watershed moment in gaming, I think, where a lot of people realised they liked harder difficulties and they liked sort of slog fights that went on for a while rather than, you know, sort of quick drop enemies. And I think the success of Souls definitely sowed the seeds for World to be taken as well as it was. Um, I think, yeah, I do think there was a bit of a sort of a, an epiphany in a lot of gamers, thanks to Souls. And I had never really considered there was much of a divide there. So not much of a comment on that. But yeah, I, I do think Souls had a role to play in Monster Hunter's success. Have you considered doing a video on the Insect Glaive and its relationship to falconry? I have not really. That's an interesting thought. Obviously, I don't think it's like a one-one thing. Like, the the bug is almost... The bug in the Insect Glaive almost functions more like a sort of hunting hound, that it trails and finds the monster and distracts it, uh, rather than actively taking down the quarry, even if it does do some damage. But that could be something interesting to look into. But yeah, it's not something I've thought about much before, but it could well be something to consider for the future. Uh, who's next? Catcher Watcher. He's... where am I going to put him? I don't have any strong thoughts on Catcher Watcher. He's fine, so let's put him in, in that one. Yeah, he, he's good, he's decent, but not decent enough to be in the decent category, it would seem. Yeah, I just don't have very many strong thoughts on him. And it's weird because I like a lot of the early game 4th gen monsters. But maybe my heart was just full from the other primates, who knows. But yeah, for me personally, he doesn't do anything wrong. But I don't think he does enough right or interestingly to be uh, to be it to be in a higher rank. Um And probably the same with Najarala. Najarala would be higher. If its fight was better. So I don't think it's quite good enough to be decent. But yeah, I, I also don't mind it. I think the design is nice. I think the idea of a snake monster is nice. But I also think that Najarala is effectively made solely because Delamador was made. And after putting all the effort in on a snake, they thought, well, we can't just we can't, we can't just have all of that just for Delamador. We need another one. And so Najarala was made. What environments slash biomes do you like the most in Monster Hunter? And what are the ones that aren't in the series that we like to see? I really love swamps. Um I think the I think both the swamp maps are quite nice, but the first gen one is definitely my favourite. I think someone asked that. So yeah, my my favourite map is the uh is the first gen swamp map. It's just so moody and foggy and yeah, it's brilliant. Um and outside of that, um, outside of that, yeah, I think swamps are definitely the reigning favourite. I never think the others are really that interesting. Um, they can often have very good monsters, but they're often just sort of, you've seen one, you've seen them all, really. Um, ones that we haven't seen yet that I would like to see. I really love to see a savannah. That's why I also really like Tri Sandy Plains, because it was made pretty much as a savannah with some desert tacked on for Diablos and later Nibelsnarf. Um, so yeah, I think 
Yeah, I think a savannah grassland with various monsters adapted to it would be really nice. I think a deciduous broadleaf woodland, like sort of give the sort of vibe of an of an enchanted forest would be really nice. As I guess bits of the ancestral steppe sort of did that, but not very well. But I think a whole map devoted to that with like um giant oak trees and bluebell glades and stuff like that would be really nice. What else? I would love a cave map. Uh, I think like a proper cave map. The uh, the the rotten veil is a good start, but that's more of a sort of a chasm in the ground, filled with dead things. I think a proper cave, where the only natural light is like um the shaft of light coming down from where you enter, and then everything else is bioluminescent or whatever you bring with you, would be really nice. Um, yeah, there's probably a few more. Like a cloud forest would be a nice spin as well on the sort of forest to make it more unique. Or a, or a temperate rainforest like those around British Columbia. And a cold desert would be a good spin as well, like a high altitude one. So yeah, there's, uh, there's still a lot you can do for sure. Uh, who's next? Nursilla. Love Nursilla. Is she good enough for top fave? Let's say yes for now. Because yeah, like I said, I've Given Nacella relatively recently, but I think, again, she just does everything right in a way that feels very fitting for Monster Hunter. She's quite a good fight. Um, her ecology is really nice. The way her she combines the ecology with her fight and her behaviour, fantastic. Uh, her animations and noises as well are just so wonderfully creepy. Yeah, she just, she just ticks every box and she's great. Um, definitely a top fave. Any plans on creating content about the monsters from Frontier? Not right now. I mean, who knows, things might change in the future, but not right now. Um, no. And I've said my piece on the Menespinas, and I'll probably not say anything more for a while. Celtus is excellent. He is my... I think he's the best starter monster. The Drones and the Greats were never that good. I'm not a fan of Azuros. Great Jagras I do like, but he's a bit easy, and yeah, the fight isn't... The fight's all right, but it's also a bit simple. Whereas Celtus, I think, is just right. He is the he's the just right porridge for the starter monster. And he's a bug, and he flies, so that's uh, quite a nice change of pace from the others. Uh, so I'll put, I'll put him with his girlfriend, um, so he can get eaten. But yeah, I think Celta Screen is also just a really good monster. Um, yeah, she a bit like Nacella, she just does everything right, and the fact, yeah, just the interactions she has with Celtus are also yeah, I absolutely love that as well. So yeah, and people have asked for them, and I do like them obviously uh, from their position in the tier list, but I'd need to look into them a bit more. But you could obviously cover the whole the relationship with Celtus and their queen, but then. Is that enough for a whole video, and what else is there about them to make a video on? Um, so yeah, it's something I do want to... I, I would like to cover, but it would need a bit more thought and research first. What are your thoughts on the actual Monster Hunter lore, like Nagagante being the natural predator of Shara Ishvolder, and the ecology Capcom gives for them? So, Nagagante, like... I'm not sure if he is the natural predator. I think, like, we've seen that he will kill Shara on occasion, but Shara spends most of its time underground, and Nagagandhi doesn't. So I'm not sure how often they would naturally encounter one another. So I'm not sure if Naga Nagagandhi predation has any real impact on Shara's numbers. I doubt it, because they're not on the surface that often. Um... And as well, even when they come to the surface, normally they would be covered in rock. It was only really the hunters um, who, who took all that away and allowed Nogagante to get such an easy kill by both weakening it and taking its armor off. So even if Nogagante did encounter one, I think it would struggle to, to take its armor off. Um, but I think there's a possibility Nagagante may kill it out of competition as well. There's one thing in the Iceborne lore book that was mentioned was that Shara at least partially made the Rotten Veil, vale, and it sort of did like a burying beetle thing when it found the dead, the dead Delamidors, or Delamidor relatives, and it started burying them, and so it's responsible for creating the Veil, vale, at least partially. 
And if it sort of has that behavior when it finds a giant dead corpse of an elder dragon, the Nergaganti may... Because Nergaganti we know wanted uh, Zora to feast on Zora. So if Shara is effectively denying it access to those bodies by burying them, then they may well be in competition over over the giant corpses. And that may be where Nerg's hostility comes from. So I do want to do a video on Nerg at some point, and that will be a part of it. Um, but yeah, so that's my thoughts on it. It may well be competition much more than predation. Um, just because I don't think Nerg gets that opportunity very often. And it's most likely to happen uh, when Shara comes to the surface to start burying a body. Uh, notification, be quiet. Seregios. Fave. Top fave. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just love Seregios. I think he's fantastic. Um... Such a good move set. Like I think he's almost completely got bespoke moves for him. The ecology is really nice. The use of his feet, his his zygodactyl owly feet, is really nice. The blades and everything. Yeah, he's the father of bleed, which is nice. Yeah, just he again just does everything right. He's just in a in a game in a series that had a lot of flying wyverns. He just felt very fresh, like a very original fight. The sort of the way he's not quite a pseudo wyvern, but he moves very differently to other wyverns. Is also just a nice touch. Yeah, he was just a, a breath of fresh air compared to the Wyverns. And yeah, he just does a lot of things right that make him an absolute fave. Uh, I don't know if it's been asked before, what are your qualifications? So yeah, um, I have my undergrad in zoology and my master's in ecology. And I would like, I wouldn't mind being Dr. UHC one day. And I was sort of in preparation to do a doctorate at one point, but then it fell through. And I didn't want, I'd never want to do one on something that doesn't interest me. As I know quite a few people who have done that. And yeah, it's just signing three years of your life away for more security before before the judgment comes again of what you'll have to do once you're finished. Um, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I think committing that much of your life to something that you aren't hugely interested in, no. So yeah, I will... It may not happen, but who knows? Never say never. Uh, Shagaru Magala. Let's put him with his younger form. As yeah, again, he's fine. Like I said in his video, I would want him to look a little bit more different to Gore. I don't like that there's not that much of a change between them. But at the same time, he's still a pretty decent fight. And yeah, I do like that they have sort of the adult and the juvenile phase. And he does... Yeah, it's not bad. Just I'm just not the biggest Gore or Shagaru fan, unlike a lot of the rest of the fan base. Um, what's your favourite kind of cheese? Now we're getting into the real topics. Um, so my favourite type of cheese is one from the Middle East called Knafe. And it's like a sort of sweet mozzarella that has... I can't remember what it is. I think it's like syrup that hardens on it and then pistachios that you put on top of it. And it's meant as a dessert. And I really like that. Because I'm not big on savoury cheeses. Like, I'll eat them if they're there and I don't dislike them. But I'm not, uh, you know, like a, like a cheese nut like some people are. I think they're fine. But canafe is definitely my favourite and the one that I'll definitely seek out. But the thing is, it's both very hard to get outside the Middle East and... And it's never really as good. Like, this is something other devout Kanafe enthusiasts have said, that if you get it anywhere outside the Middle East, it's just not that good. Um, it seems, yeah, you, you, it's just very hard to make as well. So yeah, that's my favourite type of cheese. And if I were to give a savoury answer, it would probably be Red Leicester. Who is next? Tetsu Cabra. He's going in excellent. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, I love a lot of the, the fourth-gen early game monsters. And Tetsu Cabra is brilliant. Um, a relatively decent fight. And he's not too complex, but then he's relatively early in the game. He doesn't need to be. The design is very nice. Very nice. The lore about him and, you know, his, his tadpoles is, yeah, also great. And yeah, he's a monster that I really want to see in a World Series game. Just to see what his environmental behaviours are. Alrighty. When will the Carapacians get a video? Uh, good question. Like, as I've said, I really like them. But the thing is, they are just big crabs. And that makes it hard to make analogies, because it's not really much of an analogy. It's sort of a 1-1 one -one copy, which can make it quite hard for an actually interesting video. 
So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I, I do like the crabs and I do want to do a video on them at some point. It's just finding talking points that are interesting and aren't just, these are some big crabs. Um, but yeah, it may well still happen. Zamtros can go here. Because, like I said, Zamtros, I think, is a good example of a monster where there's that saying, the more you add, the more you take away. And yeah, that's him. Like... He he just, like, a lot of his gimmicks don't really feel very relevant to one another, or even that relevant to him. I feel if, like, he should have been, like, the balloon shark or the ice shark, um, and not both. Uh, but, yeah, it just feels like they've just stitched random things onto him uh, to try and make him more interesting. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like a very committed design. And some people like that. But I don't, and it's my tier list. Uh, so he's only going in mixed and mid. Maybe even flawed. Mixed and mid is looking a bit full, isn't it? But then Tiger Stripe doesn't have the ice armor. And sort of, so obviously I picked this one because I didn't want to be here for 50 years. Um, but also because I can't be bothered to go through all the subspecies. I consider the subspecies a uh, derivative of the main monster, so if their subspecies is good or bad, that will impact their ranking here. So let's say that Tiger Stripe keeps him out of flawed. All right. What are your hopes for the next Monster Hunter game? Effectively, I want them to, yeah, just take everything they did with World, double down on it, and yeah, just, just, keep, just keep going in that regard. Um, and for it to actually have a good story. What monster idea slash concept would you like to see in Monster Hunter? Um, so, yeah, so one thing a few people asked is what animals you think would make for good monster designs or, or would, um, or would, you know, fit the world of Monster Hunter quite well. And there's definitely quite a few, so I'll sort of answer those as well, in that I think, I think a lot of birds that aren't passerines would be a, quite a good shout. Like, especially if water combat comes back, uh, birds, like wyverns based on on various water birds, like diving birds would be quite cool, or grebes, or even a pelican wyvern that uses its bill like that would be quite cool. Badgers, as a family, as well, they're not really a family, uh, it's just a sort of random name for various small mustelids, but they have a very strong sort of striking visual aspect to them with the black and white. Uh, they're sort of, they're already sort of well known for fighting and yeah, and they sort of have gimmicks with their musk as well. So I think the badgers are definitely a fan family of animals that trans would translate very well, sort of undergoing monster hunterfication. Um, I would like to see more herbivores just in general, both more herbivores full stop, sort of across all levels just for a bit more diversity and more fightable herbivores that are big, sort of strong on apex level and higher. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to see that implemented more. Uh, what is your favorite Elder Dragon and least favorite? Yeah, I think I've already answered that. It's Camellios and uh, the Sparky um, Valstrax. How do you feel? I don't know. So I'll do another monster first. Basarios, he can go in... Let's put him in decent, because I quite like Basarios, and I think a lot of people don't like his fight, but I think in Rise, and 4th Gen in general, I think it's quite good, like, Bas Basarios in 1st Gen was just a poisonous bullfight, and he wasn't very fun, and I think the fact he's actually got specific moves for him now, and they very much fit his, his build and his character... Like, he tries to roll over you and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think... Yeah, I think as he is right now, like, he's not a hugely late-game monster, so you don't want him to have tons of stages. And he is a sort of a fat, stumpy monster, so he can't be that athletic. So I think he's as good as he can get, and he doesn't really need to be better. I think he's fine how he is. Um, so, yeah, I do think I quite like Basarios. Yeah, even if a lot of others don't, but, yeah... He, he has a place in my heart, for sure. Right, uh, we're getting on to an hour and a bit now. And the reason I didn't do this live is because it would take ages and I didn't have that much time just to talk in one bit. So I will edit these all together, so I'm not sure why I said that. But yeah, this will be the end of part one. Alrighty, we are back. Uh, right, let's dive back into where we were. 
Bulldrome, you're absolutely in Get Out. Uh, what argument can you make for Bulldrome, really? Bullfango, the sort of... I mean, they've been in this series a while, and they're not that annoying in some of the more recent games. Like, they, they're they sort of a, like they have a proximity that they'll attack in, but they don't... Like, the second you enter the zone, they won't charge towards you. But Bulldrome is just a bigger version of them, and he has nothing redeeming about him. Also, the question from Prawn, whom I cut off after loudly announcing the first half of it. Uh, darkness in Monster Hunter, yeah. Um, yeah, I agreed on all of that. I would also really like darker, moodier environments. Um, as I feel, yeah. Um, obviously, then there needs to be some level that the player can see on, because one thing Monster Hunter doesn't have is, like, an artificial source of illumination that the hunter can carry with them. And the fact it's in third person as well makes that even harder. Like, the the torch was a nice idea, um, but you could... And I do like that, you know, you, could, um, you had to put it away when you took your weapon out and try. But... Yeah, it's the hunter still needs to be able to see a certain amount. <clears throat> but that said, we could still we could still get darker than we are right now, I think. And even outside of darkness, I just think um just generally lower visibility environments, like thick vegetation or fog or things like that, would also uh be a very nice touch to just, you know, crank up the atmosphere. And yeah, it where caves are present they should, yeah, they should be a bit, uh, a bit more dangerous. A deep sea biome is also quite nice. I think the one thing is, like, how do you get there? Because that's sort of, like, you can't really expect the hunter to swim down, like, 3,000 feet from one zone to another. Um, but I think, yeah, you could still have, like, a bioluminescent biome, um, an ocean one, I think. That would be really quite cool. Um, and yeah, and then have lots of bioluminescent monsters in it to really show that off. Um, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Alright, who is next? Uh, Cephadrome. You're definitely in Flawed. I really like the Cephalos and Cephadrome design. I think it's fantastic, very naturalised, and just the idea of a land shark as well is very Monster Hunter and is very cool in general. But there's no denying the fight is awful. So the design stops them purely the design and some of the lore like i really like the notion that you know their scales are blue but you never see that it's only when you've washed them off so the armor's blue but they're not um that stops them being scum class uh right if water comeback ever came back what real life aquatic creature do you think could be represented through a new monster quite a few so i've already mentioned um uh, various water birds that uh, wyverns and so on could take from. I also think, obviously, there's a bit of a debate about Spinosaurus. It's been going for the past ten years or so. Um, but a Spinosaur brute wyvern with uh, with water combat would be really, really cool. As we don't really need any more Carnosaur or Tyrannosaur wyverns. I think we're full of those right now. We can still have plenty more brutes, but... Let's start taking from other theropods and other animals. And Spinosaurs is the way forward there with water combat. And like I said in the, uh, I think it was Tigrex's video, I'd really like a, a Jaguar pseudo wyvern that utilizes water combat. Um, I think that would be very cool as well. And maybe some watery bugs as well. Like uh, more crabs, definitely. Maybe a mantis shrimp. And then some weird deep sea fish would be cool as well. So I think, yeah, the, the world is your oyster uh, when it comes to water. Just because I think, yeah, not having to be on land can you f can free you up a bit in terms of all the the weirdness you can you can evolve into. And then we have Camellios, who, as I've said, is my favourite elder dragon. So let's put him where he belongs in top faves. Although even I have to admit, in Rise he's a bit lacklustre. He just doesn't feel like. He's been updated that well, and he doesn't really pack the same punch as other Elder Dragons. He always felt... he was definitely the easiest of the original trio. But, yeah, he just he just hasn't really pulled himself out of there yet. But, what are favourites, if not things we are biased towards? So he still remains there. And everything else is nice about him as well. 
what do you think of the antagonistic relationship between the Alatrion and the Sapijiva species? Do you think it makes sense? And who do you think is better posed to win? Uh, yeah, I think it makes sense. Well, it has the potential to make sense. And so I think it's hard to say who wins when we know so little about them. I think if they were to 1v1 each other on Rust, then Safi would definitely clap out Latrion. But at the same time, you know, um, Latrion may have some mechanism that allows it to destroy cocoons relatively easily, like the the thing that was uh, in the Confluence of Fades. So he could potentially, you know, have a much greater impact on their population by killing them in their crib, effectively. Um, so even if he loses one versus one, he could still... Uh, yeah, he could still have a greater com greater competitive impact on them. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot we don't know. But I do like that the the black dragons or sort of black dragon tiered monsters have their own little conflict going on as well. Because after sort of years of being sort of placed above everyone else, and they still are, they're not above each other, and they're still sort of in conflict with each other. So yeah, I think I think it's a little nice touch that just adds that little bit sort of of extra a behavioral spice to the black dragons that they didn't really have before. But yeah, I think there's we just don't know enough about them to make any strong conclusions. Uh, who's next? Diablos. Yep, he's in the top faves. A absolute classic of the franchise and just a fantastic design. Um, like you just take one look at him and he just says so much about himself with his design. And the Black Diablos subspecies and the new lore behind it, well, new. It's been present since third gen, but whatever. Yeah, that's also really nice and just improves it further. Yeah, just overall an incredibly solid monster that yeah, I'm very fond of. And I don't want it to be in every single game, but I definitely want it to continue to appear in the franchise, as it has definitely earned its place as the, the tyrant of the desert. I'd much rather have Diablos in every game than some cut price version of him to try and shake up a roster. Would you be down for making a series that debunks animal myths and misconceptions? So that was originally effectively a channel I had before this one, like a few weeks beforehand, that just didn't get off the ground, and so I didn't continue with it. Um, I so if you asked me a while like a few months ago I might have said yes like now that this channel is a lot larger than it was um I may well have done something like that but now I'm also working as a freelance science writer for some other people and that's just a much safer bet at communicating what I want to say to a much broader audience because even if this even if I made that channel and it had the same amount of success as this one it still wouldn't be as large as the other channels I can work for so it's not the fact I'm saying it that's important it's just getting the information out there and so long as I can do that um then I'm satisfied and I also get paid for it um which is of course the, the icing on the cake Gendrome, my favourite of the raptors. But he's also quite annoying and he's still not that good a fight. So we'll put him in mixed. I really like his design. I think he's just the whole the whole desert bird wyvern with his camouflage and his eye crests. I think that looks and his viper fangs, yeah. He's he's just a very stylish animal. But none of the drones are really that good a fight. Um, and I also actually missed the second part of that question. If you could make a new fantastical biome for new Monster Hunter game, what would that be? Uh, so I think I've said it before, but a cave map. A nice, properly weird cave map where everyone is an absolute freak. Like, Kezu and Giganauts would be the most normal things in there. And everyone else would have, like, clear see-through bodies and just be absolute weirdos. And it would only be lit by, like, bioluminescent fungi. So that would be my fantastical monster hunter biome map. But I find making, like I said, well, making a map is easy. Well, not easy, but it makes more sense to make a map first before you make any monsters. And I think there's a lot of environments that just lend themselves very well, whereas you need to put a lot more thought into a monster. Uh, have any thoughts or opinions changed since you made your video on them? Not since I made my video on them, but in the process of making them, I'd probably say Valhazak is the biggest one. Um... Like, I was quite indifferent to him beforehand, and then as I sort of looked more into the stuff adjacent to him, definitely I thought, yeah, he sounds a lot more plausible now. And listening to his theme quite a lot also, like, I think that one is a really good bit of music. Um, Gravios. 
Let's put him in. I'm going to put him in excellent because I really like Gravios. Um, and someone also asked about what are my thoughts on the Ore Munchers and Gravios. And yeah, I really like them. So in first gen, like, they weren't that good a fight. Um, few were. But he he was a bit repetitive after Diablos and that he was sort of, he also charged a lot. But he didn't have the horns, he had his lasers instead. Even then the laser, that was such a good sort of little bit of visual design that showed he was at least a tier above other fire-breathing wyverns. In that, you know, they had fireballs that went out, whereas he just had this sort of straight napalm beam, and it looked so much more dangerous and intimidating. And that, coupled with his size, just really sold him as, you know, probably the most powerful monster in the sort in the low rank outside of all the elder dragons who couldn't fight in low rank village in the original. And he's become, he's almost had a bit of a renaissance recently, and a lot of people I've seen sort of recognize him as a puzzle box monster now, where you've got to sort of break his parts one by one to really defeat him, and I think that's good. I think that really changes the pace of a fight and makes it less monotonous, and that's one thing the franchise really needs, is to stop using gimmicks to make fights just dime a dozen, and have monsters be much less one-size-fits-all. And so that's something I like about Gravios. I think he'll come back in 6, I think he's a fair contender for it, and I really want to see him sort of updated visually, because Gravios, like, when you look at his ecology video, and then how he is in the game, he's a bit chunkier and chubbier, he's almost sort of like the Michelin Man Wyvern. And then you look at his face, especially in the ecology video, and it's so much sharper and harsher. It almost looks like this stone mask. And you can see he's actually got like the the sort of vestigial remnants of like a canine tusk there. And yeah, I think that just makes him look so much more intimidating. And, and it really fits him as well. So yeah, I really want him back. And I, I'm quite fond of him. Interestingly, I never used to be, like, when I first played the games when I was a kid with the first one, Gravios definitely wasn't a favourite of mine, but he's grown on me with time. Have you thought of doing a video on niche partitioning in Monster Hunter in general? Uh, I have not. Um, so there was a, yeah, someone studying niche partitioning in herbivores, yeah, it would, uh, it would be quite an interesting topic, but it's not one I thought of right now, and... The one thing I think I'd fear about doing that is I might repeat a lot of points um, in, that I've made in other videos, but never say never, it could well be a broader topic in Monster Hunter. Uh, do you think any of the large herbivores should be Elder Dragon level monsters? Uh, absolutely. Like, Gamoth absolutely should be. She's a walking mountain. <laughs> like, what the hell are the other Apex monsters going to do to her? They would just smash themselves like a bug on a windshield. Durambros as well, pretty much. The Blossoivans, yeah, again. Like, I've said it before in the videos, but they're definitely just a tier above a lot of, a, a, a lot of other Apex monsters with the physical power and the damage they can do with their horns that more than makes up for lack of element. Again, same with Gravios, just, he's just so well armoured that, yeah, not many things are going to be able to even scratch his paintwork. Banbaro, not so much. Um, uh, like, he's definitely big enough right now, but I think I'd almost want to see him downsized a bit, or turned to apex level. Um, but as right now, him being as big as he is, yeah, I don't really think that fits his current quest rank. And Uragan is also... He's not quite as well armoured, or doesn't have quite as good weaponry as some of the others there, so I definitely think he's he's not quite as powerful. I, I don't think, I wouldn't put him on the same level. Um, and yeah, another thank you, and yeah, it's uh, always nice to receive those, so thank you as well. Alright, uh, who's next? Gypsaros, also mixed and mid. But he's both of them. He's a bit of an annoying fight. But you can sort of see why he has all his tricks. Like, he's an in he's someone everyone would like to eat. He's a nice sort of fat, plump turkey wyvern. And they are interesting gimmicks. And, like, the playing dead mechanic is just a really nice bit of behavior. It's just not so fun when you're trying to kill him. I'm not sure how fun he could ever be, but at the same time, I think his interactions with other monsters and with Narcilla, I think, would get him a place in a game I would like to see. Um, even if the fight is never really going to be that good, he can still um, he can still have a, a role in the game otherwise. 
Could Grimclaw Tigrex have an explanation for super powerful arms and claws? You no, know, sort of, in that you could just say, you know, he's got some weird, you know, bone robusticity thing that just makes him, you know, comparatively more powerful to others. I think anything further than that, though, and you might struggle. And Guy's Magorm. So, I don't think they have the same ancestor uh, to Ibushi and Nawa. Uh, as, after all, Elder Dragon is a informal wastebasket taxon. It's like they, they openly say it in World. If it's powerful and we don't know what it is, it's an Elder Dragon. Um, but yeah, I don't believe they're... They're related, but I do really like Guy's McGorm. I think he's he's a great endgame boss. He's got a great design, very well made. He's got a lot of features from fossorial animals. So yeah, I think he... And the, and the relationship with the Curio is quite nice as well. So yeah, he's just a very, very strong endgame monster. Um, really like him. And yeah, thank you again for your comments. Uh, right, who is next? Iodrome. Let's put Iodrome in Flawed, because we've got too many Raptors in Mixed and Mid. And Iodrome is probably my least favourite of them. Um, he's not awful, but at the same time, by the time you fight him, he's got way too much health for what he is. You're already a bit raptored out. Poison's annoying, and yeah. And I also think Roggy is a bit better than him, so that doesn't help him. Who is next? What's your favourite creature design in anything that skews more towards fantasy tropes than biology and why? Uh, good question. Um, and I'm not sure what my answer is. That's a very good question. Um, so I might... So it's, to sort of stall, I might say um, uh, Malzano uh, in Monster Hunter, just because I think it's, it's just quite stylish with all his vampire stuff. Um, and... Yeah, even if there's some things that are a bit much, like his sort of super speed thing, I do think that the sort of vampire aspects to him are, are quite cool. Outside of him, I'm just trying to go through various fantasy properties now and see if there's anything that really stood out to me and made me like it a lot. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if I can think of anything, mainly because when I see something that grounds a monster rather than sort of makes it more fantasy, that's what really twigs me into liking it. There might be something, but I can't think of it right now. But if something pops up, I'll, I'll bring it up when it comes to mind. Um, who is next? Kezu. Let's put Kezu in... not mixed in mid. Where did I put Giganox? He can go wherever Giganox went. Decent. But like I said, I think they're roughly the same in terms of their quality. I don't think one's much better than the other. But I do think Kezu had a lot of wasted potential in, in Rise, in that his environmental interactions if he was in something like World, could have been so cool. Like, we could have had his ecology cutscene of him eating the Kelby. Like, seeing that in-game, I think, would have been fantastic, and just seeing him do other really weird things like that. Like, you could have been, even seen him shock something and then lay eggs in it. I think that would have been really gross and creepy and great. But instead, all we really get is him rubbing his neck on the wall. Um, so, yeah. And his fight is all right... I mean, I'm not sure it's changed that much since its implementation in 4th gen. And I'm not sure how much you can really do with Kezu. But, yeah, where his fight lacks, you can definitely have him do a lot of cool environmental stuff. But he's not there yet. But I really like his design. Like, I've spoken about it before. He's just the most wonderful, like, implementation of, like, a troglodyte wyvern. And that's absolutely fantastic. Even if a lot of people think he's really ugly, that's sort of the point. He is absolutely made for function over form. Um, and yeah, it's just a very strong design. And if he had more environmental stuff, it'd probably be excellent, because I do really like Kezu. But he doesn't, so he's indecent. What is the pettiest thing about common monster creature design that irks you? How long do you have? Um, but... Ooh, so I'm probably not a good enough judge to know what's petty and what's not. One thing that does spring to mind just seeing the question might be wings, in that, like, even if you give something big wings, they're often the wrong wings for what it really needs to fly. 
uh, at that size just because I think any giant flying animal you'd expect to have huge albatross like wings um, just because of wing loading and stuff like that and the fact that you know you can't really have like a hummingbird or something really agile like a sparrowhawk or something um, at that size it has to be a giant fundamentally soaring or gliding animal um, so maybe wings um, and just wing shape but yeah, I'm not sure if that's petty or not uh, but it quite possibly is, just because it's coming from me. Um, who is next? Kirin. Ugh, I'm not a fan of Kirin, I'll just be honest. So let's put him in flawed. Yeah, he's he's just a bit of a ball lake to fight. He's always hopping around everywhere. When you just want him to stand still and take his legs. The thunder's always been a bit annoying. And yeah. And he's just sort of a, a sparkly unicorn, isn't he? So yeah, I'm not, not the biggest fan of Kirin. Sorry to all of the Kirin fans, uh, few as you may be. How much time do you dedicate to the real-world aspect in your real-world monster entry ecology? Um, does one side take significantly more time? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, in terms of the the, the monster hunter ecology itself, um, I can only pretty much go on what what law is provided. So. For things that are in Worldborn, um, there's generally like a good amount of information there, um, just from the books, that can often point you in certain directions or generally flesh out a video. For monsters that aren't, yeah, it's the the, the existing lore is often quite bare bones, so there's just not that much to use, and so the the real the real life aspects um, take much more, take the sort of the bulk of the video, as it were. Is that Fatalis's first gen icon? And I think you're really meant to more say it Fatalis or or something else, but I've always just said it Fatalis, and people are probably gonna be annoyed at that, but oh well. Um Can we yeah, let's act ah, decent. But I'm not I don't really care that much about any black dragon. Um and a lot of endgame bosses Actually, no, that's wrong. I like quite a few endgame bosses, but I don't really like black dragons. They're just not really that interesting. But Fatalis and White Fatalis. Is White Fatalis in here? Is he esteemed enough to be his own? No. I can't see him. So yes, yeah, like White Fatalis definitely feels like his own thing. But it seems in here at least he is just still a subspecies. So yeah, I think White Fatalis is probably my favourite of them. I think, it, yeah, it's again, it's just a style thing. I think he looks really cool. And there's sort of there's a glass ceiling about how much I can really like any black dragon. Um but I think in Iceborne, his animations especially are really good. Just because they, they say a lot about him. Like when he runs, he's got his sort of hexapod run where he uses his wings as well. And so much of him still drags along the ground. And similarly when he flies, so much of him hangs down. It just it really sends the impression that this is something that doesn't move very efficiently at all. There's so much dead weight, it's dragging, itself, uh, dragging along with itself. And so that in turn could almost tell you this isn't something that moves very much at all. Um, he, he likes to show up, destroy a kingdom, and then sleep for a decade or so. And just moving very much isn't very high on his agenda. And one of the things that really irks him is when you've woken him up to fight him. So that's something I quite like about him. And his fight is quite good in Iceborne. It's like, it's it's everything you'd expect from the challenge and the cinematic aspects of it. Yeah, it's it's quite impressive. Um, so Fatalist gets to go in decent. Are there any anime monsters whose fight quality completely overshadows how ridiculous they are to you? Uh, not completely overshadows. In some cases, it might sort of dampen the blow of how much I dislike them. But definitely nothing, I don't think any of them have made me go, wow, this is so great. Because one thing as well with the anime monsters is, I think quite a few people have sort of gaslit themselves into thinking that if it's an anime monster, it must instantly be a good fight because it flashes a lot. And similarly, if it's a dull monster, it must instantly be a bad fight, but there's nothing on its glowing. When I absolutely don't think that's the case. Like, I think, yeah, I think even the, even the dullest monster can still have a very good fight, and even the flashiest one can still be an absolute spam titan. I mean, flashy monsters often do just spam area of effect attacks that are never really that much fun to deal with. Um, so yeah. Who is next? Lunastra. Um, I'm gonna put her... Hmm. 
That's a tough one. In one of these two, on one hand, she's not as bad as I think quite a few people say, but on the other, she can be quite annoying. Hmm. Let's put her in mixed then. Lunastra, yeah, she's quite a pain in world. Quite a pain indeed. Um, and there's not much more to say, like, in, in earlier games she was just blue Tiostra, but she did have some really nice gear, it does have to be said. Um, yeah, she's got some really stylish weapons, and I can't remember her armour, if she actually had any unique, I can't remember. But that was probably pretty cool as well. Um, but yeah, no, she has some quite cool gear. That's definitely a point in her favour. Um, but otherwise... Yeah, the the ecology added is nice, both in the book and the sort of the like, like you actually see them together for the first time, and that's really nice. And you know, she's sort of she's sort of bigged up as the more aggressive of the two, at least when she's in the new world. So yeah, that's nice, but it's not enough for me to put her any higher. Would you ever consider analysing the bizarre ecology of the nineteenth century lost world fiction? Uh, possibly. Um, I've not thought too much about it right now. But I do quite like that sort of era of fiction, um, like with all the authors mentioned here. Uh, yeah, um, I think I could possibly do a video on them. Um, after all, I have done books before on Skull Island. But yeah, it's not something I've thought about, but it is something I enjoy. So there's definitely, I think there's possibly a video in there. But um, how exactly it would come out, I'm not sure. Because, yeah, I'm not sure how much they sort of classify and actually note things down about the monsters and other things and dinosaurs in there. But yeah, it's yeah, it's something I enjoy and I, it, I could well talk further about it, whether it would be like an analysis video or a commentary one, I'm not sure. But there could well be something there. And then we have Monobloss, who uh, yeah, I've made no secret, he's a favourite of mine. So let's put him where he belongs. And yeah, I sort of, I almost view Monobloss and Diabolus as one. Like, which is why I often just refer to them as the Bloss Wyverns. Um, even if they had a few differences in For You, they're still probably quite similar in a lot of aspects. And w if Monobloss comes back, I really hope they do differentiate him that little bit more. Just because uh, more variety is always good. That's if he comes back. I think if he's not back in 6 or 6 Ultimate, yeah, I think his goose is cooked. But... So I've said it a few times in other places, but I wouldn't actually be that angry or annoyed or anything if he didn't come back, so long as they actually made it into, you know, like, a, a thing in the canon. If, like, if they mention in dialogue or something that, like, he's a species that went extinct due to overhunting, and thus that sort of pushes something in the story or in the actions of a character, or if, like, in... In the Hoarfrost and in the old Snowy Mountains map, you had the Kushala exoskeleton that you could visit. If you had, like, the, the skeleton of a Monobloss with the hunter, the last hunter who slew it, and was also killed by it, like, lying next to each other. And, like, that, you got some notification that that was the bones of the last Monobloss. I think that would be quite a nice send-off for it. Um, but I would like there to be an actual send-off in the canon, rather than just... It being left out indefinitely. Uh, if this question has been asked already, do you have any favourite real life animals? Yes, lots, but my main favourite is probably the spotted hyena. I think it's it's just an absolutely fascinating animal. Um, the intelligence, the social structure, the the breeding uh, with the the sort of very highly developed cubs and then the incredibly fatty milk that allows the mothers to follow migratory prey. The hunting, the, uh, the fish infusion behaviour, territoriality, their interactions with other predators, um, their role as a predator. Yeah, there is just nothing about a spotted hyena that is boring. They're fantastic animals. Who is next? Naga Cougar. He's going in excellent. So, again, I've sort of written an essay about Naga Cougar relatively recently. If he was better in 5th gen, he would be in the top faves. Buzzy is sort of a favourite of mine, but at the same time, I cannot deny how bad his, how just just how slow and fat he feels in Iceborne. And then he's slightly better in Rise, but not by much. And yeah, that really just sort of holds him back. Um, so yeah, excellent is still good, but yeah, he's not quite where he should be right now. He needs to be sped up. 
and slimmed down and yeah and made cooler and made to interact with his environment more as well do you think monster hunter will continue with the technological advances in future games or do you think they will make games set in the past to avoid this i don't think they'll i don't think they'll have them actually affect anything in the game I think they might continue to sort of randomly throw sort of technological improvements in there, but I don't think it will be meaningful. I don't think they'll say like, oh, the world is changing or anything. I'd really like it if they did, because that could potentially drive the story forward in an interesting direction. Um, but I don't think they'll really say anything with that. Um, because, I mean, technically, they've also, they've already invented jet technology, like with Wyvern Ignition. Which is, I think, just a bit of an idiotic thing, because when you do that, and that's canon, players have every right to ask, well, why can't we have an Iron Man suit? Like, we've got these mini jets that can haul giant pieces of metal around, so surely we should be able to make that into some, you know, into some power armor. And they're completely right to ask that if you have canonically implemented that into your game. Yeah, so I think they will continue to just throw weird things in there, but it won't have any. It won't. It won't have any impact. Right, Plesioth. Yeah, absolutely in mixed. Really like the design. I think the design is fantastic. It's the perfect marriage of fish and wyvern. But the fight is ungood. It's it's terrible. If you're on land, um, I mean the memes exist for a reason. It's a lot better when you're underwater, but he hasn't been underwater for a while. Uh, third gen gave him a breath of life and then dipped. So as of right now, he has to remain in mixed. But I think there's still a lot to like about Plesioth. And I do like I do like that Capcom in stories gave him the, the hyperspace tackle. That was quite a, a nice moment of um of self realization. Uh but yeah. So maybe he'll appear in six and he'll be really good, who knows? Um, but having him back at any rate would be quite nice. Just to see him in HD and to see, like, to see his environmental behaviours, I think, again, seeing him, like, drag an Aptonoth off the beach, like in his ecology video, I think that would be really cool. Will you ever do a video that talks about the wildlife and plant life of the original 1925 movie version of The Lost World, like you did with King Kong? I don't have any plans to. I guess that sort of fits in with the earlier question. But no, I don't have any plans to right now. But I could, I might possibly be able to do so in future. Right. Rathalos and Rathian, I'll do these two together. He's not mixed or mid. He's, he's decent at very least, I think, now. Rathalos is... Yeah, in, in, in World and Rise, I think he's, I think he's pretty decent. Um... Could I put him in excellent? No, I think that's a bit much. I don't feel that strongly about him. Rathian is definitely a bit mid in that she's 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 just not been updated well enough in her fight. Um like what has she got this new recently? So it's always good when you've got a training monster, but at the same time I think she does need to be beefed up a bit, um, so people can take her seriously again. I wouldn't mind her becoming an apex again. Because I think she, yeah, she should be as strong as Rathalos. But yeah, Rathalos himself, um, yeah, I think in World, I think he was quite well realised. Um, I think the sort of, the turf wars in the ancient forest were a good bit of environmental storytelling. And that sort of no one really touched Rathalos, it was just the pretender to his throne, Anjanath. And then he got kicked down as well. And the fact that Rathalos had the highest nest on the very top, so he could look down on everyone, that was very on brand for him. Um, yeah, I think it was a pretty solid display of just who he is as Wyvern. So yeah, I think I think Rathalos as he is right now, he's pretty good as a fight. It took pretty much the lifespan of the franchise, but he's finally there. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with where he is. Favourite class of monsters? Yeah, Flying Wyverns. Take on rare species. Um... So, uh, I don't really know why rare species need to be a thing when they could just be a... when they could just be another variant or something like that. I imagine there's probably some technical term that differentiates them, but yeah, I don't really think they need to be a thing. Uh, do you think water combat should return to the mainline games? Absolutely. I'd really like for it to come back. And yeah, I think it just it just broadens everything out. I think you can do much more with a map, you can have more monsters, both aquatic ones and purely um, ones that are just pure water combat. So yeah, I think it absolutely should come back. 
everyone says, oh, but it's so bad, but yeah, they can improve it now. And I think I will be so willing to forgive so many of Ryze's sins if the if the wire bug was effectively just a big training exercise to to do 3D combat better for water combat. Because now that they've sort of mastered that, maybe not mastered, they made it really OP, but um but yeah, so I think now is the right time for them to bring it back, now that they've got a lot more experience with 3D combat. And yeah, it would do nothing but improve the franchise and yeah, give us more options. Watch your take on Siege Monsters, not a huge fan. So I, I think I mentioned it with the Morans, but yeah. I think overall they're just more trouble than they're worth. They provide a lot of spectacle, but I imagine they also take a lot of resources up that could just be spent doing something more interesting. Um, yeah, not the hugest fan. What sort of criteria do you use to choose the monster for the next video? Uh, yeah, a, a lot of the time it's vibes, and then sort of from the those who are who are who are vibing out, I'll put them in the Patreon poll, and then let them decide. Um, although in some cases, like with the pseudo wyverns, I did all of them together because I was scared I might have been uh, butchered if I didn't. The shakalakas, I don't have any strong feelings on them, so let's put them in in mid. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're just sort of little gremlins who run around and can be a bit annoying. And that, I think, is the sum total of my opinion on them. Who is next? Uh, what's your favourite dinosaur species? That's Allosaurus. Group. Um, as a group, though, I probably think, yeah, maybe maybe the Ceratopsians. Um, Allosaurus is a species, but as a sort of bro broader family, the Ceratopsians. Who is next? Teostra. He's definitely better than his wife. Um... And in, in... Where did I put Lunastra? She's a mix in mid, isn't she? So let's put Teostra in decent. So yeah, I think one above his wife, because he's, he's, he's quite good right now. In fact, could he be an excellent? He wasn't... Like, a lot of people hated him in For You. But, yeah, I think he's good enough to be excellent. Is his fight that good, though? It's not terrible right now. Um... And I think as a wyvern, uh, as an elder dragon, he's just uh, he's just very stylish. He's the sort of fire manticore, and that's very cool. Uh, it's it's just quite a timeless design. Um, even if it's not hugely original, I still think it's it's just a really nice one. And now that he actually has uh, more ecology as well, he was actually he wasn't actually that bad in the earlier games. You know, he had the sort of bits of him eating ore and stuff like that. But now he's actually a bit more fleshed out, um, and a lot of the stuff in his uh, in his entry in the world book is often sort of relating to his breeding stuff, because it's it's suggested that the the sort of cavern he makes in the um, in the recess was meant to be a nest. So it does seem like they breed in the new world. But yeah, um, I might just put him in excellent, but his decent is a bit crowded. And I do quite like. I still quite like Teostra a lot. Any thoughts on the MonsterVerse verse version of Skull Island? Not really. It's it's. I mean, everyone says it, but yeah, it's just not as good as the uh, as the Peter Jackson one. Um, Skullcrawlers are okay, I guess. They're sort of like a the the the, the four limbs are quite nice. That's sort of based off, I imagine, some burrowing skinks. So it is nice that they use the Hollow Earth to slither around. But outside of that, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that film, and I'm not a. And I think a lot of the monsters just they're just not as interesting as Peter Jackson's ones. Uh, so yeah. Who's next? Tigrex. What else do I need to say? Top faves. Like I've already wrote an essay on him. So, yeah, top top faves absolutely. Who's next? Is it possible to explain why fire element is so prevalent in the world of Monster Hunter ecologically? What impacts could it have? So I actually think... Uh, I'm not a botanist, but I think if there was someone who wanted to look into that, I think that could be really interesting. Because, yeah, as you say, like, with so many fire monsters, like, that would have huge effects on, on how plant species would react to fire. Sort of the amount of... Um, early arrival species after a after a after a large burn like you've got scots pines that can only germinate with fire and are sort of specialized to do that so 
monster hunter's botany in sort of drier areas where if there is a fire monster and it catches on it makes a wildfire and that happens frequently would i think be really interesting and very unique so it would definitely have a big impact on the plant life and then that plant life may well influence the um the herbivores like that may be another reason why aptonoth is so incredibly successful they could have some like the, the the weird plant life could be difficult to digest because of its adaptions to fire and aptonoth could have a some enzyme or something that better allows them to digest that so i think it would all fit in but i think you'd either need someone who is an actual botanist or a lot more law from capcom to officially say but definitely there will be impacts there i think uh, is it possible to explain why fire element... Uh, no, yeah, so this is the first half of the question, but um, is it possible to explain why it's so prevalent? prevalent? I think it's probably just... Um, I think it's just as a sort of a relatively effective sort of warning shot against other monsters. Sort of spraying fire at them is very effective um, just to keep them away from you without actually having to sort of grapple with them yourself. Um almost like spitting cobra venom it's good to send a send a painful message without actually having to fight so that's probably as close as you can get to it um because yeah otherwise i think it's just the fact that capcom really seem to like fire monsters velocidrome again not that great but not bad enough to be flawed let's just put him in mixed and mid with most of the other raptors um because I quite like Velocidrome. He's the first main hunt of the franchise, and so is my first main hunt. So he always has a, a soft spot in my heart for that, but I also can't deny the jank of fighting him. So he probably can't get much higher than mixed and mid. What do you think of Monster Hunter Frontier Monsters? Are they designed well? Does some of their biology make sense? And should they be included in future expansions? So some of them could be. The Leech Lord and the Wolves, if the Wolves were updated, because apparently they're a terrible fight. And again, the Hummingbird. Um, I would want him to be a bit redesigned like Zenoga was for World, though, because his face and his beak are definitely a bit weird. But I'm not a huge fan of anyone else. Like, a lot of people often sort of say that, you know, some monsters look absolutely perfect for the mainline. But I think quite a few frontier monsters, my problem with them is that they're just so vague and indistinguished in what they do. Like, even ones that don't have tons of spikes or f sort of flashy elements to them, they still don't look very designed to do anything. They just sort of look like a generic monster. That even when it's not sort of over the top, that doesn't instantly make it good. And so that's one thing that I think holds back quite a few frontier monsters is, yeah, they're just a bit generic rather than feeling like, feeling like an actual animal that has adaptations to live in certain environments, like a good deal of the Monster Hunter cast. Yeah. And if a new large herbivorous monster is made, what should it look to act like? Well, again, that'll depend where it lives. Um, you know, what's its habitat? Who else is in that habitat? But I think there's there's a lot of cool mon animals that you can take from. Um Sort of like bovids, like a musk oxen, like that would be quite cool. Hippos, I think, would be a very natural choice to look into there as well. Um, so yeah, I think I would, I would look at big herbivores in our world, past and present, um, and then see where you can take them from that. Because yeah, hippos are actually another good candidate for like a water combat herbivore, I think. Who is next? Vespoid Queen mid what else can you say she's just a big vespoid actually let's remain flawed then she's really not that good the idea is nice the the iridescent wings are nice not much else is though so flawed not quite scum class though what would you think if capcom introduced the idea of island gigantism and dwarfism in monster hunter i think that would be really interesting um i would say though i would probably expect that to be its own game um or maybe like a DLC or something. I think just sort of trying to bake that into like an already existing sort of base game. I don't think it would go too well. Uh, just because I think it would get overshadowed by other elements. But if you had that as like some sort of purposeful DLC. Or again its own game. Where it's like this weird island chain. With a lot of new monsters and like dwarf or giant versions of others. And like the according sort of changes to the roster and the power levels to, to fit with that. I think that would be a really interesting idea. I don't, I'm not sure if they'll ever do it, but I think, yeah, I think that's a really interesting idea. 
Yamatsukami. Ooh. Not talked about that much. I was so certain earlier that um earlier in the in the sort of rise timeline that Yamatsukami was gonna come back as like the endgame boss. It or White Fatalis. And I don't think that anymore. But it was nice to have that that moment of belief. Where am I gonna put it though? I think decent's actually good for it. The fight is not good enough to be excellent, and there's some really annoying aspects to it. But just as a weird, weird Elder Dragon, Yamasukami is quite decent. And yeah, it's just the weirdness of it. Like, it's covered in moss. The lore is so weird and vague. Like, it's sort of described to just float around and descend occasionally to, like, take a bite out of a forest as food. And yeah, it's just a wonderfully weird individual um, that I think really works for it. And I hope it will come back at some point. Um, what gen did you start with first? All the way back in 2005. Yan Garuga. Well, I think excellent right now. Just because, yeah, in Iceborne, like, again, I've talked about Yan Garuga relatively recently. But yeah, in Iceborne, I, th I really like the fight. The design is... The design probably holds it back a bit, just its closeness to Kukku and the fact it's just sort of goth, angry Kukku isn't a huge point in its favour, but it's also not terrible. Um, so yeah, I think Yanguruga, as he stands right now, is an excellent monster. Uh, who is next? Uh, what kind of dinosaur media did you grow up with, and how did it influence you? So the chief one is obviously walking with dinosaurs. And the influence it had on me, I think... Well, one, it... it well, there's not a time that I can remember that I haven't been interested in the natural world. There was like, there's never a light bulb moment. It's always been there. But walking dinosaurs was definitely a big influence and made me interested in behaviour, um, in animal behaviour, just because that was the main focus of, of those documentaries. But it's sort of in terms of Monster Hunter and stuff like this, one thing that I think it may have influenced me quite a bit is just that may well have been the seed planted that made me dislike things like uh, you sort of super powerful anime monsters. But sort of if Walking with Dinosaurs has a theme, I don't think it has a theme, but one that could be present, you could sort of extrapolate from it, almost as heavy as the head that wears the crown. But you see all these top predators, all the sort of the largest animals, like the largest predators in the ecosystem, the sort of the kings of their day, and nothing good ever seems to happen to them as a result of their size and power. If anything, it's often the opposite. The Postosuchus, like, it gets a relatively small wound, and because it's such a big animal with such big needs, that wound ultimately cripples it, and then it gets eaten by Coelophysis. The Lyplorodon, obviously, um, this great oceanic tyrant killer whale, is washed upon a beach and eaten by reptilian jackals, pretty much. The Giant of the Skies loses his majesty. The, the Mother Tyrannosaur... Again, all her size and power doesn't save her, and her chicks, they're not any more immune to the KT mass extinction um, due to the fact they're Tyrannosaurus. So yeah, it sort of really instilled the fact that being huge and powerful is very expensive, and if it goes wrong, it often, it often results in your downfall, and it's not a guarantee of your success in any way. So yeah, I think that may well have been an influence it had on me. Yeah, I definitely think that as a piece of media, Walking with Dinosaurs definitely influenced me in a lot of ways. But yeah, whether whether I, I can sort of see them in myself, I'm not sure, but other people might think, ah, oh, yes, you know, he's, he's clearly clearly sort of influenced in this way. Um, right, yeah, uh, Amatsu. Amatsu, I also quite like Amatsu. Um, decent or, yeah, decent. The one thing I think holds Amatsu back is the fact it doesn't have any sort of means of lifting itself. That's one sort of win I think the, the, the wind serpents have above it, is that with their gas bags they have a ve very clear um, thing that sort of gives them their buoyancy, whereas Amatsu is just sort of, it happens. But otherwise, I think it's, I think it's a really nice design, um, and yeah, I think it's just quite a cool monster, and it's quite a good fight as well. So I have pretty much good things to say about Amatsu. Just the one thing that bugs me that that stops it being excellent or any further is yeah, it's just how is it flying? Well, no. What have you ever played Rainworld? 
If so, any chance of a video on it? I have not played Rain World. It looks quite interesting, but I haven't had much to do with it. Um, so yeah, I can't say much more right now. But but it does look interesting. Um, so after I play it, maybe. But right now, I haven't really uh, haven't really had much to do with it. Astalos again. He is pretty much just been covered. Where I'm going to put him is is he good enough for decent or is he mixed and mid? Hmm. Do I want to start a third tier of mixed and mid? Mm, yes. Sorry, Astalos. Or is he decent? But then where am I going to put the rest of the Fated Four? Let's put him in decent for now, actually. Uh, right. So you've covered the Walking with Trilogy and Prehistoric Planet. Are there any other prehistoric wildlife related media you would like to slash filler worth to cover? Good question. Um, so, I could potentially talk about other things as well, but I'm not sure sort of what the context would be for a commentary video for a lot of them. Like, yeah, there's Dinosaur Planet and other things as well, but what sort of unique factor I would comment on them, other than just reviewing them, I'm not sure. I almost still want to do a video on Disney Dinosaur at some point, because one thing I see a lot is that it's often hailed as this sort of, um, this great missed opportunity that it could have been absolutely excellent. But when you really look into that, it was never, it was never going to happen. Like the hyper-violent version of it, Disney were never going to allow that. And a lot of other versions of it don't really sound that much better than what we got. Um, and I think a video exploring that and effectively coming to the conclusion that the film we did get was, you know, pretty fine as it was, and it... Disney were never going to make anything that was too different to that. Um, but yeah, whether I will actually do that anytime soon, I'm not sure. But it is something I've thought about. Um, all right, Gamoth. Gamoth is my favourite of the Fated Four. So let's put her in decent. Um, her fight is a bit slow, so she's not excellent. But I do like Gamoth. Uh, just, yeah, a massive herbivore. That's already a plus. An elephant monster, again. That's quite nice. And the the relationship with Tigrex as well. That's also another nice thing about her. And Popo as well, to add on to that. Um, I'd really like to see her come back. Yeah, overall, quite a solid monster. Mainly just lacking in the fact her fight is a bit slow. And she really feels limited in the old maps. I was quite hoping she'd come back in Iceborne, but she didn't. But I really hope she will in 6, just because she's the last of the Fated Four. And surely Capcom have got to be aware of that. So yeah, a, a good monster that has is still really quite lacking from hitting its its main potential. Um, but hopefully if she does come back in 6 in a nice big open tundra, we'll get to see the full glory of Gamoth. Alright. What are your opinions on having hexapodal dragons in Spec Evo works? I'm uh, just curious since 90% of them are quadrupeds. I think if you can come up with a, a rational reason for it, it's fine. Um, yeah, so long as you've got some reason for it, I think it should be fine. And I think you can still you can still have hexapodal dragons um, so long as you're sort of still doing relatively interesting things with their ecology and behaviour in the environment. Um, because Spec Evo is for fun, and I think a lot of people can get a bit sort of overly judgmental regarding it, when it's when I think everyone like can have something that is just wildly unrealistic, because it's you know you're making fake animals, so it there, there's always going to be sort of a glass ceiling as to how real they can be. Why are all the fated four together? But yeah, uh, Glavinus, let's put him in decent as well. I quite like Glavinus. He's probably actually maybe equal with Mizutsune. Um I'd say in terms of the Fated Four, it probably goes Gamoth. And then Glavinus and Mizutsune are probably fighting for second place, and then Astalos is last. I don't hate any of them, but I just think a lot of them sort of have the feeling of um, not quite hitting their full potential. Although Mizutsune is, is quite good. I think they'll all just be indecent, actually. Gamoth, uh, not Gamoth, Glavinus is, yeah, it's quite nice. The tail is an interesting touch, and sort of the lore around it, I think, is really quite interesting. Um, and then acidic Glavinus as well. The fact that they sort of, 
they f- they really um he really once you learn the law behind him that really quite fits and that all Glavinus's adaptations are sort of toxic volcanic environments um the fact that he sort of he uses that to then adapt to the veil is something that fits very nicely and i think acidic lav is quite a good subspecies as well and overall he was reasonably well realized in iceborne i think a lot of people complain about him using the not using the tail in turf wars but i'm not that annoyed with it just because i think in a lot of the turf wars you know, you can't just sort of stop and then turn around to face your enemy. If they sort of come at you right away, you've got to play your cards how they're dealt. And he does use it anyway against Odogar and he just misses. Um, and Rathalos as well, so I think it is a bit of a moot point. Do you have any desire to play Monster Hunter 2 once the full English translation is done and the server goes public? Uh, yeah, so Monster Hunter 2 was the forbidden fruit of the, of the Western fanbase and that Everyone wanted to play it, but we had to wait until Freedom 2 to get that sweet second-gen content. And so I think to finally play it at long last, even if I've effectively fought most of the content already, I think it still would be quite nice. Um, so yeah, if my my laptop can handle it, and hopefully it should be able to, then I, yeah, I'd definitely say I'd be interested in playing it, assuming I have the time. Great Macau. I'm going to put him in Decent. But as I said, I think objectively Macau is a relatively good monster, but just at the time of the franchise he shows up, I was just so raptured out already that I didn't really want to see any more of them. And then he comes along, and he's not bad, but just, yeah, I'm just a bit tired of raptors. Um, but the fact that he is still a relatively good fight, I think, yeah, it means that he deserves to be recognised as a cut above objectively all right have you played horizon zero dawn and its sequel forbidden west uh i have not um yeah so uh not huge thoughts on them as a result of that um and i'm yeah not familiar with the gameplay elements either although isn't that the one where all the dinosaurs are robots or am i thinking of something else yeah i'm I'm, if it is then then how does that even work? Well, I, yeah, I just don't know that much about it. But yeah, I, no big thoughts on it, I'm afraid, just because I've not had much to do with it. Malfestio. I'm not a fan at all. Um, where to put it, though? Is it bad enough to be scum class? Scum class does look like it could do with a bit of bulking out. Um, yeah, actually. I'm just not that much of a fan of him at all. The confusion thing is much more annoying than it is interesting as a gimmick. The fight is not hugely different. Um, He just feels like he has a lot of recycled flying wyvern moves. And I think he really squanders being an owl. And I don't like the design either. The weird sort of clown jester thing he's got going on. I just don't really like. Um, he He really does just rub me the wrong way. I don't know he has his fans out there, but oh well. In your tier list, he can be much higher. But this one's mine. What is an animal or plant that you'd like to see Monster Hunter fight in the franchise? So I've spoken about a few of them already, but I'm glad they sort of came up twice because it lets me uh, get ones that I've missed in the past. But I think more bugs would be nice. Um, a scorpion who's actually good. I think that'd be quite cool. Uh, yeah, and just, yeah, bugs like mantises as well that aren't uh, at all Carl. Um, centipedes could potentially be quite cool, like a whip scorpion or something like that, or a solifuge would be really quite nice because they're they're uh, they're quite creepy looking animals. That I know quite a few um, arachnophobes who have who have been rehabilitated and then they throw a solifuge, and the way it moves as well, um, and that really sort of relapsed them again. Um, so yeah, bugs are definitely quite a big one. Uh, uh, like I've said, hyenas are my favourite, so I would love a hyena monster. I think there's a few mammals you could still do interesting things with, like foxes, potentially. There's quite a lot of herbivores um, sort of mentioned, so yeah, I think you could translate, in a way, into a monster. A sauropod monster would be quite interesting. It might suffer from the same problems with Gamma, that Gamoth has. Whether they could be alleviated in a big open map, quite possibly. Um, but yeah, there's yeah, there's the world is your oyster, really. There's tons. Those are just sort of a few that I think would naturally lend themselves to Monster Hunter as a game. 
Right, Mizutsune, yeah, I've sort of spoken about him relatively recently, and in indeed in this tier list, so let's put him in decent, where he belongs. How are you? I'm relatively good. I think my throat is giving out, not just because of this tier list, but because I've, I've got something right now. Um, yeah, I'm just getting a bit croaky. Uh, I think that's Nakarkos, isn't it? Where to put Nakarkos? That's a good one, actually. I've not really thought that much about Nakarkos, really. It's not a bad fight. And the fact it's a self full pod is nice. Um, and the the way you can sort of tell it does have some brains upstairs um, is also quite nice. So let's put it in decent, actually. I'm not a big, a, a, a big enough fan of it to put it any higher, although I know, I know a lot of people really love it. But yeah, that's, yeah, I'll put Nakakas there for now. Uh, grippy socks, yes. If there's one thing we could all do with more, it is some grip. Ooh, Valstrax. Where am I going to put him? I think I can't salt the community any further, because my thoughts on him are pretty well known already. But will it will it be reopening the wound to put him in Get Out? I mean, he's not going to get a positive review here from me, is he? Um, where, where does my heart tell me to put him? Because on one hand, he is... He does do a few things right, so maybe let's put him in Scum Class. Like, I think the idea... Of a jet dragon is a bit... Is, yeah, it's just not great. But then Valstrax does have... One or two interesting things about him. Interesting things about him. And not all of his design is completely scuppered like... um Actually, no, it sort of is. Oh, well. um But yeah, scum class, yeah. I mean, what were you expecting, really? Um, would you ever like to be a guest on the Third Fleet podcast? Yeah, if they ask me, I will. I'll show up. I'll be on there. But they have not yet. I'm not sure if either of them are aware of my videos. Um, yeah, so if they ask, I'll appear on it, but no one has. Like, I'm generally down for, like, for guest roles, but then who exactly wants to associate with me is another question. Uh, Shen Ren is... Let's put him in decent. Um, no huge thoughts on Shen Ren, but just sort of as, like, the apex of the crabs. It is quite nice, and, of course, the Leoshan skull... That's just, you know, uh, that's just sort of a nice logical conclusion um, to, to having the biggest skull for the biggest crab. And as a fight, though, it's a bit boring. But the I think oh, I never actually made Shenge Ren gear, so I'm not sure if it was nice or not. But uh, most of the crab gear is pretty nice. But yeah, decent is, decent is fine for it. A Cantor. So I think... Where am I going to put a Cantor? Because Cantor is probably my favourite. Oh, actually, no, there's a question first. The Monster Hunter design team tells you to come up with a design outline for a dragon slash flying wyvern that switches between fire and ice elements. Watch your five minute elevator pitch. Oh, dear. Um. Um. Uh, well, one, I would make it an Elder Dragon. It pretty much has to be, you know, just for the sort of utterly broken attributes of that. Um, uh, I think, yeah, so it'd be an elf dragon. Um, I think I would have it be, in a weird way, a refrigerator dragon. In the, in a very, very sort of loose, loose way of putting it, the way I understand fridges work, I've never looked too much into it, but, um, the effect, like, it's the compression of a refrigerant or something, and then the evaporation of it, and that, that sort of cyclical process is what creates the cold. So I think I would have it have like this big sort of reservoir of fluid, and it uses that for its fire attack by evaporating it into a into a flammable sort of mist, and then it fires that to you. And the volume and process of doing that in a pressurized chamber cause such a reduction um, in, in heat that the rest, like, the sort of outside of its body freezes. So it's effectively, yeah, like a, a fridge-freezer Elder Dragon, as it were. But then I think if I were to do that, I would actually have there be sort of um, a, a, a payoff for that in that it, it can then embellish its physical attacks with ice, but there is a consequence to it. Like, the part breaks are much easier, but that's not something it really wants to do. That's sort of its Hail Mary attack in its third stage or whatever. Um, 
and you can see it has like visible frostbite as a result of doing that so there's a big consequence um yeah and like, yeah easier part breaks and parts are literally sloughing off it because it's effectively frozen its body so that 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 would be as as far as i can get as for what it would look like i don't even know sort of sort of thinking about the the design of it um but yeah that's how i would do what i could do with my rudimentary knowledge of physics and cold and hot uh to make the best thing i could for a, for an elder dragon um but yeah that that's all i have right now or it could just be a, like a tool using ape that has like a burning brand and throws snowballs but that i feel that would be that wouldn't be in the spirit of answering the question um all right azuros i'm not a fan um so let's put him in mid I'm, I just don't think the bears in general are that good. I think bears could potentially lend themselves well to Monster Hunter, but Azuros doesn't do it very well. Um, I think if he was just like a sloth or a sun bear, that would be a lot better. But yeah, he's just a sort of a generic bear. And there's not that much interesting about him. But as a fight, he's not awful. As a design, he's not awful. I think his main sin is just being not hugely creative. Um... So that's why he's in mid. He's not bad enough to be lower, but he's not good enough to be higher. Um, I'm just not a fan of the bears in general. What could be done to make your least favourite monsters become your most favourite? Uh, their permanent extinction within the canon. <laughs> in the To answer in the spirit of the question, so I've sort of already touched on Magna Malo. Um, for ugh, Gaia Drome. Jesus, I'm not sure what you could really do with Gaia Drome. Oof. Maybe if you made it really, really agile and made it sort of a snow leopard bird wyvern in a way, um, without being a pseudo wyvern, maybe that could be interesting. But I think, yeah, to make them my most favourite, that's asking for a lot. Bulldrome, I don't think, has much hope of getting there. Valstrax, I think. So I think if you made Valstrax almost a swift wyvern, um, not as in Naga Cougar, as in a literal swift, and that's something that is almost like Nawa and Ibushi, so adapted for the for the skies that it's almost useless on land, but being much less sort of adapted to float and hover and much more adapted for very fast movements. So you could keep a lot of what makes Valstrax Valstrax, but just sort of make the design less sort of omnipowerful um, and, yeah, much more specialised in that regard and get rid of the jet engines as well. And I think then Valstrax would be something that would appeal to me much more. Yorgan, just make him like his concept art. Malfestio, I think, would be pretty simple and just take more from actual owls. Like, you can see what screech owls do, where they sort of, they change the shape of their feathers and stuff like that. Um, I think doing something like that to then indicate what attack it was going to do, its health, its mood, would be a really interesting thing to do with it visually. And making it, I think, more like a barn owl and giving it that very ghostly appearance um, would give it a sort of, yeah, nice spectral spin to it. Um, and make it silent as well and have it sort of utilise ambush attacks much more. So yeah, just make it much more of an owl wyvern than the weird sort of court jester wyvern. Durambaros, spoken about relatively recently, but I do like him a lot. He's going to go in decent. Um... I think he could be greatly improved, and I hope he will be in 6, and made into something a bit more interesting with a lot of nice uh, environmental behaviours. But as he is right now, he's still good enough to be decent, but not good enough to be higher. But big herbivores are always uh, a pro with me. But yeah, and I think his moveset just isn't that varied right now. And I think for the, the, part, the place where you fight him at, I would want him to sort of have a few more tricks up his sleeve. And just um, just a few more things to do as well. But yeah, it's not bad. What's the next question? What do you think of Velcana as well as its Tower Fours? In fact, well, let's just cover Velcana right now. Um, Velcana I quite like. She's not a favourite, but she's good enough to be decent. The fight is, is quite nice. Uh, her in Sunbreak was, was quite nice. Like her... Beating up Magna Malo. I mean, that's obviously... She's obviously going to make decent at least for that. Um, although a lot of people said, oh, like, wow, her versus Malzeno is the best thing I've ever seen. And really, I didn't think it was that good. They just sort of fly at each other and then have a beam war. And that was pretty much it. Um, 
I didn't really get what the hype was about. But yeah, as an Elder Dragon, she's quite nice. It's nice to have a proper ice one. The the bird-like facial features in her face are quite nice. Um, yeah, overall, overall a, a solid Elder Dragon and a welcome addition to the cast. What do you think to the Rise Turf Wars overhaul? I'm not sure if they were overhauled, um, but I think in Sunbreak... In Sunbreak... Like, I did like that there was more um, original ones. One thing I didn't like is that it felt like they were being done as sort of a reference to the generations the monsters came in. But you had Gore versus Seregios, and then Astalos versus Mizutsune. And they were all very nice animations, but at the same time, I think uh, Seregios versus Rathalos and Astalos versus someone else probably would have made a lot more sense. Um... Yeah, it didn't. It didn't feel like they were thinking about who would realistically be fighting who, and more just sort of a nod to to the flagship generate of uh, the flagships of those generations. And yeah, thank you again for the comment. Um, I want to know more. How about you actually play Monster Hunter? Play style. Uh, hit the monster till it dies. Uh, yeah, I've, weapons I've already spoken about. I'm I'm a hammer main, so that probably tells you. Probably about how I how I how I my, what my playstyle is. Effectively, go in, hit it on the head a lot, keep hitting it on the head, kill it. Um, there's not huge amounts of strategy when I play. When you play hammer, you play unga bunga, and that that suits me just fine. It's the way I've done it. It's the way I'll always do it. Favorite, yeah, my favorite weapon, hammer. How skilled are you at Monster Hunter in general? Because it's sort of related. So I've complete. I've soloed Freedom Unite, which is the most generally agreed on as the most difficult one. So I'm not terrible, um, but at the same time, I'm definitely not a speed runner. So I'd say I'm good enough to get by. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not not going to be entering any big competitions anytime soon, if they even exist in the Monster Hunter fandom. Um, but yeah. Good enough, I would say. Uh, right. Great Roggy. I think Great Roggy is probably my favourite of the greats. But is he good enough for decent? Let's say yes for now. Is he that good? Yeah, I mean, why not? I think his design is really quite nice. The way he incorporates a lot of um, different aspects from various animals that just really lended to him being a swamp raptor. And, yeah, I think his fight is well, it's about as good as the other two, isn't it? So maybe that's just why he's up here. The design, purely, is what's enough to lift him. Because the fight isn't hugely different. I quite like his call, though. Actually, yeah, it does have to be said, Great Jaggy's call is great. The the, the Siaman Gibbon, just pitched down, is a really nice one. Uh, so next question about a family of dinosaurs that have the horn arrangements of rhinoceros beetles. Um... So yeah, with this question, I would say uh, yeah, I would say put all the horns on the head, uh, just because you could have you could potentially have them extending over the back um, for protection, but then obviously they won't be able to really use the horns um, practically, sort of as tools or weapons. They'll just sort of be static protection. Um, would they be built like Feroxus? Quite possibly. Um, so if you're if they were using horns in the same way as stag and rhinoceros beetles you may want to have a sort of like a muscular hump over the shoulders um ceratopsians didn't have it quite as pronounced as bovids um but then i'm not sure if they use their horns sort of for upward thrusts quite as much as bovids do either um but yeah i think i also think from a visual standpoint just a big muscular hump would sell the point very well about where the power power lies and what they use their horns for Lagombi, get out. I hate Lagombi. I think so. There's just not that much fight variation between the bears and the new things that Lagombi does. I don't really like. I also think it just looks a bit like a bit of a goofy idiot and not in a good way. And I've never liked Lagombi, so he's just in get out. He can stay if he wants to be like a small monster slash endemic life and just get eaten by everyone. But otherwise, I'm a, I'm a devout Lagombi hater. What are the arthropodal monsters? Yeah, so I've sort of 
uh, answered that a bit already, and I think most of them could well come in. Um, and yeah, I think there's definitely potential for a giant centipede. I mean, if they can do Najrala, then they can do a giant centipede. Favourite type of sandwich? Uh, na- yeah, yeah, now we're getting into the real questions. Um, I would say a Philly cheesesteak. Um, and some places they do it like a French dip where you get the meat juices alongside it. And that, that's only like, that only improves the situation. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, a Philly cheesesteak is my, is my firm answer. Has everything I like of meat, fat, and onions. Um, so yeah, can't go wrong with one of those. Unless, of course, you're vegan. Uh, Nibel Snarf. Where am I going to put him? I'd say he's definitely a better fight than Cephadrome. And he's got the gimmick of the barrel bombs, which is quite nice, but at the same time, better than Cephadrome isn't... That's a tarnished crown to wear. Yeah. Mixed and mid? Could he be better than that? I'm not sure if he is. As, uh, he may be more on the mixed side than the mid side. But I do... Like, there are aspects of his design I quite like. He's just very weird overall. And the fact he's got the sand boa eyes... Is also quite a, an amusing touch, um, but at the same time, he's still got a bit of the cephadrome jank to him. So let's keep him in in mixed for now. Uh, what's next? Which of these monster groups would you like to see get flagship representation? Uh, with time, all of them. I think maybe not so much snake wyverns. Was I think snake wyverns are definitely the most limited. Um, there's there's only so many snakes you can make that will remain to be interesting. Um, and Najrala, the fact it burrows as well, has effectively struck another future snake out by stealing what could have been a more unique gimmick for a, for a different snake monster. But otherwise, I think all of them could well be um, flagship material. And yeah, I'd be pretty like pr- I'd, I'd definitely like to see that in future. Um, you can loss. So I think. Decent is going to get flooded with endgame monsters that I actually like. But Akantor is probably my favourite, but there's not much in it between him and the other endgame monsters that I also like. There's probably only like a 2% difference between each one. Um, and so I also quite like Yukonloss. I think I prefer Akantor's design, but I prefer Yukonloss's fight. Um... But yeah, it's also... One thing I liked when you get the tail cut, you can see that insanely thick layer of blubber, which is just very nice. And I always took him to be sort of a weird sort of hippo, like ice crocodile in a way, in that he's mainly an aquatic monster. And it's how he he sort of handles his giant body size. So he actually needs the insulation. And yeah, I might do a video at some point on the black and white gods. Um, But yeah... We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, there's it's, they would be quite hard. Um, just because there's just not that much on them ecologically. It's more sort of crying about how powerful they are in 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 game information. Right. If you're familiar with the speculative zoology and bio- biology genre community, what project is your favourite? So I'm not aware of that many projects, like I'm not too involved with that community. Um, one I have seen quite a bit that I really enjoy is uh, Soily's Dragon Slayer Codex, is that what it's called? I think that is. Um, yeah, I think I think just having good artwork really helps sell something like that. Because it's a bit like Jacob said in his, um, in his video on fan projects, that so much of it is description, and it is just the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. And he often has diagrams and other stuff like that. So, yeah, I think being an artist and also um, a Specivo creator as well just really helps uplift a project. Um, and I just don't know that many of them. So he sort of he sort of wins in that regard. If that if it counts as if it still counts as Specivo though, if it just counts as fantasy, then then another option. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, just because, yeah, I don't actually know that much about what other people are doing, really. Um, yeah. Uh, Volvidon. Let's put him in the scum class. Just bulk that out a bit. So, yeah, I, I've already said I'm not a big fan of the bears, and Volvidon is not as bad as Logombi, but, yeah, he doesn't have a place in my heart. Um, favorite story involving both creatures and the idea of keep moving forward and hope? Uh, I'm not sure 
how many instances of media really have that? Except, I don't know, Finding Nemo? Does that count? Or Dinosaur when they're stuck in the cave? Um, yeah, outside of that, not sure what an, what answer I could possibly give. Someone was also asked why. Uh, why not? Zenoga, oof. Where am I going to put him? The one thing that was interesting, I remember when I made the design video, there's a lot of comments sticking up for Valstrax and Brachilios, and none of them for Zenoga. Um, so yeah, it shows, yeah, shows what people think of him. Maybe not everyone, but yeah, there was a pretty clear, pretty clear dislike for him um, compared to the other two. Because I think quite a few people are a bit tired of Zenoga being in everything hipset base world now. Uh, let's put him in scum class. He's not quite awful enough to be in Get Out, maybe. There are some interesting aspects to him. But, uh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, I've, I've made my thoughts on him pretty clear. I'm not a fan of his. Um, to sort of answer the question, what would you do to make him better as well? Um, I don't think... Like with something like Magna Marlo, making him an actual wolf would help. Because I think that would help Magna Marlo making him a, much more of a tiger. Just because I think Zinn is just so far removed from that physically. Like, you just tear it down and make a new monster if you're going to make an actual wolf monster. Um, but I think just changing his proportions a bit, making him less glowy. Yeah, making him... Just streamline him a lot as a design. And yeah, make it, yeah just have him... Just reduce the glowing aspect of him as well. Yeah, so I think with with design changes, I feel he could he could become a lot better. But yeah, I don't think he's ever really going to be a proper wolf monster. Do you have favourite extinct or extant animals? Are there certain animals that interest you the most? So, carnivorans in general are just very interesting. They get a lot of attention, just you know, big and epic and. Yeah, just they're, they're, they're often just very popular animals in general. But I think anything that has to hunt and kill other animals to survive is just naturally very interesting. Um, like, the way it does that. And, you know, does it do it socially? Does it do it solitary? And then... Uh, the res and the way that sort of bleeds into the other aspects of its life, like how that then affects its territory, where it lives, and things like that. They're just the ripple effects through the rest of its ecology and behaviour and physiology. And the different ways um, different families of animals answer that problem um, is just makes any carnivore or predator a very interesting animal, I think. Um, brood parasite birds as well. Brood parasitism in general, I think, is a really interesting phenomenon. And so I love uh, cuckoos and uh, widers and widow birds and other ones that do that. I think that's just really interesting. Wild cattle as well, I actually find quite an interesting group. I think, I think African buffalo are actually really interesting animals with a lot of their social behaviour and such. And weird mammals as well, like anteaters and pangolins and stuff like that. They're also just really quite interesting. And a lot of non-passerine birds as well, I think, are all quite interesting. Like, th there's just a lot to pick from. But birds in general are just really cool. Which ecosystem, either ancient or modern, would you want to study if given the opportunity? Good question. That's, that's quite hard to answer. And... Yeah, I think it would have to be ancient, wouldn't it? Just because even, you know, even if I may never get the chance to, to study something in its natural environment in our in our present day world, there will still be information available on it. Um, but to go back and sort of and study, you know, Hell Creek or the Morrison or somewhere like that, that's just too tempting. Um, but then to narrow it down to which one I would actually pick... It's very hard indeed. Maybe oh, maybe the Morrison, just because it has a lot of sauropods, and I think to see sort of... Just to see what the ecology of, an of animals that were just that giant, like what their demographics and behaviour and their impact on the environment, what that was like, I think would be incredibly interesting. Just because they're... Like, you can't even really compare them to elephants or giraffes. They're just so far removed from other things on the Earth today. And of course, Allosaurus as well, because I think even just getting a baseline study of a giant theropod and how they lived as well would be really interesting. So I'd probably go with the Morrison. Uh, and yeah, no, thank you for saying as well. Um, 
Who is next? Agnesom. Oof, this is going to be another get out. So I'm not a fan of Agnesom at all. I think it's just... Well, I think the fight is really quite crap as well. It's like they took Cuckoo and said, let's see what it would be like to fight him in a vat full of treacle. So they made the fight incredibly slow. I'm not even sure I've actually seen all of his attacks yet, because he just dies so quickly. I think the sort of whatever Yukai is meant to be based on, he doesn't do that very well. I don't think he does being a heron very well either. Well, a crane, I should say. Um, yeah, he just... He's not very well executed, I should say. Um, yeah, just... All... all he just... just every, everything is meant to hit, he doesn't. And so, yeah, he's... I just think he's rubbish. I think he's just a waste of a slot. And again, all I can say is sorry to all of Agnesum's fans. But yeah, I think he's just a complete flop of a bird wyvern. My apologies to the Agnesum fan base. Do you think tamed monsters could ever come to mainline Monster Hunter games? Um, so, with the examples given, like Yankuk or Kuliyaku, I definitely think potentially, like... I'm not sure they could really join in a hunt, but as like a feature in the village, a bit like um, Tetsi in, in Kimura, you could have potentially have something like that. Although whether it would be very good for the wife, and I'm not sure, because I almost envision it now I'm thinking about it, a bit like a dancing bear, where it's something that's been habituated to people, but it's it's pretty cruel to keep it there, and it's made into something of an entertainment commodity. And of course, people do have menageries, so we know it's something that does happen in Monster Hunter. Whether we'll ever actually see one is is another topic altogether, but we know it does happen. But I think some monsters could potentially um, have a rider. Like, I think, in theory, you could potentially tame a Gamoth. Um, but I wouldn't want that to be, like, a community or anything. I would much rather like it to be one sort of exceptional person who managed to tame it, and this became effectively a living legend. I think could be an interesting direction to take that in. Um, so I think it's possible. Maybe not monster riders, but... Um, and actually Espinas as well, I think you could do something like that. Like where a village worships it, and as long as they keep it well fed and everything... It associates them sort of with something it doesn't have to be hostile to, and potentially food. And yeah, I think... So I think it's sort of a case-by-case -case thing with the monster you'd pick, but definitely that could be something, um, yeah, like an interesting story beat for a certain village or something. Right, Almadron. Um, where am I going to put Almadron? Is he excellent? He's definitely decent, but is he excellent? Uh, where do I put him? Let's pad out excellent a bit more. Is it excellent? Is pretty thin, isn't it? And he's still like I still do like Almadron quite a bit. Um, yeah, like a lot of people say that you know, oh, his fight is so hard, like it's so obnoxious. Like if you're trying to use the wire bug, he just annihilates you. And I've never found that. I found that in Rise, he just sort of dies like anything else. I didn't find him hugely difficult. Um, but I, didn't think he was, I did think he was still quite a good fight. And I think the way he uses mud, like he makes the ball or he'll smack you with his tail, I think that was really quite nice. And I think the design very much sells the idea of age um, and sort of the, the, the yokai is based on, but without leaning into it too hard, because that was a mud man, so that would have been quite hard to implement. And the otter aspect is nice as well. So yeah, I think, yeah, he's, he's quite a good monster. Um, and one of my favourites from Rise, probably only after Ragnar Kadaki, who will definitely be excellent. Overall, how do you feel about the Palamutes as mounts, hunting partners, ETC? So... Uh, one thing I do sort of feel about them, I feel they've come into the franchise too early. I think Rise's maps are not really big enough or interesting enough to warrant them. But it's just really one extra thing that just shortens the gameplay of Rise, I think, and makes things go even faster. And yeah, I think so they were put in almost too early. Like, I think when we have bigger maps or it goes open world, then you can start having sort of mounts and things that really speed up traversal. But as of right now, and with the wire bug as well, I just didn't feel they were needed. 
and it often felt like a bit much when you were hunting as a group and you just set out with this militia of animals. Um, so yeah, I think a good idea, but yeah, I'm not sure if they were really needed this this early in the game, or, or rather the series. Favourite, least favourite small monster, if you have any. Um, favourite, let's say Mosswine. But I think he's quite funny. He's just sort of a fat little pig, but um, the the moss on his back, like I just remember seeing that for the first time in the forest and hills and thinking how creative that was and what a nice idea it was. And so, yeah, uh, they're just quite funny. And yeah, I quite like them. Um, and they, they help a lot in the earlier games as well. They help, you, they help you find your special mushrooms. So they're a practical small monster as well. And then least favourite... Um, Bullfango. The, the 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 wound from the doing the powder stone carrying quest will never truly heal. How do you feel about the idea of it having a tamed Aptonoth or Popo acting as a mount or beast of burden? Yeah, I think that would be um I think that'd be quite cool. Again, um when the when slash if Monster Hunter goes open world, I think that would be a really good idea. Um and something that you can sort of use as a mobile um, uh, inventory box as well, I think would be quite cool. And I almost think you could sort of, you could have the Wing Drake, the Palamute, and then the Herbivore, and then sort of have each of them be a different level of um, of transportation in terms of their, their size and how much they can carry, um, but also their speed, their accessibility, and how they behave around other monsters. Like I imagine... You could have a, a, a mount like that, but if you ride it too close to a large carnivore, it'll throw you off and run. And if you use it as like your, your carrying box and it gets killed, then you lose everything you had in the boxes. Um, so yeah, I think it would be an interesting mechanic. I don't think it's one we need to ro right now, just because the maps aren't big enough and they're often quite vertical. So it might struggle to, to climb in some of the some of the areas in the maps. But yeah, as the franchise goes forward, I think it could well be something to look into as the sort of maps and everything grows. And yeah, thank you for saying as well. Bishoten. Um, yeah, mid. No, no real strong feelings on Bishoten. Um, he's there. It's a bit like Catcher Watcher again, really. He's just another primate that I feel just isn't as interesting as the earlier ones. And it's not just that he's solitary either. Um, like, I think you could really do a solitary primate quite well. But just him and Ketcha Watcher, they just... They don't do anything for me. And I think Blood Orange Bishoten is also not great either. So that's that wasn't going to improve things for him as well. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> he's just one of those monsters I don't really have much to say on. Do you think the next Monster Hunter game will expand on the ecology aspect that's currently present in World? Absolutely. If it's yeah, if it's, if it's the main se main series slash A team game, then yeah, I I think it will. Um, uh, Gossarag, Goss is fine. Um, is Goss decent or is he mixed or mid? Like, uh, Goss is definitely... Like, when I first saw him, I thought, Jesus Christ, they've actually just... They've actually just made a humanoid now. Um, and then when he was much more of a bear, I, I, I preferred that much more. And like, yeah, I'll, I put him in decent. Um, yeah, he's not a bad monster by any by any stretch. Um, yeah, no, he's, 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 he's definitely, definitely home in the decent. Um, yeah, he's not bad enough to be mixed or mid. I would like him to be a bit more sped up, though. And just, uh, just a bit faster and a bit more aggressive in the earlier stages. Um, because it feels like you can just accumulate too much damage on him in that point. And then when he when he actually sort of properly perks up, it, it feels like um, he's already half dead already. What do you think about the Clutch Claw and how it completely ruined a perfectly fine game? I would not go that far. Um, I do agree that, yeah, it, was, it definitely didn't improve Iceborne. And... It like it made fights drag on quite a bit because they really wanted you to tenderize everything, and yeah, that was uh, that was not the best mechanic they've ever done. It was just another gimmick that I'm glad hasn't come back, and I hope never will. But to say it ruined the game is definitely a bit much. Um, but yeah, it 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 definitely did improve combat. It was a bit annoying, 
But yeah, I wouldn't go as far to say it ruined things. But yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, great Zuchi. Yeah, get out again, just because... So unlike Macau, whom I thought was quite good, um, even if I was all raptured out, I'm still raptured out when I get to Izuchi, and I don't think he's quite good. So yeah, we just don't need more raptors. And I think if they just keep putting more in, they will just wind up in the get-out tier, unless they have something really exceptional about them. What kind of new monster do you think should be added to the game? So a lot of people often talk and say that um, they think Six will have a new monster class. I think it will as well, but I don't know what it would be. It's, it, I think it's just too hard to say. In terms of what new monster class should be added, maybe if they make herbivore its own one, and then just sort of use that for various, you know, the four-legged herbivores, maybe. Um, that could be... That could be uh that could be a pretty decent class. That's all I can think of right now, because I think I think a great many monsters that you could try and think up on the spot would probably just fit into an already existing category. Especially with how broad some of them are. Um Right. And that I think is All Mother, isn't it? I didn't why does All Mother get her own category, but White Fatalist doesn't? Um Let's Go, I think that's just all of them indecent, like I said. But yeah, I think... Oof, actually, no, mixed mixed and mid. Cannot... Even if I hate it, I also just have to admit that the story behind the resonance is horrible. And they will never get out of mixed and mid because of that. Because it, it hangs over them like a bad smell. But otherwise, again, I sort of spoke on them in the design video. I actually really like a lot of aspects of their design. Just how you can tell how incredibly derived they are i think is a huge point in their favor um yeah i think the design wise and fight wise i think the fight can get a bit much to be honest um definitely a bit too flashy at times and the whole yeah the whole floaty aspect of all the dragonator and glowing beams and things could definitely get a bit much but overall um yeah i think they're quite good boss monsters but yeah the resident the resonance will forever forever tar them um what's your favorite monster hunter game specific mechanic none of those um so if water combat counts as one i would say water combat um yeah but none of those I'm not a fan of any of those um who's your favorite monster out of the more outlandish designs uh, so, of the sort of, yeah, outlandish endgame boys, um, well, I've said a Cantor's my favourite of the endgame ones, but of the more, of the more zany ones, I might say Guy's Magorm, which, yeah, I'll, I'll sort of speak to him when we get to him, or someone asks something more specific about him, but, yeah, I do, I really quite like him. In fact, I think someone has, and he's coming up anyway, uh, but, yeah. Which monster do you find the cutest? Mosswine are actually quite cute. I think uh, pigs in general are just quite cute. Unless, of course, they're Bullfango. Um, and Kuliyaku is quite cute as well. Uh, who else? Who else is cute? Now everyone else is a bit ugly. Or, 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 or an animal I would not want to meet. I think they're my top contenders for cutest. Rachna is excellent. Uh yeah, she just she just does everything right. Um great monster, nice nice way of implementing the yokai, good fight, good use of small monsters, and quite original in that respect as well. Um yeah, just very, very solid. Yeah, just does everything right. Everything right. Why she's not in top faves? I think so maybe it's the fact she just looks a bit too much like Nursilla, maybe. Like, I remember when they first showed... Like, I think she was in the first, like, proper Rise trailer. But they never really had a proper thing introducing her. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, good, Nursilla's coming back. And then it turned out she wasn't. But I think, yeah. Um, if Nursilla wasn't a thing, Rachna would probably be a top fave. But Nursilla sort of fills the spider top spot for me. But Rachna is still excellent. What got you into ecology and biology? So, yeah, a bit like I said earlier... Um, there was, there was never a, a switch being flipped. It was always there, um, as long as I can remember. As long as I've had memory, the interest has been there. Um, 
obviously back then it was more more animals but then i just loved learning everything about animals i liked so that even if i wouldn't call it ecology and biology when i was five i still loved learning that about them uh do you know draconology by vikas rao um so i just looked it up in the sort of the intermission between the recording points and yeah that looks really cool it is um it's yeah no absolutely fantastic and again a bit like i said earlier with soil e um being able to create those those visuals for your project just really lifts it and yeah the digital art is also fantastic it's it's really good looking and yeah everything yeah all, all the monster well not monsters but all the sort of spec creature ideas and it looked really quite nice and yeah i'm very impressed by it i've just sort of had a quick flip through but i did really quite like it what do I think of Casual Geographic? I think he's got quite... Uh, uh, he's got a lot better recently. Um, yeah, the videos... Um, like, I don't really watch him that much. Um, but the ones that I have seen from the past year or so... They're, yeah, they're a, lot, they're a lot less inaccurate. And he's become much less of a sort of misinformation pump like he used to be. Like a few others. And yeah, the videos are just generally a lot better now. Um... I wouldn't mind it if he made a video saying, like, here are the list of things I was wrong about. Um, because I think that's something you should do uh, when you make content like that. But yeah, like, um, yeah, I think he's he, he is also quite funny. Um, but I, yeah, I just don't watch him that much. Just because I don't watch that much sort of um, animal-based content. No, he's, he's gone a lot better and his new videos in general are quite, um, quite informative. Um... I, it just because it's me, I would, want to, I would want to see more primary sources. But he does a relatively good job of steering away from things that are just obviously wrong. He still make, he still sort of reinforces a few misconceptions, but it's not the end of the world, I suppose. Um, do you know The Last Guardian? Um, so I've seen images of that game, and Griffin come dog come cat thing. I always thought it was like a baby reindeer. That's what it looked like to me. If it was a real animal, real animal, what would it be like? It would not be so dainty. It would probably have columnar limbs, and yeah, it would be a lot, a lot more heavy set and a lot less mobile. Um, but yeah, and again, once again, thank you for your comments. Um, let's see what's next. Ugh, Somnicanth. Well, I'm gonna put Somnicanth. Is she? Yeah, she's that bad. Not a fan at all ugly not that interesting a fight actually the ecology i do like the the Seotta rock bashing i do wonder if almadron and somnicanth used to be one monster it was like Le legiana and basil juice used to be and then they sort of got split into two um or at least that seems to be the case from the concept art um and I do wonder if that was originally going to be an Almadron thing, and then he kept the otter sort of face design, and she got the otter um, feeding behaviour. So yeah, that that saves her from being get out, but I'm still no fan of her. Yeah, she just she just doesn't do a lot outside of that to ingratiate herself to me. Yeah, and just she's just like I think a lot of the early game rice monsters are all just quite forgettable. Um, but yeah. Alrighty. What monster do you not want to do? Yeah, well, probably most of the Get Out ones. Um, and will you ever look at how to train your dragon? Um, I don't have any plans to, because that's sort of, one, it's much more sort of direct fantasy, and two, um, it's obviously a children's franchise, so there's probably not quite as much rigour put into it as with some, as, as something made for more a more mature audience um uh, so yeah i don't have any don't have any big thoughts on it right now tetranodon um yeah whatever um like i said i think a lot of rise's early game is just sort of there i don't think it's hugely interesting tetranodon isn't bad but he's not amazing either um yeah it's just yeah mid is what i would call him would you consider checking out any spec evo on alien organisms? Uh, yeah, potentially. Um, I don't think I have any in mind right now. I have not seen hoxes uh, from Deep Rock Gal 
galactic. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at him now. Oh, that's the planet more than the uh, more than the things that live there. So uh, yeah, uh, looking at it right now, I no, that's the planet, not the actual thing. Um, so I'm not one hundred percent sure what lives there, but as with most things, I can take a look and see if a video can be made on it. Um, but yeah, as of right now, this is definitely the first time hearing of it. Uh, Espinas, I like Espinas. Um. I'm going to put him in decent, just because, a bit like I said, like I've talked about him recently, but his fight just isn't interesting enough for him to be excellent. Everything else is pretty good, but I don't think the fight just really holds him back. But yeah, otherwise he's still pretty good. But it's just, he's just a bit dull. What is the best fantasy setting in your opinion and why? I'm not sure I've had that much to do with fantasy, outside of... Maybe Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, which I both quite like. Well, I like the books of Game of Thrones. Um, and I like House of the Dragon, which is the same universe. But, yeah, fantasy um, uh, settings. Well, I quite like both of those. And one thing I think that a lot of people may sort of enjoy on a subconscious level is that they both have a thing in common that the... Uh, the age of fantasy in them has pretty much ended. Um, like in Game of Thrones, Daenerys' dragons are the last ones, and they will probably be, once they're gone, that's probably the last last done for. Like most of the magic is sort of focused north of the wall or in the east, and it's very, very limited and it's hard to control. And same in Lord of the Rings, like the whole thing of Lord of the Rings is the, the sort of age of magic is ending, pretty much. And it does strike me that effectively the two biggest sort of most prevalent fantasy genres have that in common um and i do wonder if there's like some some proper cultural or societal reason behind why we see why that seems to appeal to us but i know it definitely appeals to me as i think it makes the magic much more interesting when it's used sparingly and it's not just sort of a, a you know a, a, a get out of jail free card or anything like that where it actually has sort of weight and consequence and it's rare within the actual within its actual setting and now we're at guys McGorm. um so yeah I've, again i like guys McGorm a lot um yeah definitely decent again very well adapted to burrowing the fight's quite good um i mean that's that's clear in his design the burrowing aspect the the whole thing with the curio is quite nice. I think the whole sort of flaming fire spouting aspect it never really felt that necessary to me, and it was like the area of effect spamming was a bit much. But um, and that probably holds him back a little bit compared to something like a Cantor, who's just much more restrained in that respect, and you can loss as well. Um, but still, I think he's a very solid monster. One thing I'd have really liked, and this is just a small petty thing, but Rather than the player killing him, I think you should have done sufficient damage to him. And then when all the Curio come back, I think it would have been much cooler if when the Curio sensed he was, like, crippled and weak and everything, if he got eaten by his own swarm, rather than him dying, and then all the Curio just sort of dying for some reason as well. I think it would have been much cooler if he just got eaten by his own, uh, his own little swarm of piranhas. Uh, do you have a doctorate? Can you use it to sign off on some prescriptions for me? No, I don't. Um, and as well, I think if I did have a doctorate, I'm not sure. Like, I think you you definitely have to be a medical doctorate for for that. I think if you strode in as doctor of philosophy, they would not be too impressed. Garangolm, I do not like. I don't know why I dislike him so much. Um, maybe I do just hate solitary primates. But the thing is, I don't think I do. Um, but but yeah, he just, for one reason or another, he just doesn't do it for me. It's not just the rocket and ice jumping, which I do think is really dumb and could have been done much better. But yeah, he just, I just think he's, I don't know. But like, and I like herbivores as well. So on paper, you'd think Gowan Gold would be, would be a monster that I like. But he's not. Um, no. I, don't, I can't really put my finger on why I don't like him. All I know is that I don't. So let's put him in scum class. As well, on, again, on the topic of what would you do to make him better, I think make him an actual orangutan and have sort of a bigger focus on shaggy fur than his armour. 
And I think I would have the, the sort of fire and water aspects to be tools that the animal uses. Because, like, orangutans are very intelligent, and there's there's a lot of, you know, viral videos of them using human tools. So I think that would have been the much more interesting thing to do with Garangol, rather than armouring him and giving him just sort of weird rocket jump powers. If you were to judge lava-dwelling monsters like Ignacta and Lavasioth against cold-producing monsters like Legiana and Lunagaran, which would you find to be more ecologically plausible? Uh, cold, I would say. Even if, like, even if the process of how you make cold is just, um... is yeah, is, is also impossible. Just... Lava is just so stupidly hot. And, like, I think just a lot of films and media have given a lot of people the impression that lava is just sort of, like, slightly hot, thick water and not something that will kill you without touching it. It is so hot. And, like, the way it sort of boils liquids inside you and would just, like, cause you to explode if you fell into it. And, yeah, it it just can't be stressed enough how impossible it is to survive in lava. Again, producing cold is also pretty impossible, but it feels to me like less of an uphill struggle than than with with withstanding lava. Lunagaran, uh, mixed and mid. So yeah, one thing I feel with a lot of, actually yes, yeah, so one thing I feel with the three lords is that they just don't do, is that they're just not very well representative of the movie monsters they're meant to be. Because like a werewolf is a man who becomes a wolf. He, he, he loses his humanity and becomes a bestial monster. And the threat and the, and the fear come from that. Lunagoran is a monster that becomes a slightly different monster. So the whole, the whole thing that makes a werewolf a werewolf and makes it scary is just completely not present in him. And as well, an ice wolf isn't hugely original. I mean, neither is a fire manticore or a fire dragon. But yeah, it's, it's also not a point in his favour. Um, and the the weird sort of fishtail aspects, I'm not sure if I like that. And I think his upright phase is also just a bit goofy and a bit weird. He doesn't look great. Um, but as a fight, he's not awful. As a wolf monster, he's better than Zanoga, but that's not really saying very much. In fact, let's put him in flawed. Again, sorry to all the Lunagaran fans, but I'm not the biggest fan of the Three Lords. Um, and yeah, Lunagaran is... So he's not that similar to Odogaron, but at the same time, as a fanged beast. Not as a fanged beast, as a fanged wyvern. Nothing about him made me think, I'm glad we have him and not Odogaron. Because if you're going to just take monsters out of the New World and put them in, in Sunrise, then I think, yeah, I would have rather had Odogaron, whom I love. Uh, but yeah. Do you still intend to cover monsters outside of the Monster Hunter franchise? Absolutely. Uh, right, Malzeno. Um, so Malzeno? Bloody hell, Decent's massive, isn't it? There's a lot of decent monsters in this franchise, that's all I can say. Um, so yeah, I think Malzeno is indecent. But yeah, like, I feel I shouldn't like him as much as I do, but I just, I think the sort of the vampire style to him, and the fact he's quite a good fight overpower the um the more the more over the top aspects of him for me. And yeah, I just think his style and everything is quite interesting. And I think there's a lot other people could say who more sort of directly talk about sort of cultural aspects of um, monsters in that so many vampires are often queer coded and uh, a lot of that the sort of the style of that is also put into Malzano. And a lot of the fan base do seem to have picked up on that. He also he's often sort of portrayed in that way as well. He's quite camp in a way, and that there they seem to have inadvertently made a queer code queer coded dragon. Oh, this has been going for two hours. Who would have thought that it would be so difficult to get me to shut up? Um, this is a relative swift one, Anjanath, who is a top fave at, at long last. Ooh. Let's put him where he belongs. Anjanath is a bit of a water shed monster. Anjanath is just sort of one of those monsters where he's a bit like the opposite of um He's a bit like the opposite of a mob. Garfield, I've forgotten his name. Uh Magnamalo. Um and that 
He's almost like the, the... I've seen him being used as the punching bag for people who like anime hype monsters. They just say, oh, he's so boring, he's just a T-Rex. And, you know, of course they're wrong. But it definitely seems like he's the opposite end of the spectrum in that, yeah, where what what Magnum Arlo is to anime hype, Anjanath is to grounded realism, and people who do and don't like that. But I do like that, and so I love Anjanath. And I love all his bells and whistles and how they are incorporated into sort of visual aspects of his fight and his ecology as well. I just think he's a wonderful monster. He wasn't that great in Rise. He was okay. But yeah, I think he's always going to suffer a little bit if he's not in the ancient forest and in the old world. I mean, the new world. Because yeah, he was... He was, in a way, some way, the sort of heart and soul of the early game of world. And yeah... Just a great monster. How would you write the Hunters and the Hunters Guild if you were in charge of the story? And what would your ideal endgame boss be in relation to this? And what would it take to seal a Cantor's crown? Um, so I would write the Hunters and the Hunters Guild to be failable and sort of the acknowledgement that they can be wrong and that the nobility that obviously funds a lot of what they do can well play into their decisions that they make. Um, so I think, would, like, you could have an incident where someone wounds a monster and then because um, was it's sort of difficult to get to or it runs off or something, they don't really bother to follow up on it because it would be dangerous and no one important was actually bothered by it. And they could make mistakes, like they could kill the wrong monster, they make something worse. But the fact they have such a trigger-happy attitude, I think, is not what you would want from an organisation like that. And again, like the the fact they cater the nobility to the nobility, I think you could also factor into the story. And yeah, just make them failable. Make them make them people who can do things wrong and have incorrect decisions made by a powerful organisation be a sort of a driving point for the story but i think a lot of people took away from my video um the hunting one that i'm trying to say that the guild are evil and i'm not you can be you can be wrong you can make bad decisions and it doesn't make you evil and i think the guild i think a lot of people who sign up for it are hoping that they do good but i think a lot of them are also like you look at that organization a lot of them are obviously chasing fame um, so yeah, I think just putting a more nuanced take on them would be good and making, yeah, just making them failable. Because as well, you see when you get sent off to fight Fatalist, you see the high-ranking officials, like, you look at what they're wearing, like, tell me that golden armour and such, and all those materials and all the fine threads and stuff, like, that is so obviously expensive, like, <laughs> some someone high up has paid for that, so, you know, they're they're clearly very well funded, and they are friends in high places, and there's no way that you can sort of you can have that sort of connection and not have that hugely influence an organization like that. Um, and yeah, I for ideal endgame bosses, I hopefully I like them quite weird and quite derived and fitted to the to whatever environment they're in. So yeah, what would it take to seal a Cantor's crown? I think yeah, just make a weird environment, then make a very weird, powerful monster that is very adapted to it, which is, again, quite why I quite like the idea of a cave map and then the absolute freaks you can make from that that would make for a very appealing endgame weird boss monster. And like I said earlier, um, so I think most of the endgame boss monsters that are behind a cantor that I like are within, like, 5% of each other. Um, so, so, yeah, it's it's... If a Cantor is wearing a crown, a ca Yukon Loss, and Guy's Magor, uh, are all wearing tiaras and Nakarkos, um, so they're not too too far behind him. Basil Juice, again, another top fave. Um, yeah, let's just put him where he belongs. In his rightful place in the top faves. Brilliant monster, great invader, very nice fight, good variant. Butchered in Rise, um, <laughs> yeah, he was just, oh, he was just so disrespected in Rise, um, but yeah, that doesn't change how good he was, and can still be, and how much I like him, so yeah, Basil Juice, again, I've already talked about him sort of at length, so keep this one relatively brief, brief, but this is gonna be a million hours at this rate, um, so yeah, let's, let's keep slogging on, there's still so many questions. 
Uh, what monster design do you prefer? Over the top monster on a stick or world type weapons? Monster on a stick every single time. Um, no question. That That is the core ethos of what monster hunter weapons should be. A chunk of a monster with a stick shoved in it and then tape just sort of badly wrapped around it and then you're ready to go to town. It should look sort of like imperfect and with little modification that you've just shoved it on there. Yeah, that's that's the absolute top weapon class and everything that the weapon should be. Uh, do you think any classes of monsters have evolved or are they supernatural and do you like them as a whole? So I like to think that nothing in Monster Hunter is truly supernatural, not even White Fatalis. Like, he may come through a portal, but that doesn't mean that he was the one to open it. Um... He could have well just been waiting on the other side. Yeah, I mean, we have black holes in our universe, so... Maybe there's something weird and similar. Like, it, is, it can have a sci-fi explanation over a fantasy one. So, third question, I, I feel I've sort of answered already. But, um, yeah, no, thank you again. Um, Dota Gamma. Yeah, mixed and made, like... I just... Uh, the fan base love him, but he's just sort of there. He's just not that interesting. Um, he is quite cute. He's just sort of the fat rock munching monster. But outside of that, he's just not hugely interesting. I've I've never I've never quite got the allure that that Reddit has with him. Um, yeah. If the next mainline Monster Hunter game adds another gigantic elder like the last few have with Zora, etc., what sort of design and role would you like to see it have? Um. To be a pile of bones that have already gone extinct. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just not a fan of the huge monsters. I've sort of said a few times before. Yeah, um, I would not want them to have it. Um, what I would like to see, like if I could, just make it like the monk snail again. Have it pottering around in the background, like they sort of originally wanted to do with the elders' recess. That's probably the best way to get me to like something like that. Um, the Gajalakas, or are these the Boa Boas? I can't remember. Um, uh, yeah, same as the Shakalakas. I, I have no real strong feelings on them either way. What monster do you currently think needs an update the most? Ooh, I sort of answered this earlier with with what I said about Blangonga. But, um, yeah, so I think I'd say Blangonga, just because Rajang has stolen so much of his stuff. And I think he's quite lacking in that department. Like, there's a lot of monsters I think should come back, but they are not quite so in need of an update. Um, like I said with Karopiko, you could bring him back pretty much as is. And it wouldn't be perfect, but it would be better and, you know, still decently different from the other bird wyverns. Whereas, uh, yeah, Blangonga is, um, is more in need of it, I think. All right, yeah, Great Giros, exactly the same as Dodo Gamma. Um... Yeah, just no strong feelings either way. The paralysis thing and the the sort of the implied story with uh, with Odogre on there, that you know they they have that relationship, the competitive one, is quite nice. That's a good example of show don't tell, uh, letting you sort of figure that out for yourself in the fight. And the design isn't bad. Like the gills is nice, but he's also just a bit of a like a, a lizard really. Um, so yeah. It, uh, yeah, mixed and made is, is where he belongs. Ugh, the voice is giving out. Um, do you think a Cantor and Yukon should have their own classification? I think they're fine as weird flying wyverns. I like that that sort of... That sort of, that sort of still keeps the, uh, the flying wyverns, the sort of OG class, as it were, as the top dogs. Favourite map in this whole series is a first-gen swamp map. Uh, again, sort of on the monster creation thing here. Yeah, I'm not a probably not gonna um, answer that fully anytime soon. Um, Magnum Arlo, no. <laughs> right, time for Great Jagras. I like Great Jagras. I know a lot of people don't, but I'm putting him in decent. His fight probably isn't interesting enough to be much higher than that. But the relationship with his pack, the the swallowing of other monsters, his turf war with Anjanath, and the fact that like that, you just get the impression that happens a lot. Yeah, I think he's quite a characterful uh, monster. I think he's a relatively decent starter monster. Yeah, I have I quite like the Great Jagras. 
What do you think are the best turf wars in the series, and who would you like to have a new turf war in the future? I think Anjanaths are all pretty good. Just him absolutely ragdolling other monsters is very nice. Um, Diablos vs. Rathian is definitely a good contender for my favourite, just because I love that that's two first-gen monsters. That's almost like a vision you could have from, from 2005 that has finally come to life. I think there's something really nice about that. Odogron and Legiana is also quite nice. Uh, all the Elder Dragons kind of suck. Uh, what else happens? Who else is there? Bishaton versus Almadron is also quite good. Like I, when, when sort of Bishaton was sort of uselessly sort of dragging himself away, and then Almadron tackles him again. I honestly thought he was going to kill him, and that was going to be a new mechanic. And I was so surprised when he actually survived. Um, so that that one really surprised me in just uh, how vicious it was. Um, so yeah, so those are my favourites. Who I would like to see get turf was in future. I think. So um, I'd like to see Kezu get some. Where Kezu like where one monster just starts absolutely beating the snot out of him, and then he electrocutes them. I think that would be a really nice display of sort of. Um, an anti-predator mechanism sort of at work. Uh, who else? Um, who who lives together? That's sort of a question. Uh, Barioth versus Tigrex would be quite cool. Uh, who else is there? Let's have a look at the roster. Uh, who else is there? Duramboros versus Devil Joe would be quite nice to actually see him clobber someone. Uh, anyone, really. Kongalala, actually, I think, yeah, I think Kongalala and Blangonga versus potential predators in their ecosystem would be quite nice. Like, even if they're going to lose, I think sort of making them out to be the alpha male who is willing to sort of risk his own life to protect the troop would be quite a nice feature to have with them. Um, and just to see them fight other monsters would be quite cool. Tetsukabra also, I'd like to see him go berserk on another Tetsukabra, a bit like the African bullfrogs, bullfrogs fighting video. And to see him pretend as young as well. Protect as young as well, Jesus. Seregios versus Rathian and Rathalos would be really nice. Legiacris versus Rathalos and Devil Joe would be very nice as well. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's quite a few you can have. Tigrex versus Goss would be quite cool as well, I think. Um, Gravios versus anyone he lives with would be also be quite cool. Yeah, I think uh, that's a good few to be getting on with. I think Turf Force between the Dromes as well, the Dromes and the Grades would also be really quite cool. Alright, who's next? Jorotodus. I think, let's see if I can finish the tier list, and then we'll see how many questions we have left. It's probably going to be loads. Um... There's yeah, so many. God, like, I thought there was going to be like 10, and instead there's over 200. Uh, Jorotodus, I'm just going to put into decent. It's going to cause riots that Jorotodus is above Brachidios and Elder Dragons, but um, yeah, in, in Rise, he's a pretty decent fight, and I think that gives me hope as well that it shows that the team have finally nailed a relatively decent pissing fight. So hopefully they can apply that in future. And uh, and give that that class a bit of a glow up, and yeah, I think his turf war with with uh, Baroth is nice. I think the ecology and the lore behind him is also quite nice. So yeah, I think I think he's he's not going to win any awards, but he's definitely not as bad as he was in World. And I don't think he deserves the hate he gets. I don't think he was ever that bad. Favorite non monster hunter game? Oh, um, interesting question. Uh. Nailing down a single favourite is hard, um, but I might say... Um, so one game I really liked when I was younger, and it sort of filled the gap between the absence of when I left Monster Hunter versus when I came back to it, but it was Resistance Fall of Man. It was a PS3 game, and it sort of took place in alternate history 50s England that had been taken over by a race called the Chimera. And even then, it still had a lot of what I like, and what I clearly like through this, and that the Chimera were just such an imperfect race. Like, um, they this is all, they sort of took humans and then mutated humans into their various creatures, but they often had to fit them with cooling packs because their metabolism was 12 times the rate of a human, and without them, they'd just fatally overheat and die. Um, 
and just uh, how how sloppy everything felt on the behalf of the Chimera, like they were doing such an imperfect job. Versus all the creature designs and the gameplay was quite fun because it was Insomniac Games who made Ratchet and Clank, so all the weapons had like a, a fun alternate feature, and it was just a, a really entertaining game with a lot of weapons and a lot of enemies and a very big, very fun online mode as well. And it was the first game I had for the PS3 when I got it. And yeah, it definitely has a a lasting place in my heart. Um, Fallout 3, I also really liked. Apparently it, it's bad. Apparently I've seen like YouTube thumbnails about people saying Fallout 3 is terrible and why you should hate it. But that's definitely not a conclusion I came to. I loved it. Um, still do, but I don't have a PS3 anymore, so I didn't play it. Um... And Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. I, def- I, th- I think, well, 2 has more and better content, obviously. But I think 1's atmosphere was a bit better. It was just generally creepier and spookier. And the southern twang to the second things didn't really didn't really uh, improve on that. Um, but Left 4 Dead, those two games are just timeless. You, no matter what you're playing them on, or what age it, um, you're, you're playing it in, they're just absolutely timeless games that are lo- loads of fun and yeah i'd recommend to anyone they're absolutely great so yeah those are probably my favorite non-monster hunter games and one from when i was a kid was heroes of might and magic 3 that i really liked as well i haven't played it in years but yeah that was that was definitely a classic and in terms of childhood games age of mythology as well that was an absolute banger from from my youth um Kuliaku. Kuliaku, is he good enough for top faves? Mm, maybe. He's definitely excellent. I'll see. That that's that's full now. But I'm not sure. Like maybe maybe more will fit in there. But Zodogron's still gotta go in there. So maybe Kuliaku can as well. But Kuliaku I really like. Um yeah, I think he's just a very characterful monster. He's a great display of um what what world can do. Like with the with the behaviors that it's just so fun to watch him trundling around the map with his eggs. Um he actually uses tools, which is very nice. Um that really adds something to his fight. And yeah, it's a nice bit of lore and yeah, the lore and behavior and ecology of him are also very nice. Yeah, I think he's just a very very good sort of early game monster. Do you ever consider doing a video on Magna Malo or the Black Dragons? Magna Malo, maybe for the right price, and that I think you could talk about him, but I think the Black Dragons are just so far removed um, from, like, and they don't have any behaviours that you can really talk about very much. So I think for the style of videos that I make, I just don't know what I could say on them, to be honest. Um, is Glavinus included in the anime hype monsters group? He's adjacent to it. He's yeah, he's definitely adjacent to it. He's not quite bad enough to be in there, but he's he's walking a bit of a tightrope. What's your favourite of the anime hype monsters and black dragons? Uh, White Fatalis. Again, it's just the style. You you can't deny that he has style. What other ecological behaviours or environmental interactions would you like to see in future Monster Hunter games? So I think that one, I'm not sure there's, again, I'm not sure I can really blanket term that. Uh, just any any sort of interesting behaviours that make sense for a monster, I would like to see. Um, and yeah, I think just, just more of them in general is what I would like to see for, for across all monsters as well. But it's definitely, it feels like some get a lot more than others. Um but yeah, just just more of them, really. Any monsters that you wouldn't mind skipping Monster Hunter 6? Yeah, uh, all of these. Um, yeah, I think Zenoga could probably do with a day off. Um, again, he had one in Base World, and I think the game was better for it. I think... Who else could... Who else is free? Yoragan. Because, yeah, this is one thing. A lot of people have been talking about how... Um, like the, it was a bit of a buzz a while ago about how oh, all the flagships are constantly getting repeated too often, and Yoragan has he's only missed four and four U, all the other games he's been in, and yet no one complains about that. And Nagakuga wasn't in Tri, he wasn't in Base World, he wasn't in four or four U, so he's missed a good handful of games. But everyone talks about him like he's constantly in them, like Rathalos. So I think that whole argument doesn't actually hold a lot of water it was just a clout chasing argument for people looking to make content because when you actually stack up who was in how many games 
a lot of frequent returners weren't talked about and people who haven't really been in that many were sort of yeah were really overstated as to how frequent they are um but yeah i think zenogo is definitely one oh, again i would like to see monobloss subbed out with diabolos um so long as they update monobloss um rajang could potentially miss a game Maybe Devil Joe too. Actually, Devil Joe's missed Sun Sunrise, hasn't he? Um, so yeah, I think it's it's probably all right. Um, what are your thoughts on the interdimensional fatless theory, which canonizes the movie, and why is it so utterly garbage? Yeah, he said it. I don't like it. I, th- I hate that they even included that in the Iceborne book. Ugh, d- d- horrible. That's all horrible. And again, thank you, yeah. Congrats on 50k subs. Let's hope they're all still here after this tier list video. Um, what better way, really, to celebrate 50k subs than to alienate and piss off all of them? If they added another elephant monster, how would you prefer it be handled? I think Gamoth... Like, I think let's make Gamoth better before we make another elephant monster. I think... Maybe have it use its environment a bit more, because that's one thing elephants are just very well known for, their interactions with their environment. It should be pushing down trees, like maybe if it puts its tusks into the ground, and it almost makes like a snowplow of um of like dirt and just pushed substrate at you. Um yeah, well that's just a few ideas right now, but how you would change it up from Gamoth, uh, good question. But actually, yeah, the tusks, I think. Just use the tusks a lot more, because Gamoth doesn't really use hers as much as she could. Um, Legiana, top fave. Zuck, up you go. To where you belong. Yeah, again, spoken about Legiana relatively recently. Um, wonderful design. A pretty good fight that at least I liked. I know some people hated it. I know quite a lot hate Shrieking. But yeah, the design, I think, um, is just one of the best in that it's definitely the best flying animal in Monster Hunter in that it doesn't have heavy armor or anything like that. It's sleek and it's graceful. And yeah, just a, a fantastic monster. And much needed ice monster as well. Uh, no, I don't, so I can't really answer the second part of the question either. But um, I think as well, anything that's sort of very directly magic and fantasy... Uh, that would be quite hard to um, quite hard to do. Just because once you include magic and stuff like that, you don't really need to ground the monster as much. Oh, Nagagante. Where is he going to go? Not even going to put him in flawed, even though he is absolutely cursed. Let's put him in mixed, because I am mixed on him. Um, yeah. I mean, he's not awful. He's not as bad as he could be, but he's... He's definitely sort of fallen into this weird sort of overrated um, pit, and Capcom seem to like him being there. They definitely reinforce that quite a bit. Um, one one of the big things is as well, like his design. Like I spoke about it a bit in the design video. Like he, there are interesting things you can say about his design based on the choices they made, but none of them overtly scream the Eater of Elders. And for the Eater of Elders, I would want something... I think a bit like Soyle's... What's his his big sort of... His big dragon. Like his big... The flagship of that project, as it were. I can't remember its name, but it's just the big sort of strong muscular one. Something like that. Or maybe even the Red Death from How to Train Your Dragon. Something where its design is just sort of overwhelmingly communicates physical power. Because that's, I think, what the Eater of Elders should have. Um... Rather than any sort of gimmick like his spines or having big horns. He should just be, yeah, relatively few bells and whistles and just all about power. Because elements are pretty pointless, because if you're going to eat multiple Elder Dragons, then they're all just going to cancel out. Um, so power is the one thing that's going to give you the leg up. And yeah, I think he, that's what his design should have been based on. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, his implementation in-game... It's not terrible, but yeah, they didn't really sell him very well as the Eater of Elders in game either. Um, like, considering when he's fought and the fact he doesn't have that much health. And he doesn't really, other than Shara, who is pretty weakened, he doesn't really kill another Elder. And he draws in his turf wars with them. So he's definitely, yeah, definitely a bit of a, a mixed up uh, character. But I don't think he's awful. And I think there's still things you can say about him that are interesting. So that's why he's in mixed. 
what are some of your favourite threat displays in the series? Um, yeah, Anjanath I really like with his frills. Monobloss with his crest I really like. Well, I like the idea of it. It's a bit mid right now. But I think if they properly did that in HD graphics and made it like properly bright and colourful, that would look amazing. Um, in terms of IRL threat displays, I think Namayel could have a really nice one if she sort of did that sort of Mexican wave of colour across her body like some cuttlefish or deep sea fish do. I think that would look really nice. I think anything with bioluminescence could get a really nice looking threat display and having something like that precede a turf war would be really nice looking. Um, sort of other things. Maybe if Wyvern's mantled a bit more, which is sort of what birds of prey do uh, when they want to conceal something or threaten something. I think that would look quite cool. Or maybe bird wyverns to do that as well. Um, but yeah. Right, who is next? Odugron is definitely a top fave. Yeah, again, fantastic monster. Um, yeah, just again, everything about him is good. Everything about him I like. Um, good ecology. Like, just the attitude he has, the personality is also very nice. Um, the lore, I think. Ebony Odugron as well is a subspecies, I think, that really, really sort of complements the original as well. In that... Odogron was good without an element, but the whole glowing sort of adrenal state he'd go into almost did sort of hint at something like dragon being president, a uh, dragon being present. So I think it fits that uh, Ebony has that, and yeah, and then Ebony's fight is just I think that little bit improved by having some ranged attacks. But yeah, overall, just a fantastic monster. What group of monsters would you like to see get more in future games? Um, all of them, really, I think. Yeah, just just keep the new monsters flowing, really. Chiefly, I would like more crabs, because I think crustaceans are a family you can do a lot with. Like, um, you can make a sort of a better version of Stone Fist and have those fiddler crabs with one massive claw and one thin one. So you could have, like, a sword and shield crab. Um, you could have like pom 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 crabs where he decorates his claws with different sort of things in the environment to give him different ailments and elements. I think would be really cool. Manta shrimp, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think crabs are the ones I think eminently stand out as as having having a lot of potential. But amphibians as well, um, definitely amphibians as well, and more bugs as well. Yeah, just just keep the new boys coming. Palumu is mid. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of him. Just And he's probably one of the most, I think, world's middle-tier monsters outside of Anjanath. It can be a bit forgettable. I mean, Dodogamma, Giros, Palumu, they're probably someone's favourite monster, but they definitely feel a bit... If they fall a bit by the wayside. Um, Palumo, I think, is actually quite a good fight, and I think he provides a really decent bit of challenge at that point in the game. Um, he doesn't go down anywhere near as easily as you'd first think, at least on the first time. Um, but yeah, outside of that, yeah, he's just... And I don't think design's bad, I just think... I just think he's not hugely memorable in the sort of grand scheme of things. And it is nice how he interacts with his environment at the at the coral tree and everything. I think, yeah, I don't know why, but maybe maybe other people like him a lot more than I do. And I think, objectively, he does a lot of things right. But he just he's just a bit forgettable for me, personally. What gameplay mechanic not present in 5th gen would you want to return in next mainline Monster Hunter title? Uh, water combat and an improved version of Seasons. Pukey, yeah, I think again. Um, a lot of what I said about Palumu had also applied to Pukey as well. I think his lore around him is good. Um, like the brood parasite aspect was very interesting. I think really made uh, the the video on him that I made just it gave me so much more fuel to work with. Um, but otherwise, not a hugely memorable monster for me. Um, as well with Pukey, I think if I were to make a brood parasite monster, I'd base him sort of off a Eurasian cuckoo who mimics a Eurasian sparrowhawk, and I'd 
sort of give it a colour pattern similar to a predatory flying wyvern like Rathalos and it have it sort of mimic that, I think would be an interesting thing. Was like we have Karapako who's a vocal mimic, but I think having a monster that tries to pretend to be another one would be a really interesting design. Um and Pukey could have been that, but he wasn't. What monster is kind of a guilty pleasure for you? Um Yeah, so I think again Malzeno. Um feels like I shouldn't like him as much as I do, but I do. There's just something about him. That that clearly charms me. So yeah, Malzano. Right. Uh, put Uragon in scum class. So let's put him in flawed because I definitely think Radoban is better than Uragon. I think it's just more interesting. Um, but none of that is enough to save him. But it is enough to improve him. So he's almost in mid. You know, it's not bad for a hammer jaw. And yeah, again, just sorry to the Hammerjaw fan base, because I know there there are some of you. Um, and I've definitely not made things better. Because they just get killed in World Born Lot, don't they? Um Yeah. Alas, I'm not gonna be your saviour. But maybe they'll get their own video at some point, I don't know. I don't have any plans for them right now. Um in Horizon Zero Dawn, once you destroyed a set number of the same type of machine, the cauldrons would adapt and start to add more plating to that design. Do you think that without changing monster models and through moveset alone, a monster hunter could imply having the same effects on hunting monsters? Um, yeah, I think absolutely. I think whether Capcom would do it is another thing, and sort of you almost need to make sort of like a pool of potential moves that they could draw from in such an event. But I definitely think that would be a really interesting thing. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, I think if you hunt a certain amount of monsters, especially if the franchise does ever go open world, I think that would be quite a nice thing where, like, in the environment as well, where if you hunt a certain amount of monsters, like, maybe the things that they would be suppressing, like, if you hunt a certain amount of, like, uh, Seregios in the desert, you get much more Gempre, um, because they're not controlling their numbers anymore. Um, so yeah, both in terms of moveset and sort of ecology, I think that would be quite a nice thing. Toby. Toby, I think he's better than the rest of the mix and mid, so let's put him in decent. Um, and I think I, I do still quite like Toby. Um, not enough to put him much higher though, I admit. Toby's got quite a few requests as well, but I have not... I don't think I've got any huge plans for him right soon. Because it's like they say in the book, the guild just openly admits they don't know that much about him. He's still quite a mysterious monster. Um, and the electricity, like his method of producing it, is probably more of a physics question than a behaviour and ecology question. Um, and even if I did delve into that, I'm not sure that's still a full video. So I do quite like him. But I, I think I'll struggle for a video. But overall, as a as a fight and as an early game thunder monster, and as a denizen of the ancient forest, I think yeah he does a lot right there. Like his little scent marking interactions are nice. His fight with Anjanath is good. Um, yeah, and the way he glides from tree to tree is just very characterful as well. So I do think he's pretty good. If you could choose to study ecology in any country, real and slash or fictional, where would you study and why? So yeah, it's it's got to be Skull Island, Peter Jackson's Skull Island. I mean, it's just got everything, hasn't it? Weird, horrible bug chasms, uh, dinosaurs, synapsids. It's got the whole lot. Um, so yeah, it's it's yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 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 the it's the complete package of just weird and and prehistoric wildlife. It would, it would be it would absolutely be Peter Jackson's Skull Island. Sitzy, yeah, bang him in mix and mid. Again, uh, world's m sort of middle game content is uh, just not hugely memorable. And I think Sitzy might be one of the most forgettable monsters in the franchise. Again, I don't dislike him, but I think he's just forgettable. Um, the gimmick isn't bad, but yeah, the fight. Who remembers Sitzy? Other than people who really like raptors. Do you ever do a video on the Curio and their relationship with Guys McGorm? Uh, yes, I hope to at some point. Uh, most favoured and most hated? Yeah, I think Tigrex and Magnamalo. Alright, Valhazak. I'm going to put Valhazak in... Decent? 
Yeah, nothing decent. That's good. Um, again, spoke about him relatively recently, and for the most part, I do quite like Val. I don't think he's quite good enough to be excellent. Um, but he's, he's good enough for decent, I would say. What are your wishes for Monster Hunter 6 regarding monsters and locale types? Should an underwater exploration and combat make a return? And should it be in the mysterious A region? Um, I'm not actually sure I would want another new world at this point. I think it's the most convenient writing crutch from... <clears throat> oh, the voice is really giving out now. Um, I think it's the most convenient writing crutch for uh, if they wanted to make like a new world or something like that. But at the same time, I think that would start to feel quite cheap quite quickly. If if just every new game they just went, oh whoa, there's a there's a whole new undiscovered continent that we've just found. Um So I think I would my wish would probably be for it to be in the old world. But for it to be a sort of like a travelling uh, caravan narrative, uh, like for you again. Um Yeah, that's what I would want. I'm not sure if I'd want another new world just yet. But I think sort of having those uh, checks that can be cashed later would be quite nice for when we do need a new world. Uh, monsters and locales, I would... Um, so again, like, the the monsters follow the locales for me. Um, and I'd want to see, I guess, just a mix of old and new and some fresh takes on old, uh, old locales. Like, again, I've mentioned it before, but something like a high-altitude cold desert could be a way to make new desert monsters... Uh, without stepping on the toes of the old ones. Um, so yeah, I think just yeah, I think old uh, yeah, just new content really. That's the one thing I'm most excited to see. Like what what are the what are the new monsters we're gonna get in six? I'm just very excited to see that. Um, yeah, very keen for the first trailer in general. Uh, Zenojiva, where right, to put you? Um, hmm. I, yeah, hmm. is it decent or is it mixed and mid? I don't really have very strong thoughts on Zeno, so let's keep it mixed and mid. Because, yeah, again, like a lot of the Black Dragons and the, the end game ones, um, yeah, just not strong thoughts at any rate. Um, no strong feelings, so yeah. They are what they are. But I do like the sort of semi-see-through design. I do like the more alien aspects of it, but I wish in both regards it had gone much further with them. I wish, I wish it was much more alien. Um, I think that would have been just a lot more interesting than what we got. And same with Safi Shiva, that it just molts into a relatively normal dragon. What are your thoughts on the Fanged Wyverns? For the most part, I quite like them. Like, Odogron's one of my favourites. I think all of them, maybe not so much as an ogre, who I obviously have been vocal about before. But I think as a group, they're relatively good, and they've got potential for the future. And Dodo Gamma, I've already spoken on. Zora, get out, you suck. Um, <laughs> you took up so much of the development time. We could have had a new map if it wasn't for you. Um, and And more monsters. But instead, we got you hauling your fat ass around while we popped your zits. Um, so yeah, get out. Uh, effectively, how do you think an open world game could be done for the series? Um, so, I, I haven't played that many open world games recently. In fact, I don't think I have at all on a next-gen console. Um, but... I think just the way everyone else does it, really. Um, yeah, like a big open world and then have the towns be sort of behind an airlock, as it were, like behind a loading screen. Um, so they provide safe spaces. And then, yeah, and then just have... So I think have various... I think when you start out, you should have monsters up to apexes just sort of wandering around in the environments um interacting with them and other monsters and then once you get to apex level you get things like devil joe and elder dragons um and yeah i think i think the hardest thing would be on 
how it spawns monsters in. Because I think once you get to a level that you can't just... I, you know, in most RPGs, you can wipe out the enemies fairly quickly, but not so much in Monster Hunter. So if you start a fight with something and then run, and you just keep doing that with monsters, the biggest problem you're going to have is just pie pipering like 10 monsters at once. So um, I think coding in some like habitat fidelity in them or territories or things like that where if you harass them and then run they will only follow a certain distance before they turn back and despawn and someone else spawns in um i think would be the best way to do that to get rid of that problem but then i'm not a game developer so uh yeah i'm not sure but again thank you for the comment as well uh latrion hmm yeah, you're going with 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 Xenogiva, mixed and made. I think one thing I really do like about Alatrion in World is his sound design. The way he sort of sounds like he's in pain, and the sort of creaky door hinge noises is really nice. Um, but yeah, uh, outside of that, I think the whole multiple elements thing is just a bit. It's not as fun as it is as 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 as, as Capcom wanted it to be. Eschaton Judgment is just a bit much. Um, the fight is alright, but uh, again, I just didn't really have very strong feelings on the Black Dragons. If you could remake the Jurassic World trilogy into a better product, what would you do story-wise? So I think I would take it down one of two routes. I think I would either sort of have a story not so dissimilar to Jurassic World's, but actually good, where they try and reopen a dinosaur park. But I would have things start going wrong when guests were there, and much more directly involving the guests. Like, a bit like you have orca displays and stuff like that. Have, have and, and you know, crocodile wrangling displays in some places. Have someone do that and it goes wrong, and then, you know, have animal... A bit like in the second film, animal rights groups who think dinosaurs shouldn't exist or it's cruel or something. And yeah, just incorporate a lot of things... Uh, relevant in our own world and disasters and such and things that happen in with captive animals yeah just incorporate that into the story and i don't hate the idea of a hybrid dinosaur but i think if i made one it would i think they'd probably just leave it on the island with the knowledge that it would destroy everything and then eventually itself as well assuming it was like the indominus because it's you know it's so propped up and dependent on man-made structures to keep it alive that when it destroys its own life support system it just perishes as well with the rest of the island. Or I would have it set in somewhere like Myanmar or somewhere like that, and have it very much focus on the local communities, um, and have effectively use have have them use that area to breed their dinosaurs, but they occasionally escape, and they don't really care about the locals. Um, and then have them suffer the brunt of the dinosaur interactions, a bit like the sort of opening chapters of Jurassic Park. And then have that sort of be allegorical for, um, you know, like the amber mining trade and how that really, really ruins things and is a huge danger for the local people who can feel forced into it and often and they can often uh, result in a huge loss of life for them. That's probably what I would do. But I'm not a writer, so what do I know? Banborough. I'm going to put him with Duramboros in decent because I think he is decent and I think the I think the way he, he picks things up with his horns and he can make the snowballs and stuff like that is really nice I don't think he should be an invader even with the sort of law that he can release heat with the way his carapace and his fur is I still think it's, it's stupid that he's an invader um, and he's too big he should either be shrank or move to apex level, but he can't be what he is right now. Uh, like Iacross is a top tier monster design, yes he is. What do you think of the design of Witcher monsters? Um, I haven't seen that many of them, but what I have seen, I generally quite like. Um, that's a game series I do want to play, but I just need to find the time, and yeah, and, and, and yeah, I just need to find the time for it really, um, because I don't really game so much anymore outside of Monster Hunter. Um, but from yeah, what I have seen, I do like. And what's your family, your favorite family? Yeah, Flying Wyverns. Beatodus is gonna go. Where did I put Jurotodus? Yeah, they can go together. But Beatodus is still quite a good piscine. 
the snow swimming is nice, but I don't know what he does in the summer. Um, maybe he goes to the rivers or something. But yeah, I, he's, he's just quite decent. Um, yeah, and a relatively nice design. Um, if a bit basic, but then he is only indecent. He's not like an amazing monster of mine. Um... Oh god, I would absolutely love it if you go into detail to scrub exactly what bioenergy is and what its roles and effects on the ecosystem are. Um, so, I think for me, I would say that uh, bioenergy is something like a, a form of radiation in a way, and that a lot of monsters have at least some level of a radiotrophic ability, and so they can effectively coast on that when they're in areas with a large amount of bioenergy, which is effectively uh, volcanic regions. And so monsters that go there, um, yeah, they can just sort of coast on absorbing bioenergy and digesting that somehow. And that's where the whole, ah, uh, the, the, the power, the, this thing's absorbed so much bioenergy, it's really strong. That's where that comes from that a lot of animals in Monster Hunter just have some latent radiotrophic ability. And in some, it's much stronger, like Elder Dragons primarily subsist off it, and they're much more specialised to do so, and then other things don't. And that's why it's sort of variable throughout the uh, throughout the monsters. Fatalis. Wait, who was that then? Was that Laoshan? That must have been Laoshan. Right, I'll just use Fatalis' icon to talk about Laoshan. Um, uh, yeah. He is... Laoshan is... I, again, first gen monster, even though I only fought him in second gen. So I do have some soft spot for him. But he's very slow and he's very boring. Um, the gear's nice. But as a fight, he is really boring. Um, so I can't put him much higher than mixed and mid. Um, but, in fact, you know, I think people might, I might just do that for clarity's sake. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I, there is some, I do have some love for him, just again, because he's one of the first gens. But I think, again, a bit like I said with Siege Monsters, if Leo Shen was to come back, I would love to see him, like, doddering around in the ecosystem and not be an actual fight. I think that would be a nice way for him to come back, but without slowing things right down. What do you think would be the largest threat to Earth's biodiversity if a stable breeding population was discovered in some remote part of the world? And what would cause the least disturbance? So, I think Gore and Shagru Magala, um, just because of what Frenzy is, they're sort of like super rabies. So, and the fact they are just walking carriers of it, and they spread it to a lot of things, and yeah, I think if they came through, that would be quite a hassle. Um, because that's a, just a new wildlife disease, isn't it? I mean, even if Fatalis came through, we can still just nuke him. But if they came through and they start spreading that around, that's going to be a lot harder to contain. And least disturbance? Um, Kelby. What's he going to do? Namayel is excellent. Um, yeah, an absolutely fantastic monster. Soon she's gonna go in excellent. She could, is there, could I put Namael in top faves? Quite possibly, in fact, let's just say yes. But yeah, I think, so Odogron won my award for overall best newcomer of 5th gen, but I think best elder of 5th gen to arrive is definitely Namael, and I think she's just generally a fantastic monster overall. Um, yeah, uh, just, yeah, the, the the relation of water and thunder and how she uses her attacks, the visual aspect of her fight and sort of the super attack, uh, the dehydration, overall design. Yeah, she just, yeah, just hits every button just right and is a fantastic monster. And, uh, yeah, I would like to see her return water combat, although the one thing is, like, her fight was never made for that, um... So I think she could still have a great fight in that regard, but I don't think just porting her over into water combat would be that good. I think she'd need a bit of retooling in that regard. Um, right. Do you think bringing back some old concepts like Seasons, Water Combat, and Daytime Preferences would work better in a world-style game? Uh, absolutely. So I've spoke about a bit about, um water combat already but seasons especially i would love to see come back um 
I think do it properly. Like, don't just make it sort of relate to monster spawns and strength. But I think, like, have have maps properly change. Like, um, snow maps in the summer they should be sort of um almost green and relatively pleasant, and then snowy and frozen over later. Like, I think if you had a water combat snow map, having it be swimmable in one part, and then in another season. Just the pack ice is completely frozen over, and if you want to swim, you've got to break through the ice or find like a breathing hole of a of a monster that's made that, um, and changes like that, and uh, like areas to seasonally flood and be a water combat area in one season, and then dry land in another, and yeah, and things like that, and seasonal monsters as well, like um, like for example, you could have like a peacock wyvern. Just because that's like a, a very easy monster to make that analogy, a very easy animal to make that analogy with. Where in one season it has its huge bridal train of feathers, and those are so heavy it can't fly. So its move set changes completely, and because that would probably be related to breeding, its behavior changes completely, and that's in one season. And then outside of that season, it can fly again, so its move set is completely different. And you have monsters that really lean into that, and monsters that can only be hunted in certain seasons as well. And yeah, some maps that you can only have, um, <clears throat> some maps that you can only use in certain seasons too, because I think that's also the best way to balance a huge roster as well by sort of making some monsters off limits at certain times, even if that does limit overall accessibility. I think that's generally um, a good way of of just balancing out a very big roster, and I think rosters will generally get bigger as the franchise goes on. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, d uh, day and night actually making that meaningful, I would also really like as well. And I think that would be a really good way to mix, some, mix up some monsters by having them be very shy and cautious in the day, and then in the night, just, yeah, completely change that around and have it where they're much more hunting you. And with darker environments, that would fit very well. Will you make videos explaining the ecology of small monsters? Maybe. So the first herbivore video was quite well received, um, so I might well do more. But I don't have plans for it right now, um, but quite possibly. Safijiva mixed in mid. Actually, Safijiva is a nice fight, and the, sh the the sapphire of the emperor is pretty cool, even if it's 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 very over the top. Um, so yeah, is it, I may as well put it next to Fatalis. Am I weak? Am I gonna do that? Am I gonna cave to peer pressure? Because I don't have strong thoughts on him, so let's actually keep him in mixed in mid. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, no, he does belong there because I'm a bit disappointed in that when he when he was revealed to be like the adult form of Xenogiva, that he's just a normal red dragon. I would have, and that's a problem I have a bit with Shagaru as well, and that they have such an interesting sort of bait as as a young animal, and then when they metamorphose, the the adult design is just a bit dull and a bit normy to what I'd want. Um, I'd have really hoped they would have even weirder after the molt, but no, they just turn into some sort of normie dragon, which I'm not happy about. Uh, gay, straight, bi panel spec. I am straight. A lot of, for some reason I do always seem to trip people's gaydars, I don't know why, um, but no, I am straight. Uh, Shara Ishvalda. Uh, ooh. I'm going to say decent. The fight is good. I think the, the design is very, very ugly. But in a good way. Like, the like it shouldn't... Like, not every monster should look, you know, cool. And the fact that, you know, it's hidden behind all the rocks, I think that's quite an interesting sort of design and gameplay feature. Yeah, I over, overall, I quite like Shara. I, it's definitely sort of a, a tier below a Cantor, Guys McGorm, you can loss. Um... But not so much that it goes into mixed and mid. But yeah, and I think there's actually some interesting ecology behind Shara as well, in it, how its sort of tunneling affects the new world, like I mentioned earlier, with the burying beetle. Um, so yeah, Shara is definitely not bad. Thoughts on the Walking with Dinosaurs movie from 2013? Uh, kill me. Um, <laughs> I've not seen it. I don't ever want to. I've seen enough of it that I know I don't want to watch more of it. What a waste. And what a pain for those involved in it who thought it was going to be the next actual walk with dinosaurs to then have their name attached to that. How can you not feel sorry for people like that? 
Um, who is next? We're nearly there. We're there. We're finished. We're finished at last. Oh, Rajang. Where am I going to put him? Flawed. Absolutely. Oh, Rajang has really fallen off. Jesus Christ. We're coming up to like three hours now. No, four hours even. Um, yeah, Rajang is is like it's funny if we did this at the end of at the end of second gen rajang would probably be in excellent or decent but just what he's become yeah just how just how hard he's constantly stroked by by all the developers and everything like that i just cannot stand him anymore he's just so blatantly like the favorite child um and how overpowered he's become and how yeah and how annoying furious can be to fight and yeah, he's just really become... Yeah, he is just an absolute Mary Sue now. And I thought he went from being a relatively fun, interesting monster, potentially interesting monster, into just baboon Jesus. And yeah, not a fan of that. Just not a fan at all of what he's become. So that's why he's in Flawed. He, once upon a time, he was so much higher. I really did used to like Rajang when I first fought him in Freedom 2. And now look what he's become. On the same level as, as Radubarn in my eyes and Cephadrum. I mean, <laughs> let's just look at this tier list as well. Like, wow, I think anyone who doesn't know me is going to come in and just... just <laughs> They're just going to feel so confused, aren't they? So, yeah. Um, wow. I think a lot of people might well hate on this. People are definitely, yeah, people are definitely not going to be happy, but... I think people who know me probably saw a lot of this coming. But yeah, that's that's the tier list done for now. Um I definitely need to rest my voice. It's like it's just gone twenty past ten when I'm recording this. So I'll finish the rest of the questions tomorrow and we'll see how well, hopefully I will. See how far we can get. This oh Jesus Christ. There's I'm still wow. Alright. Um okay, yeah, we'll get through those tomorrow. All right, so that's the tier list done and completed. Uh, it's the next morning now. Throat has recovered slightly. Um, so I'm just going to look over it now and see yeah, see if there's anyone I would move around. Um, looking at it right now, I think I think everyone's good where they are. I don't think I was... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing any room for, for much adjustment. No, I think I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy with the with yeah with what I've cast everyone. Sort of looking at it like this as well, thinking about each individual game and such. Like I said, I think Rise's early game originals all just flop a bit, but uh, the Apexes they made were pretty good. And then in World, the, the most of the starter monsters like Kula and Jagras I thought were quite good, and then most of the Apexes were as well. Um, but it had a bit of a middle game slump with things like Palumu and Sitsi and and Giros, who I think were just a bit forgettable. And I think maybe in general, like looking at this and sort of weighing it up, I think Capcom in general not necessarily have a problem, but I think they're sort of their mid level sort of Anjanath tier monsters can often be a bit of a flop. Because I think it's very rare that you actually get a monster created for that tier. Like Blangonga and Shogun when they came to the west they were initially that tier but in dos they were apparently apexes and similarly yeah a lot, a lot like iodrome was obviously meant to be a pretty much a starter monster who got glorified to that level um so it often seems they're made to be either apexes or starters and they just sort of get shifted around which can often leave them feeling a bit out of place i think I think that's why Anjanath really succeeds, because he's one of the few who really feels like he's meant to be that level. And it's reflected in a lot of his sort of interactions with other monsters and the player. Um, but yeah. Alright, that is the tier list done. Hooray. Let's continue with the, the rest of the Q&A. Would you dedicate a video to endemic life, or are they simply not interesting enough as a collective whole? I, I just... I'm not sure if there's enough information on them, and I'm not sure... A bit like the crabs, if they're really different enough from um, from actual animals, you know, it's like it's a lot of geckos and beetles and birds. So I think it might just be me just sort of effectively reading out information about them, rather than the sort of um, the application that you get uh, with something that's just a bit further removed. 
Uh, what makes a good monster into monster, according to you? Uh, good question. I think something... It's hard to say. Um, something that's adapted to its environment, that doesn't feel very superfluous, that has uses for all of its appendages that it has. Um, something that has a certain amount of style to it, undeniably. Yeah, it is. It's hard to put it down exactly. Just as a, as even something like Lagombi, you might think that would be a monster that I'd like, because it's relatively restrained. But then look at him there and get out here. Oh, what monster hunter locale would you like to be able to explore more? So I'm trying to think now, because I think most of them in the past games, they were like other than the ruins in the in the in the Dosh jungle. I can't imminently think of anything that had sort of like a big tempting place that you couldn't go. So I'm not sure, yeah, if I have a single locale that I'd sort of, um, I'd like to, that I'd restore for that reason, um, just to explore more of it. But in terms of places I'd like to go again and sort of, and just generally see more of, even if they don't have something, you know, like the ruins that's uh, comparable, um, I think a more in-depth look at the forest and hills might be quite nice. Uh, your favourite dinosaur, Allosaurus. Could we see another video about herbivores like Kestodon and Renoplos? Yeah, maybe. So, yeah, like, that's that, that probably, like, the most frequent comment I got on the first one. It's like, oh, when are we seeing the rest of them? So, yeah, it could well happen. I'm not sure if there's quite as much meat on them as there potentially is on the larger herbivores, but we'll see. Uh, same video on the Carapaceons, yeah, sort of, sort of touched on that already. I do like them, I would like to make a video on them, it's just that as effectively just supersized crabs, it might be a bit difficult, but that's not a no. Yeah, Rathian and her chin spine. Yeah, I, I don't know, because I think when they made the design, that's initially what it was, what it was intended for. And then obviously they, they moved away from that, and we literally get a cutscene of her feeding her chicks without using the spine. So what exactly it's for is anyone's guess. It could just be a display feature. For a person who's never tried Monster Hunter games, which one would you recommend to start with? Uh, I would say Base World. Anything earlier than that? And I think there is... Yeah, it's like the, they might just be a bit too slow starting. They might be a bit too difficult to learn. There's still a lot of jank in them. Yeah, I think, I think Base World. And then Rise, I think, is definitely... It's like a soft enough experience, but... Um, it's it's much more doing its own thing. It doesn't feel like as much of a Monster Hunter title. Yeah, so I'd say Base World. Have you considered discussing how Elder Dragons impact the fauna and which monsters can rival them? So, an Elder Dragon impact video? Um, yeah, I could possibly do one on that. But then, again, that's like a lot of the references to their impacts are often very vague and it's uncertain... Um, if, you know, if that's exaggerated or not. And definitely, you've got the sort of clash of lore versus gameplay. But it's some of the some of the things Elder Dragons are stated to do, they definitely don't seem to be able to replicate in-game, for one reason or another. And yeah, which monsters can rival them? That's, that's sort of... Like, it's it's a bit like um the Espinas versus Teostra thing with Flaming Espinas. Like, there's no way that should be able to hurt Teostra, and it literally just one-shots him. So it's effectively whatever Capcom say. Like, I think trying to judge outside of that. In the next game, if they wanted to, they could have Velociprey just kill Laotian, and we'd all have to accept that as canon. So you can theorise, but yeah, it's um, it's always going to be a bit of an uphill struggle. Do you plan on someday tackling cryptids slash mythical creatures like Bigfoot, dragons, werewolves? It's not something I've thought about, but I might do, like, especially after I read Devolution by Max Brooks. After after just reading that, I did think, oh, well, man, I really want to do a Bigfoot video. Um, dragons, I guess I'm in a constant state of covering, really. Werewolves, I think, might be a bit difficult. Mermaids shouldn't be too hard. I don't really want to touch that disgusting um, sort of fake mermaid documentary they made that was absolutely horrible. But possibly. Um, yeah, I'll just see how things go. And then a question about making a Monster Hunter Battle Royale. I I could well do that, and I think that would probably upset the fan base even more than this video. You know, if you leave it to me to say who's going to win in an all-out battle, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, but again, it's just very clear that some monsters are held back and others aren't, depending on sort of what Capcom want to do with them, and the inconsistency with their abilities. So I think... Deciding a definitive winner for something like that would be quite hard. 
and someone is definitely going to get annoyed, including me. What would you say is the least believable slash ecologically sound monster introduced into a world? Uh, good question. Let's have a look through them all. Yeah, outside of all, all the all the big sparkly elder dragons. Um, so of the normies, it's quite hard to say. Everyone just feels very, very decently grounded. Um, I'd just say Basiljuice just because he's so big that, um, yeah, it would... And yeah, his official law also isn't great, um, it's a, it's a bit much. Might also say a Dodo Gamma, just because of the whole rock-eating thing. Um, but yeah, otherwise they're a pretty sound bunch. Is there a video you want to make a topic on, but you don't think anyone is going to watch it? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> like, even 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 with the channel being this size, it's, uh, it's always thinking, oh, is this the one everyone's going to finally leave on <laughs> and realise what a complete sham I actually am? Um... I actually think this one definitely, just because you know this isn't what people are often here for. So um, so this is this is much more of just uh for the regulars. Um, but in terms of other topics, like there's none right now. There's maybe one or two in the future that I might make, just sort of more for me and just see how they go. Um, yeah, it's 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 just always a bit of a gamble. Like um. Just to, just to sort of throw it out there and see how it goes. But for the most part, it seems to be going well so far. Which of the big Monster Hunter monsters would you love to see domesticated? Or which one would make the most sense to domesticate? Whichever one is going to be easiest to domesticate. And I think you're going to struggle there just because they're all so massive. Because you, ideally for domestication, you'd want something that reaches a certain size relatively quickly. And so for so many giant, slow-growing animals, um, yeah, that's that's going to be a very expensive and resource um, and resource demanding task. It, I'd probably start with a herbivore, just because that would reduce costs at least somewhat. Maybe Banbro, out of all of them. But yeah, at any rate, that's uh, that's a very big ask. Will we ever get a Magnamalo and anime hype monster rant later in the future? Yeah, I've said everything I want to say on them, both here and in the design video. And it's, yeah, this this video is already a bit of a beating of a dead horse in some areas, so I don't want to push that any further. Would you be open to doing a full-length video describing the fauna of Lord of the Rings, uh, like you did for Skull Island? Um, it's not something I've thought of, just because Lord of the Rings, the most of the canon of the books and the inf information you're given doesn't really go into the detail of a lot of the wildlife and animals, uh, both sort of normal and magical. So I'm not sure there's enough information to really make a full video. Um, I could potentially do another Lord of the Rings video, like there's still some things I've missed. But yeah, I don't really have any plans to do a sort of a full-length one like the Skull Island one, and I'm not sure there's enough information in the canon to do that. Yeah, will you ever do a video on, on Magnamalo? Um, there are no plans to right now. Who knows, maybe if I ever get a play button, or if uh, if this channel gets to a million a million subscribers, maybe then we'll, we'll get Magnamalo. But yeah, I, as you say, I could potentially make him share with Zenoga. I'm not sure, like, even... Yeah, I'm not really sure how much they actually have in common, though. I think if I'd make Zenoga share with anyone, it might be Toby. Um, have a sort of Thunder Synopsids video. But yeah, it's the Magnamala would be a bit of an uphill struggle. Do you currently have any non-Monster Hunter videos planned? Uh, yeah, a few. Like, the next one will be a non-Monster Hunter video. As I said, uh, Death Claws, the creature from Nope. And there's a few other things I want to do as well. Do you ever feel bad when hunting a monster in game? Yeah, occasionally I'd never like murdering Kuliaku. That that just feels too cold blooded. And Zenoga as well, like when he does the sort of dog whine as he limps away, it's like, why did you have to make that sound so real? Then what types of herbivorous monsters would you make in game? So small ones, uh good question. I think maybe like a few more ungulates, just to sort of scatter through um various various biomes like I think an Akapi would be quite nice as a small herbivore monster in like a jungle environment. Because I wouldn't mind Aptonoth being booted out of the jungle and replaced with something a bit more specialist. The favourite frontier monsters? Yeah, well, Espinas. Um, the wolves as well, the leech as well. Um, do you think Nako Agul from Monster Hunter... I never know how you say that. Is that Orage? Is that how you say it? Should be made canon. I... 
I've not really thought about him much. Um, he he looks just a bit like a big cat, and not in like not like a monster hunter fight cat either. Literally just sort of a, a smiler don with a mohawk. So I don't think that's terrible, but but yeah, I wouldn't be in a rush to see him made canon. Which monster do you think you could take in a fist fight with prep time? Uh, good question. Kelby, definitely. I could absolutely lay out a Kelby. I could lay waste to the Kelby. For other mon- maybe a, m- a moss swine as well. They are quite big, like, you look at them compared to the hunter and they're like a full-size pig. But I could potentially, uh, potentially take one of those down. What what am I fighting in as well? Do I get armor, or am I as naked as the monster, or, or what's going on? Because, because I think at Jaggy, I could probably take one of those down, but if it manages to, like, gnaw through a blood vessel, or get one of those with its claws, uh, then it'd be lights out for me as well. So let's say, let's say Jaggy is, is, is the limit. Unless there's some other small monster that I'm forgetting. But like even something like a Velociprey, you look at them actually compared to the size of the hunter, and they're they're more closer in size to a Uteraptor than than anything else. Um they're really quite large, so I think even the small monsters are a bit of a challenge. Uh how did you become a zoologist? So uh it's a pretty simple process. You just go to university and study zoology. Um it's it's as simple as that really. Would you ever consider doing short or long looks at maybe fan-made spec bio projects in the distant future as a potential sub-series? Quite possibly. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's something I've again I've not really considered that much. Just because I'm obviously a lot of people in the spec sort of um, in the spec world do seem to watch my videos, and I do know a few of them. But I'll admit I I haven't really delved much into a lot of people's projects just because. One, I just don't have that much time. Yeah, it's not out of disrespect or lack of interest or anything. It's just uh, I don't have huge amounts of time for that. But potentially in future, yeah, it, um, I could definitely look into that. Make that its own sort of series and, yeah, just go through some of those. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, Serena. Um, so it's probably, yeah, if people asked us, any, have your thoughts on anything changed since you made the video? Should probably definitely say Serena's creator is generally seemingly regarded as evil now, so that's probably something I should add as an addendum to the future Predator video where I mentioned that. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few uh, potential spec things that I could do if it's sort of made by I don't know what you call it. Like I don't want to say amateur, but there's people who obviously aren't paid to do them. But you can't really call it a fan thing either, because it's their own project. It's not like a fan work of anything. But if it's someone's own thing, I would definitely want their um, their sort of collaboration and their thoughts on it as well, rather than me just sort of going off piste with it. Um, but yeah, definitely, I could definitely well do. But yeah, I could definitely well do more sort of spec stuff. What do you think is the worst monster of each generation by ecology? So I think you can sort of cheese that one and just say like the black dragons of each of each generation. So you can say like Fatless, White Fatless, Dimoralis. And so on and so forth. And yeah, just yeah, more focus it on the endgame bosses and such. Have you ever considered videos on Specivo projects like Chimere? So, uh, so yeah, Chimere I do quite like from what I've seen of it. I haven't seen too much, but one thing I really do enjoy is um, how sort of real everything looks. I think, I like I said, I haven't seen that much Speco stuff, but that generally looks like what you'd really expect to see. It's sort of the most realistic one in that everything is still... everything. Nothing looks that different to how it is now. There are clear differences, but it's definitely probably one of the most realistic Specivo settings I've seen. But again, I would want uh, the creator's sort of input and in everything before I, before I really did a video on it. Are oh, you going to do a video on the Rock Munchers? So, I can't remember yesterday if I, if I mentioned my thoughts on the video, um, but... So I do like Gravios, and I would like to do a video on him, but he will be quite tough. Um, just because, yeah, rock eating. I mean, we technically do that, you know, just when we put salt on our food. We are rock munching as much as anyone else there. But to subsist completely on that would be quite hard to rationalise. So it's something I would like to do, but again, that's definitely uh, one of the more difficult videos. Yeah, there's sort of a uh, two chained together. So, yeah, Basarius and Gravios generally quite like. And yeah, Gravios not being in Sunbreak was weird. Uh, it was very weird because they they name drop him quite a few times in Basarius's gear and calves and stuff. 
And I think even in his description, don't they? And then they don't bring Gravios in. And I sort of hope slash think that's an indication that maybe they were making him and they eventually decided, you know what, let's put him in six instead. So hopefully Gravios will be back in six. And then and then with Monoblos, they didn't name drop him. They lit uh, for like Damio's calves, they literally just said, Ah, oh, some rando old monster skull. Say his name, you cowards. A Cantor and Eucanos, yeah, it's sort of I, I like like both of them. Um generally quite good endgame boss monsters. Do you think Wyvarians lay eggs? Uh, of course not, I think they're mammals. What pop culture monster would you like to see hunt in a monster hunter crossover? Ooh, um, Maybe one of the House of the Dragon dragons would be quite cool. I think hunting Vagar would be a would be a hunt to remember. Or Caraxes. Caraxes, I think yeah, I'd, I'd be interesting to see it, like what future dragons look like. But it's a bit like I said in the House of the Dragon video, I do wonder if Caraxes and his popularity may uh, give us a few more serpentine dragons in the future. How often do you learn something about real life biology when researching or looking into monsters? Uh, occasionally, so some of the time I sort of know right away what analogues I'm going to go for. Other times I'll have a vague idea and I'll do a lot of reading sort of around certain species, and that's occasionally when I can learn something new. Um, so yeah, it does happen every now and then. Are there any monsters you thought were ridiculous at first, but actually had some sort of basis in our world? So I sort of touched on it, but maybe Gobel? And again, I don't know really why I didn't like him at first, but yeah, I think he's just very good at what he does, and his design is a good example of a uh, function over form. And then a question if Brachidios is pounders of a breaking into insect mounds. So, again, yeah, there's the anteater comparison here as well. Um, I don't think it's for insects especially, but I think you could rationalise it to say it is for burrowing prey like Eroctors and potentially other things as well. Uh, I think that's, yeah, the best use you can come up with for Brachidios' pounders. And then Zenoga's claws, uh, potentially being for climbing. So I think, in terms of sort of mountainous terrain, uh, they could potentially help. There's some people who have suggested that Zenoga may have an arboreal ancestor, and I do quite like that suggestion. Yeah, it could well help him just sort of, um, yeah, move over hilly terrain. Would you like to see a monster wield a weapon in a new Monster Hunter game? Uh, yeah, with the examples given, I would definitely quite like that. Again, with um, sort of like pom-pom crabs, I think that'd be quite a nice idea. Or indeed a hominid. Like um, one thing, like if I were to do Garangol, I think I've already said this, but I would make him use tools and then he would get his multiple elements from the tools, like an orangutan. Or you could even have a like a Sasquatch sort of hominid-like monster that's intelligent enough to potentially use like branches or even spears uh, against the hunter and i think that would be that'd be a really interesting fight um and i guess kuliyaku does already he picks up his rock but yeah it might not be quite what you had in mind but yeah i'd be very interested to see that especially if in a primate who is your favorite youtuber so i'd probably say my favorite youtuber is alt shift x I mean, this whole channel is like a, a poor copy of um, of his content, but about Monster Hunter rather than Game of Thrones. Uh, so yeah, I'd definitely say it's Old Shift X. It was always, like, his his way of doing things was always... Uh, I remember first seeing it, and it just struck me as um, what a good sort of presentation format that was, and a slick use of transferring information. Uh, so yeah, Old Shift X. Could a Monster Hunter game in which monsters aren't hunted work? Uh, possibly. I mean, isn't that stories, as far as I know? But you could, yeah, you could sort of have like a survival horror monster hunter where you could potentially kill them, but hunting them isn't the goal, more survival is. Um, so, yeah, I think you could potentially make that work. If you could have one creature expanded upon in an ecology book, which would you like to know more about most? Ooh, there's, there's so many to pick from. Um... Oh, it's, uh, there's, 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 there's a lot to go for there. I might say one of the Blosswivens. Um, so I think just learning about sort of um, the early the early life stages of them would be really interesting. There's not much is known about that currently. Things like territory size and yeah, and their interactions with each other. But a, a lot of that is sort of already known in Diablos and the New World. It's mentioned. But yeah, I think just uh, a deeper look into them would be quite interesting. There was one system or mechanic you could introduce to flesh out the game's ecology more in gameplay. 
what would it be? So uh, again, I'm not sure if there would be one thing. I would more just flesh out existing things. I think if there, yeah, in terms of things, I would introduce myself. If I could reintroduce something again, I think I would pick seasons because I think there is a lot you could do with that if you did it properly. I think that could really, really ch- uh, shake things up a bit. When did you discover Monster Hunter? Uh, Two thousand and five. Technically, I first saw it in a game shop in Dubrovnik, and then I bought it when I got home. And yeah, that that was when it was discovered. If you were to give any Elder Dragon a complete facelift and a sick new fight, imagine similar to Fatalus, but a bit more, which Elder Dragon would you do it to? So, a, a new fight, I would really like Camellios to get a properly updated one. In terms of a facelift, though, I think I would probably give that to Valstrax. Or potentially uh, Sapi Jiva or Gormagala, and uh, not Shagru Magala, just to make them a lot weirder and, and less dragony. What's your opinion on the endemic life in both World and Rise? Which system do you prefer? So I prefer World, personally. Um, just because in Rise, I think the player just doesn't need extra help. And I don't like the fact that everything has to be weaponized. I think just having things for the sake of them being there and having them flesh out the environments was nice. I didn't really want them to sort of just be another thing for the player to use to beat the monster even further. Is there any real reason why Capcom hasn't added any more snake weapons on an ecological basis? Uh, On an ecological basis, I would say no. I think you can potentially have a lot of snakes. I think it's more of a gameplay basis. You might struggle to differentiate them from each other. How long does it take you to make videos overall? So... Sort of, I start by... So whenever I pick a monster, I already have some idea of the analogs that I'm going to use. And then writing probably... So it's probably roughly, let's say, five or six days of writing. Maybe a bit less, depending on how swift things go. Um, Then I record it on the weekend. And so it's recorded and then edited. Um, Then the edited script, and I try to do it all in one, is put into Filmora. And then, yeah, it's all put together from there, and that generally takes, so from whatever day on the weekend I record it to, to the Thursday of upload, and yeah. And so it's it's typically uploaded on the day, um, on the day it comes out, and typically just a bit before. Um, there's like one of the things a lot of people have on Patreon, it's like early access, but I don't really have enough sort of time either side to realistically do that as much as I would like to. So yeah, it is roughly sort of a, a two-week turnaround period, um, with the writing probably being the longest part of it. Are your thoughts on the Specivo trope where the author or artist will kill off the current cast of real-life real life animals just to replace them with a mirror version of themselves? Yeah, I've sort of mentioned that in the Primate video, but I think that's a bit... It's often it's often not especially well written, because they'll often kill off large amounts of animals for seemingly no reason, and then have some survive that... You know, it's very hard to rationalise why they lived when others died. So I think it's often much more of a crutch just to sort of get a trope you really wanted rather than um, making a sort of a cohesive ecosystem. In what medium, say game or reference book, would you like to see the lore surrounding civilization expanded? Do you ever think we'll see it integrated into a story? We might get it integrated into a story. Uh, it depends on how, how good the writing will be in future games. Um, I would I think I would most like to see it in-game. I think that's where it would have the biggest impact. But at any rate, I would still... I would like that full stop. So if it comes in a reference book, I would still take that. Is there any monster you could see surviving in current daily life? Uh, yes, Kelby. Kelby, where I think, would clean up here. I think quite a few of them could, but... Once you probably sort of get get larger than, say, Anjanath or Rathalos, I think then the sort of the demands of your body um, are going to maybe be a bit costly for our world. What category of monsters do you think should have more representation moving forward into Gen 6? Um, so I think in, of those, I think Brute Wyverns are probably... They're still fairly well represented. Yeah, I would like more crabs, as I've said before. More crabs, more bugs... Some more bird wyverns that just sort of that deviate a bit from what all what they're all currently doing now. I think more fanged beast, because fanged beast just seems to be the word for mammal in Monster Hunter. So I think there's a lot you can do there. So yeah, I think just and more more amphibians as well.
So I think there's yeah a lot of, a lot more could do with uh, more representation. What franchises fake animals do you love that you haven't covered yet? So um, I quite like the Xenomorphs uh, from the Alien franchise, and I haven't covered them yet. I think I've got a lot of the ones I really love uh, thus far out the way. Maybe Dragonology, not the Dragonology mentioned earlier, but there was sort of a series of books that were made when I was a kid. There was like a, a fictitious field guide to species of dragons, and I really loved them. Um, and I haven't covered them yet. And I might do some form of video on that sort of genre of book, but um, it's not something I've put too much thought into yet. Uh, what do you think about the creatures in the Avatar films? I think, yeah, they're quite cool. I mean, people have asked me to cover them as well, and I do quite like them. But then Trey the Explainer has already sort of covered them, and who knows, maybe I'll send men right to my house to break my legs if I try and cover them as well. And if someone, if someone big has already covered something as well, then that definitely makes me a bit hesitant too. Unless they did a very bad job of it. Um, and I haven't actually watched Trey's video on them, but I'll just assume it's good for now. Is Spear hot? Absolutely. He's a, he's a little rectangular, muscular caveman. How could he not be? Although he is a bit short, isn't he? Uh, some more future turf wars you'd like to see. So one I didn't mention er earlier, but uh, Tigrex versus Diablos or Monoblos. I think the Bloss Wyvern would win, but I would really like to see how that would go down. So if I was writing it, I would like to see Odogron versus Rajang, or Nagakuga versus Rajang, or what? just one of the pseudo Wyverns versus Rajang. If he if it was written sensibly and just not by Capcom, I think that would be a, I think that would be quite an interesting fight. I think Brute Wyvern, yeah, as well as Durambros versus Devil Joe, I think Brute Wyvern versus Brute Wyvern would be quite interesting as well. Now, favorite real life ecosystem, ooh, I might say either a savanna or a boreal forest. Um, then creature design tropes you love and hate. So obviously, much of what I hate is just sort of. Um, in, in what I call the anime hype monsters, you know, just too many nonsensical weapons, loads of bells and whistles that often serve a nonsensical purpose or none at all. Um, yeah, just, just over-designing something or or just making it one-sidedly uh, built to kill is, is something that I will I'll never fail to be tired of. Some that I love. Um, so I think good tropes just don't become that common. So I can't think of any off the top of my head that I would consider a trope that I really like. Um, but I'll have a think as I go through the rest of them. Favourite Monster Hunter theme? So for like a, for a single monster, that's a good question. There's a lot of good ones, actually. Maybe Basil Juices? But then I also really like Seregios as well. In terms of area themes, I really like the Hoarfrost Reach. Uh, the first gen swamp map as well. The DOS jungle theme. It's a lot of really good ones. Valhazak's theme is also really good. Um, and in terms of village themes, uh, would be either Kokoto or Poke. What in particular prompted you to start this channel? Yeah, it was definitely an idea I tossed around for a while before giving it a shot. Um, so obviously, I've said a few times before, I made an initial sort of zoology channel first. They didn't get very far. But I was sort of thinking about doing a monster into one for a while beforehand as well. Just because I did wonder if sort of that could be a way to to try and get information and then tying it to fictitious animals to see if that would work. And then I also... And then now I've started the uh, Spec Evo shorts as well. Um, I'm generally quite pleased with how it's going, just because I think that's a way for me to say things that it, that some monsters just won't allow, just because, you know, there's a lot of reptilian wyverns, and so there's not as much chance to talk about mammals and, and things like that. And so, yeah, now I've got those going, I think I can cover an even broader range of topics and discuss things that I wouldn't have been able to beforehand if I was just sticking to Monster Hunter. Which monster do you think would be most challenging to explain in my format? Probably something like Lavasioth, just because where do you even start with something that swims in lava? And it's not like he just wades in it occasionally. He he lives in it. He every aspect of him is is in the lava. So yeah, even his eggs. So yeah, that's quite hard. What's your favorite season slash episode of The Simpsons? Ooh, very good question. Um. Like picking a favourite episode is so hard. <laughs> There's so many good ones. Um, oh yeah, it's really hard. Uh, so I'll as I mull on that, I'll think about favourite season as well. Favourite season is also really hard because I think I think just those season three to ten, they're just they're all just bangers. Um, they're all really good. 
especially sort of three to eight. Um, sort of thinking through them, I think season five might just scrape it for like um, the amount of episodes it has that are just so funny and, and so well written. So I might tentatively say season five. Favourite episode though is really hard. I do really like Homer Goes to College. I think that's a really funny one. Um, I think any with Sideshow Bob as well. Any of the earlier ones with Sideshow Bob, you know, sort of pre-season 10. Just because he's such a funny character. And yeah, he's just fantastic. So yeah, I might say sort of any of the Sideshow Bob ones for that. Do you have a type of monster you would like to see more species of, uh, like Hamager Wyverns? So yeah, I've said before I would like, um, I would like a few more Pseudo Wyverns, potentially. Uh, if they're made to be interesting. Um, more Leviathans I actually think would be interesting as well. Like potentially a land Leviathan that's sort of like a janitor or a weasel in that it has no real relation to water. It's it's purely a land animal. Would be quite interesting. What weapon would you add to the franchise? Um, so one thing I have thought um, is maybe if you take some aspects of the wirebug and turn it into a whip so you can still offer people that sort of play style without um, having to bring the wire bug back. And I think it would, you could, like, I think a whip, you'd have to make fairly low damage, but very successful as a support weapon, due to potentially being able to sort of uh, tie yourself to the monster or tie down the monster or something like that. So maybe a whip. Or maybe an atlatl as well. But I think that might well clash with bow. Um, but yeah. How many Tigrexes would it take to kill one Fatalis? Uh, good question. So, you know, presumably fat Fatalis can be... Uh, we know Fatalis can be canonically killed and with crappy human weapons and admittedly a Dragonator as well. Um, so, you know, you'd have to assume that, you know, it's, it's mortal and a physical being and if, say, Gamoth jumped off a cliff on top of it, uh, it would be crushed and killed. I think the dangerous thing is, like, one, it's quite powerful, two, the fire breath is very hot, three, it can heat its own body to the extent that if you're attacking it with your mouth as Tigrex is, then that may well burn you very badly. Um, I might say, like, six or seven or something. If they all rushed it at once, a few of them would die, but they might be able to, like, gnaw through his wing membranes, break his wings, and then when he's down and he can't fly away... Yeah, they can all just dogpile him and just gnaw away at him until he dies. I think a good few of them would die, a good few of them would get burned mouths, but I'm going to tentatively say six or seven. Um, and probably less if it was Molten Tigrex. You know, I've finally found a use for him. He can fight Fatalis. But as you'd have to assume from his explodey habits that he can take heat and pressure relatively well. Oh, that's not often the case uh, in Monster Hunter. Uh, have you ever considered gathering all the speculations from videos into a big sort of PDF document or book? Um, I haven't. Um, maybe at one point when I sort of, when I do decide that the channel is reaching the end of its lifespan, but I, I admit I just have no idea how long I'll actually continue doing this for, but I do know I don't want to be a YouTuber forever. Um, so yeah, maybe at some point a bit further down the line, I may well, yeah, make the sort of fake field guide or something. It's, so yeah, maybe. Do you have plans to cover more games in the future? Stuff like Subnautica. So I do quite like Subnautica from what I've seen and played of it. Um, I haven't played that much of it, so I definitely need to look further into it. But it does have potential for a video. Um, other people have also covered it already, so I need to see what they said and did um, for it. But potentially... Which animal should be the base for the new flagship? Uh, if I were making a flagship, I'm not sure what class of monster I would make it. Um, if, if the options are like Icarus or Rathalos, I would definitely say let's have another Leviathan flagship. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure who I would pick. There's still quite a few who haven't had their turn as flagship yet. Maybe it's the turn of a bug or a crab. How do you feel about monsters that take technology concepts and make them biological? So yeah, with... I don't know how you're meant to say that. Is that Torrid Clairs? Tari Clairs? I don't know. Um, but the whole sol solar panel thing, I think they found that locusts actually do that as well. So there's chances that, yeah, whatever, whatever things you can try to apply, there may well be something in nature that has done it already. Um, 
But yeah, I'm, I'm not against that hugely because it, it turned out all right in the in the case of Tariqles. Um But yeah, so long as it's not too over the top is the main thing, and I think it should be okay. What are your thoughts on adapting Monster Hunter series to the big or silver screen? Oh uh, yeah, if someone did that, it would be pretty cool. Obviously, no one has already. Um, despite despite some fan rumors, no one has. Uh, anyone who says otherwise is a liar. But I think it would be best suited to television. Because I think the strength of Monster Hunter is its monsters. And I think even even a very good Monster Hunter story should include a good few of them. I don't think it should focus on just one monster. I don't think that's in the spirit of things. Um, so I think a television series would be best... And it would need to have a big budget. It would need to be like an Apple TV or HBO, or yeah, just something that sort of echelon to um to 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 be to be done well. I think. So yeah, I think it's a potential TV series. It could be good, and it's a it's a pretty ripe fruit to go for as well because you've got a big sort of interesting world full of cool monsters, but without a lot of story. So you can it's it'd be very easy to make your own, completely new and. I don't think you'd really need many of the characters that are already exist in it. So yeah, you can have blank slates that you can just completely create yourself, and you don't have to worry about people bursting into tears over casting the wrong person for it. Have you heard of the Primitive War book series by Ethan Peters? Um, no, but I'll look those up now. Uh, I have not. Um, looking at it now, it does say like uh, it's like dinosaurs in Vietnam, which does sound quite interesting. Um, so yeah, I've not, I've not had much to do with that, but who knows? Maybe I'll look further into it. Just dinosaurs in Vietnam does sound like an interesting concept. What is a monster that's not too over the top, not too realistic, just right? Um, I think in that regard, something like Namael would really fit. But I think I think she's just right. Um, a fantastic elder dragon. What monster do you think would make the best pet if if someone were to tame it? Disregarding any logic or limitations, what monster would you personally want as a pet? Yeah, disregarding any logic or limitations, I might go with Valstrax, because then that's, you know, a free jet that doesn't destroy the planet when you fly it around everywhere. Um, at least not in terms of its carbon emissions. Obviously, actually holding on and, like, making a, a, a saddle that doesn't just, you know, melt your face off would be quite difficult. But once you've crossed that hurdle, and again, you did say no limitations... Yeah, I think I'd go for Valstrax, and then I can fly wherever I want, <laughs> whenever I want. You know, as for the best pet, Kuliaku might be a bit of a hassle, just because of um, the way they rear their chicks. It might be quite hard to get it to imprint on you, or recognise you as as something it'll socialise with. Uh, I think I think a bird wyvern probably is the best shout, though. What are some animal groups you wish were used as inspiration in Monster Hunter? So, another one that I forgot to add earlier, I think I'll just keep coming back to this question whenever it comes up, because I have new ideas, but pinnipeds. Um, if if water combat comes back, I would love for pinnipeds to be to be uh, an inspiration for some, for, mon for some monsters. Because there's that one in Frontier, but he kind of sucks. He's just a reskinned Royal Ludroth. I think a proper walrus monster would be really cool. Or like an elephant seal monster. A leopard seal would be really nice. Um, there's like a hooded seal and it's got its weird sort of nose balloon and you can do something like that. Yeah, there's there's a lot you can take from, from that family. I don't think there's enough for tons of them, but like two or three I think would be quite cool. Is Basil Juice of Olvencraft 15 or more fingers on the wings plausible? Yeah, I don't think they're fingers either. I think they're like sort of just struts of cartilage uh, to help support the wing. I definitely don't think they're fingers. Would you make a video covering Monster Hunter Generations Deviants? Uh, stay tuned in that regard. When are you going to get an ecology video on Wyvarians? Never. Would you ever want to touch upon the mess that is Monster Hunter Taxonomy? Uh, no, not really. Because the thing is, that's... But you know, you know, genetic studies right now show that um, a lot of our earlier assumptions about taxonomy can be wrong, and just sort of rearranging... And there's been a lot of rearranging of various things in that regard, and new discoveries can also uh, completely rearrange things as well. So I think if you ignore the um, the canon taxonomy, which is pretty awful, and try and make your own, I just don't think there's enough information to really conclude to that much. You can only really give your best guess, and taxonomy just is, doesn't interest me that much anyway. 
Uh, with the overabundance of flying wyverns, do you think there should be more specific classifications of monsters? Or should they add more of what they have a little of? Yeah, I'd say add more what they have a little of. Because, um, yeah, like, I don't mind there being a lot of flying wyverns, so long as the flying wyverns are good. Like, it's a complaint you sometimes hear about world that I think is a bit baseless, saying there's too many flying wyverns. And yeah, I don't think that's the case, so long as they're so long as they're sufficiently differentiated from each other and they're different enough fights, I'm I'm mostly fine with it. I'd much rather have three flying wyverns that are each radically different than like the three bears who all pretty much have like one move different and it would make for a pretty monotonous fight. I think fight and animation diversity is much more important than model diversity. And ah, uh, the, the maker of the tweet that I've been sent several times already. Uh, what's it like knowing you have to do tons of research into a monster and its possible real world influences, only to then call said monster mid AF at the end? You often get a greater appreciation for these monsters afterwards. So the the answer to that is sometimes. Um, sometimes I've come out of it definitely thinking, you know, I've, I've got a new view on this monster. I definitely like it a lot more than I did. And then some other times it just sort of reaffirms what I thought of it beforehand. And yeah, like knowing knowing the mon knowing I already don't really like the monster beforehand is is fi I'm fine with that. If I only did my favorite monsters, this would have been a very short lived channel. And I still think even monsters that I'm not a very big fan of can still have some worthwhile talking points. And then why is the lore of Russ Duran bad? So initially Durambaros was made as an animal with this specialised digestive system to the point where he has his own sort of diagrams in his little booklet designed to help him digest trees. And then they put him in an environment with no trees. And yeah, it's as, it's as simple as, you know, he's he's this very specialised uh, sort of almost... Yeah, he's a very specialised ruminant wyvern. And then they put him in a, an environment like that, where there's just nothing for him to eat. And yeah, it's it's just foolish. And as well, apparently, like, he, apparently he's red because he's splattered in the blood of his enemies or something. Apparently that was the original law. And yeah, that's... Uh, that was, that was never going to make me like him. Ideal flagship for Rise, I think I probably would have just had Goss. Uh, Goss or Almadron would have been my ideal flagship for Rise. A real animal with the worst design. I'd probably say a pug. A pug or an English bulldog, something one of those two. Do you think Monster Hunter could work as an open world? Absolutely, yeah. Again, uh, thoughts on subspecies variants and rare species? Stay tuned. Will we see monsters? Will we see videos on monsters like Vespoid Queen, Bullfango Bulldrome, or Endemic Life? So they might pop up in other videos, but I doubt Bulldrome or Vespoid Queen will ever get their own. How do I plan to cover monsters that don't have enough substance for a whole one? They they might be part of a medley at some point. Other than that, uh, they may just never appear. I mean, I don't think I'll ever cover everyone. Just because, like I said, black dragons are pretty impossible. Uh, Zenoga's Fulgur Bugs as an anti-predator mechanism? Possibly, but then but then you'd also have to wonder what's predating him and where's that gone? Like, if that was the case, I would... If that was the case, I just think I'd want more evidence of Zin uh, being someone's lunch at one point. I mean, the spines could actually do that as well. So maybe there is some, some weight to that. But then it also sort of begs the question of uh, where's that predator gone? How would you plan on going over the more fantastical Elder Dragons? I don't. There's just not enough I can do there. Do you see a reasonable way for Deviants to be brought back? Uh, yes. Um, the fact that, you know, a lot of Deviants can... Well, the fact that Deviants, there's not one sort of set definition for them. They can be man-made through encounters with hunters, or they're a genetic mutation or stuff like that. So, yeah, they can technically happen at any point. You could get that mutation again. A hunter could effectively recreate Bloodbath, because that's almost happened before in Freedom Unite with the one-horned Diablos. So, yeah, I think Deviants could definitely be brought back. But more on that later. And, uh, as I've said, number eight, I've already answered. What's your take on tail cuts, broken horns, just part breaks in general, having a bigger impact on the hunt and not just slightly nerfing the range of said part body part-based attacks? Yeah, um, 
Some monsters I would like them to do a lot more. Like I think you should be able to absolutely demolish Glavinus's tail. Yeah, if he doesn't defend himself properly, he should be punished for that. But it's it's really noticeable how long it lasts and how you effectively just shave bits off. And that always struck me as a bit unfair, that everyone else, you know, gets absolutely maimed, but he gets to keep his main weapon. And I think, it, yeah, it would be nice if it had um, sort of more unique impacts rather than just damage reduction. But I do like as a sort of start off that, yeah, that, that reduces um, that particular uh, body part's damage. And, and like it, it can still it can still increase things like trips with um, Barrios. Like when you break his arms, he'll trip a lot more. So there's definitely some sort of stuff like that already in there. But yeah, I would like it to sort of I would like it to be developed even further. And I think some cases um, they could make a part break actually be detrimental to the hunter as well. Like maybe it's sort of. Like, if you part break a monster's sort of element sack, it dribbles it constantly through the fight and makes it more, arguably more dangerous because it does a lot of area denial or something. Just something like that to really mix it up a bit um, and keep people on their toes. Gameplay wise, do you prefer B team's super move based gameplay or A team's more classic gameplay? Yeah, I, I of course prefer uh, A team's more classic gameplay. What would I like to do? do with endemic life in the future I think just keep going on the path they're going just sort of have more of it maybe have them do a little bit more in the environment maybe some interactions uh, with the lo the various monsters large and small maybe some player interactions as well uh, nothing too crazy but yeah just a little bit more in there any plans for Yamatsukami Romobras Radaban or Yurikan not yet Monster Hunter BC, yeah, um, that's something I would definitely like to see. So I think oh, if they sort of continue with the sort of story they started in Freedom Unite and then kind of continued with World, when they've wrapped that up, and, the, and I imagine... Or and slash or if that's when they've gone open world and they've sort of they brought everyone back, Monster Hunter's at its peak. It's got this huge open world with everyone in it, and that's effectively the the peak of the franchise. I think after that it would be really interesting to sort of go into more unique, sort of unique looks at the franchise and the world of Monster Hunter at different points in time, at different points in history and stuff like that. And so Monster Hunter BC with very primitive weapons, uh, much more, maybe more restricted gameplay, um, a much bigger focus on tracking and hunting over just the fight, uh, a completely different cast of monsters and stuff like that. I think Monster Hunter BC could be, re could be really interesting, yeah. What if Scenario Capcom hired you to help make the next Monster Hunter game consultant? Um, First, I would get an extensive security team. The people would be absolutely hating on that. Do's and don'ts, I would tell them. One of the big, one of the big don'ts would be just stop showing such bias to certain monsters, like Rajang and Devil Joe and Magnum Arlo, because it's just incredibly obvious. Like it really sticks out. It's so noticeable. Stop putting so much emphasis on quest rank to decide turf wars and actually properly sit down and sort of look at the abilities each monster has. But something like, uh, I've said it sort of earlier, but something like Kezu should absolutely be able to hold its own against much larger monsters because its Thundershock that it can make is incredibly powerful and that would put just about anything off eating it. So while it may not have sufficient physical strength to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with larger predators, if they come into conflict with it and they actually attack it physically, it can absolutely, you know, draw with them through shocking them so i think things like that you know actually think about what an actual fight between two monsters would look like rather than having it be an excuse for one to beat the other and then yeah a bit like i've said earlier more of the same just more sort of environmental behaviors incorporate monsters into the story much more even in the stories that are all right a lot of the time it's just it's just the flagship that will do everything and even then it's just sort of oh he's evil we need to take him down there's, there's not really much development with either the monster or the characters, and I think that would be good if we could have that in the game. And as well, just give characters actual arcs, let them be different people at the end of the story, rather than the exact same. Uh, have another nice, quiet little village, and actually 
Nabbit be good this time and not Kimura. No more siege monsters, or at least let's have a game without a siege monster. Uh, more diverse environments and uh, appropriate monsters in them. Yeah, so pretty much a lot of stuff I've sort of mentioned already, uh, but yeah. Do you plan to do a video on Monster Hunter felines at some point? I don't have one in the works, but I I don't mind them. The, the felines are the good ones, not like the Melinxes, who have always been really annoying. What's your opinion on Velcana being recently added to Monster Hunter Sunbreak? Yeah, I, I think it came across quite well. Um, I don't know if it was really needed, but it was, it was a fine addition. What do you think to Elder Dragons as a concept? Yeah, I think I think they're a pretty natural part of the Monster Hunter lineup. Yeah, I think overall they're they're a solid concept, and yeah, I'm I'm keen to see where they go from here, because we're not far off effectively having a an element for each dragon, so an element for an ailment for each dragon. So I'm interested to see if they sort of fill the rest of the gaps. And I wouldn't mind another Elder Trio as well, I think that'd be quite interesting. If in Monster Hunter 6 there was a treatment like Rise upgrading older maps, but they put the lore and ecology in like they did in World, what older map would you like to be upgraded? Ooh. It's very tempting to say my favourite map, which is the first gen swamp map. I think that would be a really nice one, to have in better graphical fidelity with cool monsters in it. Um, the Forest and Hills, again, would also be quite a nice one. And I'd definitely try to go for maps that have a minimum of, of distance between the loading zones, because I think that was a big problem with the Sandy Plains, that they used the sort of the skybox and the loading zones to really portray the sense of a big area. And then when you sort of had to have that in one, in one block, it really felt a bit neutered. So I think those two are relatively good choices. I mean, most of the desert and snow maps from the old games were relatively sort of one dime a dozen. The flooded forest has already been done. Yeah, I think I'd say, yeah, either forest and hills or first gen swamp map. Uh, do you have any opinions on the Monster Hunter Stories series, both as a game and in the lore? Uh, not really. Like, I've never played them. I have some understanding of how they go, but I've never really put much thought over them. So yeah, I have, I don't really have much to say, really. Um, but yeah, they they look fine as well. They are sort of like a little sort of fun add-on. Alrighty, I think I think that's all of them. I think it is anyway. Um, if I missed you, just pop the question in the comments and I'll answer you there. That's that done. The tier list is done. The questions are done. My voice is held out for all of them, which is pretty good. And I'm definitely not doing another Q&A next year. This <laughs> took so long. It took so much longer than I was expecting. Uh, thank you for watching, if you made it all the way to the end. I'm very impressed. But yeah, it's looking like this will be something like four hours, which is a horrifically long time. Hopefully your favourite monster wasn't too low, unless of course you're a devout Magnamalo fan or one of the very rare Gyadrome fans, in which case all I can say is sorry, or indeed get better taste. You know, the next video should hopefully be out in a few days, it'll be a non-Monster Hunter one, and then we go back into broader topics in Monster Hunter for three videos, then another non-Monster Hunter one and then back to sort of species analysis. So that's a vague roadmap for the next few months. So hopefully I'll see you there for them.